Hello and welcome back to another character creation video. My name's Luminin today. Well, today's video has been 20 years in the making. I've been waiting a long time for this one. Today we're having a look at Baldur's Gate 3. For those that perhaps don't know what Baldur's Gate 3 is, Baldur's Gate 3 is a story-rich, turn-based, classic RPG set in the universe of Dungeons and Dragons where your choices shape a tale of fellowship and betrayal, survival and sacrifice, and the lure of absolute power. Mysterious abilities are awakening inside you drawn from a mind flayer parasite planted in your brain. Resist and turn darkness against itself, or embrace corruption and become ultimate evil. Yeah, I mean, I know you guys don't need me to tell you what Baldur's Gate 3 is, but hey, there it is anyway. I did it. I want this to be a complete experience, so we're going through everything. Now, if you'd like to do a deep dive to discover all there is to discover about this game, I suggest you buy it and play it. But if that's not an option, there'll be some links below that you can follow. Check them out. Enjoy. On top of that, you'll also find timestamps there. There'll be a lot of them. I'm going to try and cover everything here. It's going to be a long video, but the timestamps will be useful. Find what you're looking for and leave satisfied. And if what you're looking for is genitals and nudity, well, there's a link down there for you too. That'll cover all the nice extras. Wink, wink. Check that out. Okay? With that done, let me give you a quick rundown of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be starting by having a look at the origins. So, we're going to have a look at the custom stuff, obviously, but I'm also going to show you all the origin characters. They have brief introduction videos that you can check out for each of them, fully voiced and all that. Fantastic stuff. Totally worth looking at. And if these characters are interesting to you, you can just pick them. They're pre-made. They are customized. They have a class set up, everything's ready to go, you just click it and you start playing. Very interesting stuff, I suggest checking them out. Once that's done, we will look at the races, and that will include all their extras, so it means their description, their features, their proficiencies, their cantrips and their actions and stuff like that, the sub-races along with that, and then the appearance of each race. I'm going to mention here at the start that some of them share appearances. So don't think that you're like going crazy because you've seen the same stuff over and over again. There's going to be some repetition. Uh, as an example, the High Elves and the Wood Elves, they share options with the Drow. You can make your Drow look like a High Elf, and you can make your High Elf look like a Drow. They're all there, you just unlock the option, and then you've got it. There are a few of those that cross over like that, but we're still going to cover everything for completion's sake. Right? The sub races, same thing. There's nothing new on the subrace other than the extras and the lore. So you pick the subrace for the extra actions that you get, for the proficiencies, for, you know, the rest of it, not for the customization options. After that, we will jump into the class options. There's a whole lot there. There are a lot of classes. There's a lot to talk about with the classes. There are subclasses, which you can't pick for the most part here. You have to play the game a little bit, and then you'll be able to pick your subclass, but I will be covering that. So there'll be a subclass timestamp, and you can check that out as well. Uh, I have all of them in front of me here. I'm good to go on that. There are a bunch of extras. So some of the classes have deities that you pick, fighting styles, stuff like that. Once again, you'll check that out. It'll be here. Then we'll cover the backgrounds. Then we'll cover the abilities. Uh, then at the end, there's something that used to be called the dream lover i think it's now called the guardian it's basically just an extra character that you customize that looks over you and we'll have a quick peek at that as well that's basically it <laughs> he says after listing way too long a list so let's jump in first things first we're gonna have a look at the origin characters this right here is Asterion. After 200 years serving a cruel master, the vampire-spawn Asterion is finally free. Free to walk in the sun, free to chase power, and free to take revenge. Let's watch his video. Let's listen to his story. Hello, 
darling. Don't be shy. I promise not to bite until we've been formally introduced. My name's Astarian, and I've spent a century stalking the night, hunting for pretty morsels just like you. A man called Cazador made me what I am, kept me like a pet, forced me to do his bidding. No more. But Tapel's influence broke his dominance over me, and now I can finally pursue the one thing I've hungered for these long, dark years. Revenge. I'm going back to Baldur's Gate to track Cazador down in his lair. I'll be the last thing the bastard ever sees. <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. So each of the characters has a little cutscene like that. Each of them is fully voiced. Each of them has obviously got a unique voice actor, actress. Motion capture is done for each character individually as well. It's awesome. It is so full and feature complete. So that's Hysterion. Let's look at Lazelle. Lazelle was raised ready for life amongst the stars, mercilessly conquering the cosmos as a Githyanki soldier. Grounded. She must deal with a world she doesn't understand and find a way to serve her people in a plane that despises her militant kin. Let's listen to her story. Since I was born in the cold reaches of wild space, I have known but one purpose. To wield a silver sword and ride a red dragon in service of my regent, the Githyanki Queen Vlakith. My first step on this path is to slay a Mind Flayer and bring its head to my queen. There is no flesh I will not carve, and no barrier I will not shatter to see it done. I am the one who sunders. I am the Undying Queen's most unshakable warrior. I am Lazelle of Kalir. Yeah, I mean, she seems pretty determined. I think it's a pretty fantastic backstory as well. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And keep in mind that if you don't pick one of these characters, they are all in the game world as well for you to meet, for you to interact with, and so on and so forth. If you do pick them, obviously you are them, and the story changes. Oh, that's so cool. Gale. Gale's wizard in prowess once earned him the love of Mistra, the goddess of magic, until his ambition led him to the brink of catastrophe. Let's see his introduction. Well met, stranger. You find yourself in the presence of the renowned wizarding prodigy, Gale of Waterdeep. Please, no need to be intimidated. My virtuosic talents once caught the eye of the goddess of magic herself, Mistra, who named me her chosen and her lover. Thanks to a slight miscalculation on my part, that relationship eventually soured, as did the greatest of my powers. Now I'm merely a humble wizard on the road to redemption, unless I can find the path to something greater. You will notice the body language on him completely different. It's fantastic. They did so well. Shadowheart, she was actually one of my favorite characters in the early access build of this game. I really enjoyed her. It's a pity she's so... testy. Shadowheart willingly undertook a ritual to remove her memories in order to protect the secrets of her fellow Shah worshippers. Loss and pain are sacred to her, but her faith is now being tested like never before. My name is Shadowheart, loyal servant of Shah, goddess of darkness and loss. There is little more I can tell you than that. My lady Shah tasked me with a mission of such secrecy that I surrendered great swathes of my memory in order to safeguard the knowledge of it. 
All I know is that I must bring the artifact I hold to Baldur's Gate. And that nothing can stand in my way. My goddess is watching. Fantastic. Then we have Will. Known as the Blade of the Frontiers, Will uses his magic to fell the monsters and devils menacing the Sword Coast. In a moment of desperation, he accepted an offer of greater power, forcing him into an infernal game he is struggling to play. Seven years ago, I was exiled from Baldur's Gate, the city I call home. My name is Will, but the people of the Sword Coast call me the Blade of Frontiers, champion of the meek, defender of the innocent. The truth isn't quite so simple, but they're right about one thing. I hunt monsters, and I always catch my prey. My latest target is a devil, and I'm right on her tail. Once I'm through with her, she'll never escape the fires of the first hell. That's Will. This is the latest of the additions, Karlak. Karlak escaped 10 years of service in the hells with nothing but the axe on her back and the infernal engine blazing furiously where her heart used to be. And I want to just say she's probably the coolest looking character. <laughs> like, this is just badass. Look at those muscles, dude. And look at this cool outfit that she's wearing. You can see she has obviously braved the hells. Because of the burn marks and stuff. Let's, let's see what her story says. Ten years ago, I was sold to the Archdevil Zariel. She put a Hellfire engine in my chest and made me her prized soldier. But I've escaped now. Thank you, Mind Flayers. And I've got a few scores to settle. If this engine doesn't burn me to ash first, I'll need people I can trust. An infernal mechanic and a serious amount of luck. But you know what? I'm not worried. After 10 years in the Hells, I can take on anything. I've got my chance at freedom, and believe me, I'm going home. Fantastic. As I said, I think she looks awesome. Our final choice is the Dark Urge. This one, it's a little different. This one, you can actually customize. So, all the others are locked. These are carefully curated experiences. This one, you are playing as the Dark Urge. You can customize your class, your appearance, all the rest. The introduction, however, is voiced and acted on this character. So, let's check it out. My rancid blood whispers to me, kill, kill, and kill again. My ruined body yearns to reap death in this world. And when this foul urge calls, it possesses my whole being. Injured, beyond repair, I know nothing besides this. I must resist the dark urge, lest it consume my mind. I must discover who I was and what happened to me before my twitching knife hand writes a tragedy in blood. So I really like this one because it has broader strokes. It's more open-ended in many ways. I think it's pretty cool. And again, you can customize. So in this one, you remember nothing but a path paved with blood. Unimaginable cruelty whispers to you from within. Can you escape it? Would you even want to? Hmm. It sort of sounds, you know, similar to some of the others, but uh, different as well. Again, much more open-ended and you can customize this one. So if you want something more curated, uh, but 
you want some control over it, then this is the one for you. And that brings us to the end of the Origin characters. Now, we're going to go back to Custom. And we're going to have a look at what's available. So, as I begin here, I'm just going to say that you can, on the right hand side of the screen, as we go through all of these options, see the full character sheet, basically. So, the way this sheet works is, it'll be updating. Every time I choose something different, right now you can see we are White Dragonborn, level 1 Sorcerer. Our stats are there. Um, the extras are here, the cantrips, the spells, the actions, the proficiencies. Just peek at that if you think you're missing something, if you think you want to see something. There's information there that if I perhaps miss, it'll still be visible. You'll still be able to check it out right there. On the right hand side of the screen, easy to spot. So, just keep an eye on that. It's quite useful. Now what we're going to do is, when we go for a custom character, uh, we're going to first have a look at the races. We're going to go through all of them. We're going to have a look at the races and what they're about, and then we'll look at their customization. So what I'm going to do is, each race will have its own timestamp, and then all of it will be in there. We're going to start with Elf, we'll look at the description, the features, uh, we will basically look at all the details. If they have any cantrips or actions, we'll add that in there. Then, we'll look at the sub-races as well, and then the customization on top of that. Then we'll move on to Tiefling, on to Drow, on to Human, and so on and so forth. So, let's begin. Elf. With ethereal countenances and long lifespans, elves are at home with nature's power flourishing in light and dark alike. The features, the base racial speed, you can move 9 meters per turn. That's pretty standard, I think most races have that. Uh, you will notice as we go through, the halflings, the gnomes and the dwarves have a little bit less. And I think only the wood elves have a little bit more. All the others are locked to this amount. I may be slightly wrong with that, I mean, here and there, but I think that's, that's the gist of it. Uh, then... On each of these you can inspect. It doesn't do much if you inspect it, it just allows you to basically look what each of the, the highlighted bits are over here. On each of these you can do it, basically on every single one. Uh, but the proficiency, you have elven weapon training, uh, proficient with a longsword, shortsword, shortbow and longbow. And you can see all of that just adding up here as you select it. They have dark vision, they can see in the dark up to 12 meters, and then fey ancestry. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed. And magic can't put you to sleep. That's actually pretty useful, I'd say. Now, before we jump into just customizing this, let's look at the sub races. So for Elf, you have High Elf and Wood Elf. The High Elves is of the mystical Feywild. High Elves value magic in all its forms, and even those who do not study spellcraft can manipulate the weave. They get a cantrip, fire bolt, and as far as I understand, yeah, you actually get to select it. So it's, it's like a spell that you pick on a high elf because magic is basically in their blood. Uh, you get to pick from a good selection of wizard spells. Uh, currently, we have Firebolt selected. Uh, you can see here we have Acid Splash. I'm not going to cover every spell in its entirety. Uh, you can see the tooltip and pause on it if you'd like to. And then there's Bone Chill, Firebolt, Poison Spray, Ray of Frost, Shocking Grasp, Blade Ward, Friends, Dancing Lights, Light, Mage Hand, Mining Illusion, and True Strike. This is a pretty important choice. So, yeah, you should uh, definitely pay attention to that. <laughs> you should definitely pick the one that you think will be the most useful. It's kind of cool that they give you uh, basically <clears throat> combat options, but also stuff that you can use outside of combat that'll be useful. You know, like friends, as an example. Uh, it's it's fun. It's once again just giving you all the options that you'd need. So, Wood Elves. As I mentioned before, the High Elves and the Wood Elves, they do share customization options. The Elves, in general, have the same customization. Uh, and the Drows also share along with those. But Wood Elves. These Elves spend their reclusive lives in Faerun's forests. Decades of training in archery and camouflage are enhanced by an otherworldly swiftness. They are faster. So the others move at 9, these guys move at 10.5. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's useful. It's really useful. And that is it 
for the elves description. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in. So as I mentioned, uh, you can pick here either high elf or wood elf. And I'm going to say this probably multiple times, but their customization options, they are basically the same. Now I'm going to show you where the differences lie. I'm going to pick high elf and I'm going to jump in and we're going to customize it. And then I'll show you how it differs from wood elf. First things first, you get to pick a body type. Bottom right over here, you get to pick a skinny female. You get to pick a... I'm gonna... I'm a skinny male, it's not really a skinny male, but a thin male. Then you get to pick a buff female. Bigger, taller, more muscles, uh, and uh, a buff male. Now what I will do for you is I will just switch the class to barbarian so you can see the muscles. If you turn the censorship off, you can actually make your character completely naked and you can look at everything, you can admire it. And if you want to see that, well, you know, there's that other video that I've linked in the description. Go check that out. <laughs> but basically, they have muscles, you can see. Uh, these two, slightly bigger, slightly buffer. These ones, slightly smaller. Still muscles, but uh, slightly less of it. That's where the difference ends. The faces, you will notice, are the same. Uh, so everything from the neck up is exactly the same. And you should just remember that as we go through here. Uh, you can see that the face on the big one is slightly bigger, but it's just slightly larger. All the options are exactly the same. Okay, so we're going to go on female first. Uh, I'm going to click on edit appearance. We're going to look at it, and at the end I'll randomize. So, I'm going to show you right here at the start quickly. This is how it works. These are the skin tones available for High Elf. And if you take all skin colors... <laughs> then it basically unlocks it and you have every skin color in the entire game that's all the skin colors from all the races and the way it works is they suggest or recommend these and those would be the high elf ones if you don't want to use those you just say screw it and you keep going right so as i mentioned body types right here uh, you can pick these and they give you basically a nice starting point uh, whether you want a bigger character or a smaller character, easy peasy, you pick. Then you choose your identity. This is just how people refer to you. This has nothing to do with your character's visual appearance or anything like that. Uh, they'll refer to you as him or he if you have male, uh, she or her if you have female, or they and them uh, with other, as far as I understand. Then, voices. Let's listen to the voices. Where to next? Hmm. What was Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wet. It's opened. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? Hmm. Oh. Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Like, where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's more of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Like, where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Be wary, this place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Be wary, this place is trapped. That's the lot of them. You can obviously pick male voices on your female character and vice versa. You do you. You pick what you want. Next up we have the faces. Pretty important choice. As I mentioned, these are the same on High Elf and on Wood Elf. And as far as I know, I think they're the same on Drow as well. But we're going to look at them all anyway. You're going to see there are some decent differences here, but they are all elvish faces, right? 
So, you know, you're not going to find all the different ethnicities that you expect on the human ones. No, those are on the human faces. Pretty cool. Nice choices here. As I mentioned, the skin colors are curated. These are the elvish skin colors. Uh, these will be the high elf ones specifically. I do feel like this, uh, it says their moon tone. I guess that's for like a moon elf. I don't, I don't know. Uh, you'll see different ones on the drow uh, as well. But there are a bunch of decent skin tones here that you can pick from. Uh, they do go pretty dark, which is cool. And they go pretty light. Uh, there will never be a flaw in any of this. I'm just telling you, I will not find fault with this character creator. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They basically thought of everything here. Uh, you know, there's even beards on the ladies. Not the elvish ladies. The elves don't have beards, but the rest of the ladies. And like, yeah, you show me that. Then you've shown me perfection. I'm not going to go over all the skin colors. Uh, we'll just go show you a quick example of like, you know, the fact that you can do basically anything. You have all the skin colors from all the different races here. And if you take that off, you're back on the elvish ones. Right? There you go. Next. Scoring. These are some of the better looking scars that I've seen in a game. Uh, they are crisp and clear. They are detailed. They are a little gross sometimes, <laughs> as you can see. Um, and they give you more customization. You know, you're looking to make a backstory for your character. You're looking to tell the people in your party who you are when they just like, when they just look at you, they must know. This is what you use for that. It's fantastic. Once again, more options, better. Uh, they even have the customary slash across the eye that I'll probably end up using. <laughs> Next up, maturity. You get to make your character a little older. And this is also kind of well done. Uh, they have a real nice texture to the wrinkles. It's something that you don't often see. You know what I tend to try and do when I look at the age on, on a character is I look if they actually change the skin. And they do in this. They actually make the skin wrinkly here. There is absolutely fantastic detail. Uh, so yeah, you, you can you can do whatever the heck you want with your character. It can be old. It can be young. Fantastic. Then, freckles. Lots and lots of freckles. It's beautiful. Go for freckles. You have the intensity and you have the quantity. Uh, it's, it's very cool how... It, it's actually... I don't know, it's difficult to explain, but it's kind of freaky how they just appear. Uh, and you'll see when we do the vitiligo as well, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's sort of just like, it just materializes on your character's face. Uh, and like when you, when you take this and you like add them, it's like you've seen raindrops falling on, uh, 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 on, the, on the dry ground, you know? And you'll, you'll see exactly what I mean when I do this now. It's kind of crazy, right? It's so well done. I don't know, the dynamic nature of all of this is just... Ooh, you know? So, for the purposes of this video, we're going to leave it off. And we're going to keep going. Sorry, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. It's so cool. There's so much nice stuff here. Dude, when we get to the hair, then... Oh my god, then you'll hear me gush. Body art. They say body art. It's facial tattoos. Uh, there's a bunch of tattoos for the face here. I do not think there's anything that covers the entire body. I'm not sure. We're going to have a look now. Uh, this is something that I didn't vet before I came in here. I looked at a bunch of stuff, but I didn't look at this. Uh, these are beautiful. I think I've seen that on someone's butthole. I'm, so I'm sorry that I mentioned that, but uh, I've seen it before somewhere. Now you have to sit with that image in your minds. I do apologize, my friends. These are really cool. These are really cool. He says, desperately trying to change the subject. All right, carrying on. Oh, that's fantastic. I like the texture on it. So it's like you have the clear crisp ones and then you have the, the pri <laughs> it's not prison tats, but it's like more like war tats, you know? Oh, that's fantastic. Very nice. Uh, you can obviously change the color. I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. Let's just make sure it doesn't cover the body in any way. No. I don't know what that says. Hmm. Okay. See, there's a nice texture to this as well. When I change the color, you'll get a good look at what it will look like on different stuff. There's one on the neck. It's a rose. I love this. This doesn't... This would be cool if it covered the whole body. Oh, I love these so much. 
I think I, I picked one of those for my Diablo character. I saw this one in Greedfall. <laughs> it's a nautical tattoo. Good God. I still have nightmares of that. Hmm. That covers the ears. Kind of cool. Dude, these are some of the coolest tattoos, man. Is that a Pegasus? Uh-huh. Very cool. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Dude, look there. The beholder. This one, it makes me think of cats. I won't be using that one. Mmm, check this one out. Sick. It's just a simple sword down there. Very cool. Wow. Sick. Dude, there's so many. <laughs> it just keeps going. Oh, dude, look at that. It's centipedes. Cool, 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 cool. Ooh, man. That is really sick. Okay. Uh, let's look at the colors. I'll do it on these. You can do the intensity. Then we look at the colors. Keep in mind, you can do different colors on each of them. Obviously, some of them might look a little different. Like the ones with more clarity, with like thinner lines and stuff like that, they will look finer. Uh, you can obviously also change the skin color of your character and then the contrast will be completely different if you know what I'm saying. You have a darker skin color, you have some white uh, tattoos. It doesn't lose its color. They are still just as white as this. Dude, there's something about the white tattoos that actually looks fantastic. I don't know. I just feel like I could make it work on a character, you know? Ooh, the yellow is really nice as well. It's so bright. Man... I've been, like, looking at a bunch of games recently where it feels like they've pulled the saturation slider way too low. Yeah, not this game. Next up, piercings. Let's just take the tattoo off. Piercing style. They have names. Fastened stars. To the two earrings and then the studs. Lapis stud muffin. Oh, those are cool. Subdued loops. Midnight tears. Silver gold gala. I'm not sure if this is how it's supposed to be looking. It's very black. I'll, I'll assume it's how it's meant to look. Dark moons. Ooh, it's called red scintilla. Maybe when we get to the other races, it will have a color. Uh, maybe it's just a bug. I don't know. Colton Serpent, Crimson Hilt, Dirks. Hmm. Yeah, that's not Crimson in any way. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay, I guess I have one gripe with the character creation. It seems like some of them are bugged. Uh, Barovia Fangs, maybe they're not. Maybe this is what they look like. Uh, Minotaur Ring. Easy Breezy. Oh, those are cool. Archface Whirls. Commoner ring. Bard rings. And then we're back on none. Alright. Then we move it on to eyes. This caught me off guard the first time I saw it. It's like, it's like a teeny little menu here. You get to pick heterochromia. Uh, or, or not. And then you get to pick the uh, colors. As you can see, it's a curated list. You can zoom all the way in and see the eyes. Some of the best eyes I've ever seen in a video game. There have been others that have had nice eyes like this, but this is the kind of basically look that you can see even from all the way over here. Now, like yesterday, I was looking at Paleo's customization, and with Paleo, you like this far, and you can't even see the color. It's because of the way that they put it together, the reflections that they use on it, the basically the overall look and feel of the eye and the way they set it up for you to see. Uh, they can easily just mess it up and make that you can't see even a little bit of the color, and it's kind of a pointless uh, choice. But in this, the eyes are super impactful, and you get to see your character up close and personal quite often. Now, you will notice that the list of colors here is not all that long. However, it expands. And I'm going to mention this every single time we come through this menu with a race. I'm going to mention that it expands and, well, you can pick from a whole lot of them. I'm not going to cover them all here now. I will just show you quickly that you can get demonic eyes, 
you can get completely black eyes you can get much brighter colors you can get basically everything okay there are lots of choices here they just try and curate it slightly and give you the elvish ones and that's that it's on you to do what you want heterochromia uh, you pick one you pick the other once again you can pick one of them on this and the other one on normal you can do what you want with it it's kind of sick next up makeup this is what it says it's regular makeup you do have some control over it by changing the color down there we'll have a look at those in just a moment it is quite well done yeah it's not just like paint slapped on the face it actually looks like proper makeup and i was very impressed by this the first time i looked at it uh, this is much the same as it was in early access uh, so i do know these already they're cool they're cool so if i take this darker one here and i look at the colors you get to basically change firstly the intensity and uh, then you get to make it metallic right and what this does is if there's light sh that, that shines on it if you basically have it in a certain and it's better to show it off with something that's not black uh let's take like the blue one in a certain light it will look like a car's bonnet it will look metallic then you can make the metallic one look glossy as well uh, which gives it in my opinion a pretty fantastic look it's fabulous uh, and then you can also just take the metallic off and just have it glossy, which generally tends to make it less intense and deep, uh, but more bright, light, colorful, uh, happy, you know? But you can make it more intense by just sliding that over there. And that's fantastic as well. Again, it's, it's a super look. The colors, however, they're different on each of them. So I'm going to have to ask you guys to use your imagination a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them both to max, uh, and then I'm going to show you how a few of them look, right? Uh, as an example, this is just amazing. Like, uh, if I show you the gold or the yellows down here, it's it's super cool as well. I'm just going to show you a couple of them, and then I will show you what they look like without them, so you can see the colors, and once again, just imagine how they would look. Because again, uh, you know, to go through all of this would just be utter madness. He says while recording a massively long video. Anyway, <laughs> there's a lot of colors here. Okay, none of them hidden away from you. Yeah, yeah, the elves, they have access to all the same makeup stores as the humans and the uh, drows and the gnomes and the dwarves and even the dragon folk. They all have the same. Well, I don't know if the dragon folk actually have the same ones. I think they have different ones, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, the gray ones specifically look really cool if you put the gloss in the... Yeah, it's pretty sick. These ones here, it's pretty nice. Again, uh, lots of cool options here. Oof, look at that one. Wow. I love it. I love it. I don't know how they made the models so detailed, but they did. And uh, yeah, Larian, I love you guys for this. I will love you forever for this. I am going to be playing too much of this game. And I'm probably going to be spending way too much time in the character creator because, good God, there is so much cool stuff that you can do with this. Like, you can just let your imagination run free and you will find something here. You'll find something that can easily hook up to what you have imagined in your mind. Easily. It's awesome it's awesome it's awesome i love it uh you can also have a look down here at the bottom if you take this off lips this one's pretty self-explanatory uh it's the same as on the, the eye makeup you basically get to set the metallic tint level and the glossy tint level then you get to choose the colors and they look magnificent it is look at that red look at that red it's <laughs> I can't oh man i can't i cannot it's too nice oh okay sorry 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 jesus just colors lumen what the hell man you know it's more than just colors okay it's more than just colors it's the whole package it brings the look together <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm passionate about character creation okay jeez man but seriously it does bring the look together and if you spend a little bit of time here, if you do a little bit of work, you know, if you go through this and, 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 and really try, I'm telling you right now, you'll make something that you will show to someone and they'll be like, how the hell did you even pull that off? Because there is so much going on here that it'll be very easy to just miss out on some of it. It'll be very easy to just accidentally overlook something or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Speaking of which, here comes my favorite part. Hey. Now, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. There are sort of multiple ways you can look at each hairstyle. 
I think that the best way to do it would be to set a highlight to a bright color, let's say yellow. And we'll set the regular one to something like black. And we will take the gray in off. Gray in works the same on every single style, right? The highlights, however, they do not. So we're going to put the highlights on. You have a lot of choices with color. And we're going to go through them. Now, just know that this could potentially look tacky, okay? Just ignore the fact that it looks tacky and rather just pay attention to the fact that there are different uh, highlight sections that you can look at. <laughs> yeah, and um, there are different basically styles that you could create with this. Okay, so once again, ignore my choices. I'm just picking something that stands out and we're going to look at the hairstyles together. I'm going to zoom one out so we can look at the big picture. That's fantastic. I love it. Equality. That's what equality looks like. This right here. This receding hairline, that's that's equality. Uh, oh, I keep clicking accidentally. This is kind of nice here. That you got on the sides. That's a cool style as well. Ooh, not bad. Again, just know that you can obviously have a solid color here. Uh, or you can have the intensity of the highlight less. Uh, you can do what you want with it, dude. The hair in this game. So... I have until this point sort of had uh, Hogwarts Legacy up on a pedestal for their hair system. Yeah, uh, we've got another contender here. <laughs> we've got another contender here. And it comes in the form of uh, Baldur's Gate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the hairstyles here, the hair texture, the way the hair looks. I mean, I think that if you could play this at like 4K with all the anti-aliasing on, on like a massive monitor and you like really zoom your oculars in at this uh, and you look at it, it's going to look so magnificent. I mean, it looks magnificent right now to me. And I'm here on like a plebeian 1080p monitor with like, uh, you know, well, the graphics are maxed out, but still, still, this is really cool. This is just really nice hair. And I want to move a little quicker because I will never get through this stuff if I keep going at this speed. Now, on the topic of hair... I'm going to tell you that when you zoom in on this, for instance, you see that there's much more detail than you can see from here. But I'm also going to say that the hairstyles are shared across basically all the races, right? So your uh, elves, your dwarves, your halflings, your gnomes, they all have these styles available to them. Uh, there's nothing that's sort of like locked out or gated or whatever, because why would it be? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you might actually not have hair on a character, uh, but but like if you do have hair, then you have all these choices. The one thing that I will tell you that is not shared is facial hair. Facial hair is just not on some races. You will notice that certain races just can't, this is such a cool hairstyle, can't do facial hair. Oh my god, this one's also cool. Dreads. Oh, it's so long. Oh my god, no. I, I must keep going. I must keep going. <laughs> I can't stop. If I stop, I will stop forever. Uh, so the elves can't have facial hair. Uh, the humans can. Both male and female. Yep. Oh, I love it. I love it. There are so many nice hairstyles. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And you know, looking at all of this, the only thing I can think of is like, how the hell am I even going to make a thumbnail for this game there are way too many cool options here it's like i generally like to pick the best looking or the coolest looking options and sometimes that's really easy because sometimes the games just have like one or two really cool hairstyles or one or two really cool characters or you know whatever uh this game no 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 uh no this game no <laughs> no no it's got way more than just one or two that is so cool it looks a bit like cersei lannister it's nice all right so you'll notice that there are some that are sort of similar, uh, and there are some that sort of look like they could be related to others, and yeah, yeah, there are there are a few that sort of cross over a little bit, but man, there's enough variety, isn't there? They got the long styles, they got the short styles, they got the complex styles, they got the nice hair physics. Oh, God. They got something for everyone. It's like, you oftentimes think that maybe, like, oh, you know, oh, they're definitely going to trip by, by not adding enough male styles. No, dude. Oh, my God. Where was I? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's go back. Here we go. Here we go. Somewhere over here. I keep accidentally selecting stuff. Fantastic.
I love it. It's kind of cool also to see, you know, when one of the origin characters' hairstyles pops up here, and you're like, oh yeah, I know that one. Awesome. Real cool. And I mean, you've seen like half of it here, right? The big picture is that you can actually still change all of the details on these. In other words, you can pick any old colors. Uh, you can combine them nicely, like this one, for instance. Man, you can have more or less intensity. You know, they even feature like a bunch of really cool curly styles versus a bunch of really nice long styles. It's insane. It's actually insane. Uh, let's go up and pick just some random style quickly. And then let's have a look at the colors available. Let's take this one. So, hair colors. You are not so much limited with these. I'm going to turn the highlights off quickly. Ooh, that's a nice blonde. Oftentimes the blondes just don't look that nice. Look at the details. My god. These are the hair colors. Uh, you're not so much limited with these. They give you basically uh, everything. And again, it would be stupid if it was limited. I find it ridiculous sometimes that games do limit it in any way, shape, or form. These are some of the best browns I've ever seen. Have you ever heard someone say that? I'm not even going to talk about the reds. But basically, like, the idea of limiting hairstyles and colors is just ridiculous. Like, if there's hair on someone's head, it can be colored. And it can be styled. <laughs> like, what's your thinking? What is your thinking behind limiting it? You tell me that, and I'll call you a fool. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> that is a beautiful orange. Wow. Dude, look at this color. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. If you want to, like, craygasm over something, if you want to just, like, flip over something, let it be the hair colors. These are magnificent. This is beautiful. And again, you can do combinations here, right? And, like, I, I really feel... I, I wanted to show you an example quickly, okay? I really feel like if you go for something like, let's say, a red... Uh, and you combine it with, let's say, uh, an, an orange, uh, you can do, ooh, you can do some really, like some, some some subtle stuff, you know? Some slightly more subtle stuff, and you can make some really, really, really cool styles. Uh, you can do anything with it, though, as you can see. Like, anything. Oh, I love it. Uh, so, for the highlights, you will notice that the colors are slightly different. Uh, they're slightly more. Uh, we're going to go look quickly at, basically, I'll put this on... Uh, let's say white. Have a look at the highlights quickly. The highlights, I mean, I'm gonna, I'll skip through them pretty quick. Uh, if I might miss one or two here or there, just don't stress it too much uh, because you can see the colors here and they do translate pretty much one to one. They have basically more bright, vibrant, uh, crazy colors here and I, it makes sense. It makes sense. They're meant to highlight things. Oof, dude. It's kind of cool. I mean, even that's like, wow. That's wow. That's what it is. Look at that. Look at all these options you're going to have. And I want to just say, if anyone's sitting here right now watching the entirety of this video, looking at me click through hair colors, you're the man. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. You found a like-minded brethren. Yeah, yeah, we like these things. This is crazy. I would be doing this anyway. Okay? I would be doing this anyway. That's the beauty of this whole situation. Ugh. Never ever have I thought about brown in such a way. You know? Never ever. Now, our next option is the grain. So it's a good way to show it off if you go for black. Uh, then you come on here and you do gray in intensity, then you can gray whichever color you want. <laughs> it's like so weird. Um, but let me show you like gray neutral. That's what it would actually look like. So if you pick the gray here, then you can sort of have your hair gray a little bit, right? But then you can gray into uh, purple or you can gray into uh, yellow. Uh, and it's just a different way to highlight your hair. Once again, this is the, this is the method that people will use to make characters that blow your mind, you know? 
they'll probably do something like they'll combine the grain with the highlights and and the neutral color or the basic colors and then they'll have something just stupidly cool <laughs> you know and that brings us actually to the end of the uh female elf customization uh keep in mind once again this is sort of um uh, just a look at the high elves and the wood elves all right it's not so much the one or the other what i'm going to do now uh, is i'm going to just jump into wood elf because i think we're on high elf right now and then we're going to just show you what the the defaults look like there and then i'll jump onto the next one but let's randomize first because that's kind of fun look at this look at this look at this oh don't look at this if you want to keep your mind intact rather look away it's crazy and it's a smart randomized system can i tell you why so there is the vitiligo slider that basically if you think about it it should in essence be like somewhere between zero and a hundred every time right but it's not look look it's just that one option there. Every now and then you have one character that has it. We saw one just a little bit ago. Um, I think we've actually seen two already. And, uh, you know, every now and then there's there's a character that has it, but they don't always have it on. So it's a smart system where, it, as you can see here, sometimes picks it and sometimes doesn't. It's really cool. Uh, one of the coolest randomized systems that I've seen. Uh, and yeah, it, it gives you a good look at basically everything that's available. Fantastic customization. Fantastic. Awesome. Now we're gonna go back so that was the high elf and if i go to wood elf now you'll see this is the default wood elf uh, and i'm just very briefly going to show you the way this works so all this stuff is the same right uh, you will notice that the body type is exactly the same you can look at the male body you can look at the uh, slightly larger female body and what you're going to have is your skin tones will be different so for wood elf these will be your options and if you came here looking for wood elf customization just go to the elf customization the overall one uh, and and just know that this is what they will suggest for you so you can look at this and you can see it's a bunch of sort of woodier looking colors <laughs> i mean they're called wood tone these ones here uh, and and they're the ones that they suggest that you use on on wood elf you can go all skin colors and then all the options are there uh, and that's cool, but the faces are the same, the scars are the same, uh, these options are the same, the body art's exactly the same over here, um, and then the hair, you will notice, is also the same, right? So it's it's basically all exactly the same, your hairstyles are the same, all the customizations are the same, uh, you just sort of play in a different part, and you get different abilities and stuff with it, and you get suggested certain things, so that's it. That's the, that's your that's your wood elf customization right there, okay? Let's move on. Ooh, it's time for mail. Let's do this. Now we can obviously jump into a larger mail, and it doesn't really matter. It's all the same. Uh, the faces and stuff they don't really change. You are working with the same thing. So let's do this. First things first identity you get to pick male female non-binary or other that's just how people refer to you in the world and then the voices we're going to go through the voices every time basically because they are here it's opened i wonder what's back there more of those wretched things there's magic keeping this chest sealed i can feel its aura where to next hmm what was that Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. More of those wretched things. That's about it. 
there are some decent voices you can obviously as you can hear there pick a male or female voice you can sort of do what you want uh, these voices are sort of shared across most of the races uh, but it's it's an easy enough thing just to listen to them every time now the customization head choices these are the elvish heads these will be shared between wood elf high elf drow half elf actually has its own faces and humans definitely different uh, but these are shared amongst those all the male faces are the same as the male faces there it's kind of interesting because you actually get to set your age your maturity over here but some of the faces as you can tell uh, come with a slightly more mature look already now we're gonna go with the basic one here the standard one and we'll take it from there skin tones these are the ones that they suggest for high elf right and as you will see uh, I, I will jump at the end of this onto wood elf and I'll just show you the tones that they suggest there but basically you have access to all the skin colors if you click that button over there and you can basically do whatever the hell you want with it you can go out of your way to make your character look funky funky fresh <laughs> you, you can just you can pick any old color you want and it is easy enough you know uh, no one's gonna complain about it no one's gonna call you out for looking strange you do you man you do you if you pick all skin colors you will notice that the colors from the githyanki are here the colors from the orcs the colors from the drow the colors from the damn dragons okay it's all here uh okay maybe the dragon ones aren't here but <laughs> the others are here uh, and you can really do just basically anything with it but these are the ones that they suggest so we'll pick one of those for now scarring very nice scars <laughs> what a, what a thing to say about scars uh, very good looking detailed scars okay they do look quite realistic they are the same on the male and female characters they are the same against uh, across most of the races okay so just know that when you uh, do go through them you're basically going to have most of these same options then you get to set your maturity it's basically the age of your character it's a very cool setting it actually affects it quite drastically and yeah uh, again some of the faces already look slightly more mature and you can make them look even more mature if you'd like so that's pretty cool then you get to do the freckles i'll set the intensity up then you get to set how many you want on them uh, and then the intensity just makes them uh, brighter or darker well brighter more transparent or more opaque basically then vitiligo you get to actually set this on basically every one of the races uh, this contrasts with your skin color as you can see so picking a darker skin color here makes that show more it's cool yay for inclusivity it's good and that is the end of the general options body art same as on female uh, you get a bunch of different options for your tattoos here and uh yeah i gotta say like I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by them i'm pretty impressed unfortunately uh you're making a male character here but you are not getting any facial hair here uh, so there's no worries about your facial hair covering the tattoos or anything like that but uh yeah it's sort of a limiting factor i want to say now keep in mind the half elves they can have beards i don't know if the drow can have beards uh, that's actually a bit of a question mark in my mind right now i imagine they cannot but i i do not know so don't take me on my word for that we'll see when we get there uh, we'll see what there is when we jump in we are going through everything we are being exhaustive here we are being comprehensive here and we are looking at every single option many 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 times in the same video uh, just because you know sometimes you want to know what it'll look like on a male elf or you want to know what it'll look like on a female orc or on whatever else there is in the game okay let's have a look at the tattoo colors you can set the intensity that's basically just the uh, opacity and then there are colors they're pretty bright uh, i mentioned before that i really like the white here as a color and it's pretty cool what you can do with it honestly uh, you can combine this with the skin colors to make some pretty cool stuff because again the skin colors are varied and numerous and it's fantastic
lots of different white shades. Plus, obviously, you can set the intensity, which obviously helps as well. There you go. Let us remove the tattoo for now. Piercings. I mentioned before, I do think that there's currently a problem with the piercings, but you can get a good enough idea if you look at the piercing itself and the name. This is called Lapis Stud Muffin. I imagine they're going to be blue or something like that. Uh, these are subduers loops. Midnight Tears, that could possibly be black. But I think there's a bit of an issue with it right now, uh, just because of the fact that uh, the colors on some of them are completely black. I did restart the game already, and I had a look what it would look like, uh, you know, if, if it changed or whatever. It didn't, uh, so it's, it's a slightly deeper-rooted issue, if it is an issue. I don't know, maybe they're meant to look like this. I just doubt it because of the fact that some of them are called, like, as an example, Crimson Hilt. Uh, so imagine just that the ones here, uh, like, for instance, these ones would have red hilts. <laughs> They'd be red. Uh, there's a Minotaur ring. That's at least looking right. Easy Breezy. Arcfey Swirls. Same as on uh, female, by the way. All of these. Bard rings. And we're back here. Eyes. You can set heterochromia, uh, then you can choose two different colors, or you can just choose one color. As with most of the other options, they give you a curated list here of eye colors that they recommend for this race. And then you can just say, uh, screw you guys, I'm making my own thing. And you can disable it, and you can go for what you want to go for. I'm not going to be going for all of them here. I'm showing you the curated ones because that's what the race has. Uh, but I'm going to show you just as an example that you can do whatever you want with it. You can go for the demonic ones here, which are a black background with a color. Uh, there are a lot of different ones. There are a lot of different styles you can pick from. And there are other colors that are brighter, you know, uh, that are slightly more fetching. And you can sort of just pick and choose what you like. All right? Right. Carrying on. Then heterochromia, same thing. You can sort of do this and that, and it works. It works just fine. All right? Makeup. They do not limit you with the makeup. The males can have makeup too, if that is their desire. And that's cool. That's cool. It's good. Uh, you have an intensity slider here. I'll just show you that before I carry on. So you can make it brighter or, or uh, less so. And they have good looking makeup. I personally feel like they covered all their bases with the eye makeup. Uh, I mean, there's, there's like, you know, some room for stuff like blush and whatever, but I really think it's unnecessary. Uh, when you are in here, and I'll show you how it looks quickly, we'll take this one. When you are in here, you can set the metallic tint level, and you can set the glossy tint level, and if you pick a color, it will look fantastic. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can see the difference between them. Metallic just makes it look metallic. It'll look like some metal paint on you. Uh, and if you take metallic off and put glossy on, it makes it look like it's sweaty. It's witty. You can do both of them together, and then it just looks awesome. Uh, and some of these colors, they translate quite nicely uh, into, well, this. <laughs> but I'm going to show it to you quickly, let's say, with just the glossy on. Uh, or, uh, yeah, glossy is fine. I can leave glossy on. But if I put the metallic tint on, obviously it changes the color entirely. So keep that in mind. Uh, like, as an example, the gold looks way more gold if you do the metallic version of it. There's even one called hot chocolate. God, that is the color of hot chocolate. I really like that. Okay. Nutmeg. I don't know if that's... I guess it is the color of nutmeg. Again, uh, you can sort of go crazy with this lots of different options here and if you combine this with the skin tones and the tattoos and stuff like that well <laughs> well you've got a lot of options you've just got a lot of options it's kind of crazy i do commend you if you end up watching all of this though because man i make these videos assuming people will use the timestamps to skip between the different parts of them uh, because, yeah, I mean, like, that's how it would generally be used. Uh, you know, I don't expect someone to sit through a three or four or five hour character creation video. Uh, these are really nice, the gray ones, when you add the metallic tint to them as well. So there you go. A uh, lot of cool options here. Then you get to do the lips. The lips have the same options on them, where you can make them metallic and glossy. Uh, for the purposes of the video, we'll just put them on glossy again, and we'll just go through them. It makes you look pretty fabulous, you know? These are nice options. These are fun. These are cool. And, 
I would not hold it against you if you picked one of them. On your male or your female character. Because, damn, why wouldn't you want it? Pity you don't have uh, nail polish. But I guess it makes sense. Because most of the time you're probably going to be wearing gloves. I do hope there's an option to hide your helmet. I assume there is. There must be. There's always an option to hide your helmet, right? Cool colors here. Again. You can change them by just uh, sliding those around a little bit. There you go. Cool. Okay. Let's take this off quickly. Let's take this off quickly. And let's go to the hair. The hair options are fantastic. <laughs> the way I'm going to do this is because I want to show you basically uh, how the highlights look. I'm going to pick a color here. Let's take blonde is fine. And then we'll make the highlights something like uh, something darker. Is there black? Let's go for black. Right. So this looks a little gross. <laughs> but you get the idea. The reason I'm showing to you like this is so that you can see where the highlights are. But generally, I think I'd have it the other... Let's just do it the other way around quickly. Uh, black, neutral, and blonde. There we go. Uh, or I can go for... There's actually white here, right? White, white, white. Gray, cream, gray, gray, white. There we go. Okay, perfect. So now you can see. Uh, you can see sort of where the uh, where the highlights are. So then you can pick the style based on that. The style that you want based on that. Now there's a lot of hairstyles. So I'm going to skip through these pretty quickly. Uh, you must just sort of try and keep track. Try and pay attention. Man. There's a lot of really cool hairstyles. I'll mention this multiple times, but yes, you do have them all crossed over. You can pick all these same styles on female. And, I mean, yeah, you could be saying to yourself, well, Lumen, like, why did you end up doing every single one of these separately? Well, faithful viewer, because oftentimes you want to see it, how it looks on the character. And it's not always the same. You know, with these, these races, they have different faces. <laughs> that could be my uh, my tagline for my character creation videos. It's like, come on, man. I gotta look at them all. I do. Fantastic. Such cool hairstyles. Oftentimes games don't have great selections of short styles. Oftentimes games don't have good representation uh, where like curly hair is concerned. Or, you know, basically any other choice. This seems to have pretty much everything covered. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. And this is nice. I love how some of them have these very straight splits. Uh, it just makes once again that you can do some pretty interesting stuff with it. I have actually already seen from Early Access uh, that there are some cool things you can do as an example with face paints uh, and, and different colors in the hair. Now keep in mind again, like if I zoom in all the way, you will notice that there's a lot of detail here. You might look at some of the styles and think, oh, well, this looks kind of crappy. No, it doesn't. When you zoom in all the way and you look at it right up close and personal, uh, there's actually really a whole lot going on there. Uh, when you zoom out a little bit, I guess it loses some of its shine. Not so much shine, just loses some of the detail. Which is fine. Uh, but again, I'll mention this. You do get to see your character right up close and personal in the cutscenes of the game all the damn time. So make sure you pick a face that's uh, agreeable. Make sure you pick a overall look that's agreeable. Because, good God, you know? Fantastic. Curly styles, as I mentioned. Now, as we get to the end here, let me show you the hair colors. There's no give all hair colors option, okay? <laughs> There's no, basically, option that will uh, unlock more, magically unlock more hair colors. There's just a certain selection on each of them. Uh, I'm going to take the highlights off quickly and show you these ones. Now, obviously, this may differ race to race. 
keep that in mind. I don't think it differs all that much race to race. I'm just saying it may. I'm covering my bases here. Uh, as I mentioned when I was customizing the females, there are some really nice hairstyles here. Uh, the highlights are actually a little bit different. And you will notice that the highlights have more sort of brighter color. Oh, that's, that's really nice. They have brighter colors. And you can sort of just accentuate what you're going for here with a nice highlight using those. The pinks are great. The purples are great. The blues are kind of nice. I will say that the blues are... You know, the, that's the one thing I will say. is like your, It doesn't look like a blue here, but when you put it on here, it does look quite nice. Again, however, in the highlights, it makes up for it. It more than makes up for it. There you go. Okay. Highlights. Uh, if you look at them right here, you will notice that you can say all... And then there's a massive list of highlight colors. I'm not going to click on every single one of them. I'll just show you some of the more extreme situations. Uh, you have a much blacker black here that on certain styles, if you look at as an example, which one was it that had that split straight through the middle? Uh, I don't remember. But there was a split straight through the middle on one of them that basically gave you a fantastic look at, oh, here's a good look, at, at how dark the, the highlight color can be. Uh, and, and you know how light it can be as well. And there are a bunch of different colors here, if you un untick this, that you can use. And you can use to great effect. So there you go. Then, finally, you have grain options. So with the grain, you get to pick basically the default colors, which are these. Uh, and you get to have your hair sort of gray any amount. Or you get to do grain with other colors. So it can be purple or pink in as well, you know? You can do whatever your heart desires, or red in. <laughs> you, can, you can have your character red in. Whatever the hell that means. There you go. Alright? Fantastic. Fantastic. And that brings us to the end of the male customization. On High and Wood Elf. Now, let us randomize. Then we're going to have a look at what the uh, limitations are on Wood Elf. Fantastic. Look at this. God, it's awesome. There's just so much. Like, each of these tells a story. Most of them, not stories you actually want to hear. But, like, still, they all tell stories, right? <laughs> Jeez. Man, some of them are pretty... They, some of them are pretty bad. They go to extremes, right? They don't hold back. There you go. That's your randomization on the elves. Good lord. Good lord. Insane. Insane. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I'm much like with the female. I'm just going to quickly show you what it looks like if you go on Wood Elf. Uh, so there's your default look. And if you edit the appearance here, then faces are the same. All right. You have the same selection of faces here. But you will notice that your skin tones are these. Uh, they are the wood tones. They're the Wood Elf colors that they will give you. Uh, and they are slightly different from what you would see on the High Elves. But if you click this button over here, you have everything. Everything that you could possibly want. So do not worry if you think you're going to miss out on it. It's all the same stuff. And with these things, it's all the same. All these options, your eye colors are a little different. But once you untick this, it's all of them. Uh, so if you perhaps couldn't make up your mind with some of these things, just know uh, that you can unlock it. Or you can use the curated version. I say if you can't make up your mind, sometimes it's better to follow the advice, you know? And if I randomize here, you will notice immediately that um, it, it just it throws caution to the wind and it starts going crazy with stuff, you know? Uh, one of the cool things that I've noticed is that if you untick all skin colors and then you randomize, then it randomizes within this pool. And if you do that and then you randomize, then it just goes mad and it picks any of the colors, which is sick. It's nice, once again, that you have control over that. Okay. Back we go. So that is <laughs> somehow the first race done. Now we're going to move on to tieflings. Uh, we're going to move on to having a look at what this race is about. They look pretty awesome. Descended from devils of the nine hells, tieflings face constant suspicion in Faerun. Thankfully, their arcane abilities make them natural survivors. There are sub-races, but we're first going to look at the regular features. 
Their base speed is 9. Dark Vision, they can see in the dark up to 12 meters. Then they have Hellish Resistance. They have resistance to fire, only taking half damage from it. You will notice that their proficiencies uh, are over here, but you will you will see that when we when we pick these as well. That doesn't really change, but as we go through them, uh, the weapon proficiencies and stuff, you should look at that. Uh, just as I mentioned at the start of the video, keep looking at this side over here, right? Now, when we jump in, uh, you will notice that each of them has a different cantrip that they can cast. So let's do the sub races quickly before we do the customization. You will think by looking at them that they have their own unique options, but no, they all have the same options. You just have a law reason for looking one way versus looking the other way. So Asmodeus tiefling bound to Nessus, the deepest layer of the hells. These tieflings inherited the ability to wield fire and darkness from the archdevil Asmodeus's infernal bloodline. They have produced flame, which makes a flame in your hand and sheds light in a radius. It can also deal damage when thrown. All right. Mephistopheles, tiefling. Descended from the archdevil Mephistopheles, these tieflings are gifted with a particular affinity for arcane magic. They have mage hand as their uh, cantrip that conjures a spectral hand that can manip manipulate and interact with objects for 10 turns, which is pretty cool. And you can notice, obviously, immediately that they look different. And then lastly, we have Zariel tieflings. These guys like to fight. <laughs> From the Zariel bloodline, they're empowered with martial strength and can channel Syrian flame to punish their enemies. Thaumaturgy. Gain advantage on intimidation and performance checks. So where these guys are concerned, they, they do say, oh, these guys are you know empowered with martial strength but their stats are the same so you can see here they have the same stats as you switch through them all right exactly the same the females here they are nothing different about them okay so it again just gives you a law reason to pick one over the other and you get that cantrip so keep that in mind and we're going to jump now into the uh, customization right we're going to edit the females first then we'll jump into the males now, as I jump in here, I'm just going to say that this is the tiefling customization. I can show you very briefly uh, what the defaults look like on each of them, and I will at the end. It just takes a few seconds. Uh, what their suggested colors look like, but just keep in mind, we're looking at the tieflings now. They all have the same options, the same faces, the same horns, the same everything, right? They just usually curate them a little bit. Let me show you what I mean as we jump in. Edit appearance. Oh, first things first, I guess I should just show you the body shapes. So that's the small female one. That's the small male one. You can see they have some ridged sort of bits and pieces here. They don't just have like flat skin. It's kind of nice. The bigger one looks pretty buff. It's nice. And the uh, bigger male one. Fantastic. Customization options on both are the same. All right. Can you look at the camera, please? <laughs> <laughs> here we go so first things first i showed you the body types already identity you can pick male female or non-binary and other that's just how people refer to you in the game world uh then the voices there's magic keeping this chest sealed i can feel its aura where to next hmm what was that let's hope the locals are friendly hells something just woke up down here be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? There we go. Now the heads. These tieflings have some of the coolest looking faces that I think I've seen. They look fantastic. Uh, there was one, I will say, complaint that I think people had with tieflings is that the horns look a little strange uh, sort of around the, the head here. But they've already addressed it a little bit and you can see they've got these little bumps and layers and whatever. And like they made it look a bit more natural. I feel like they could put a little bit more shade in there, but overall it still looks pretty amazing. 
all right and you'll see it changes a little bit with each face uh, each of them has sort of a unique look where it does look more natural as you go through some of them but others not so much uh, so the faces these are going to be the same on all three of these sub races right so basically just know that the color that you get in here that can be changed the faces are the same the colors you have all the options uh, as i jump into the skin color here you'll see that these are the ones that they suggest for this specific tiefling sub race uh, it's warmer tones uh, you will see that it's sort of pinker tones browns uh, neutrals stuff like that and then when you go on to as an example the is it the asmodeus ones then you have the blues the colder colors stuff like that uh, but again uh, we're gonna have a look at all of them here on this one specifically and we are going to hopefully cover everything now as i get close to the end here those are the suggested colors and you can see some of them look like they really fit but when you go to all then you basically have everything unlocked uh, and i'm going to skip through them a little bit okay uh yeah I'm, I'm showing you basically everything that you get here the darks these are sort of more like drow colors um the lighter ones here you can basically do anything you want with it uh, and just know that again you can do this on any of the races it's just sort of a limitation that they put in place for you you know if you want to basically play a law friendly character then you know what to do don't click on the all skin colors button uh, but it can give you more freedom with your customization so if you want to make the red guys to get their passives but you don't want to be red uh yeah no problem they got you they got you you can even be green okay you can even be green <laughs> it's pretty cool uh, for the purposes of the video, we'll just go with this one. It's fine. Uh, maybe a little a little darker. I mean, I don't I don't actually remember what we were on by default, but eh, it's fine. There we go. Scars. They look pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to say that immediately. It's also pretty cool, the eyes that they give you here. These are obviously the demonic ones are by default, the ones that you'll choose. Uh, we do have some tattoos here and some mascara or makeup or whatever around the eyes. Just ignore that for now. We're not there yet. These are always pretty cool. There you go. As we go down, maturity. You can make any of them look a little older. Freckles. You can take the uh, quantity up and down. And then the intensity is just basically the opacity. And you can have your vitiligo on anyone. Uh, you can pick it on basically any of the races. This interacts quite nicely with the skin colors. So you can sort of make something pretty unique where that's concerned. If you'd like to there you go right uh let's take a slightly lighter skin tone just because i want to look at the makeups and stuff on it uh let's go with this one for now and then let's jump on to body art here we go fantastic i should actually take the makeup off uh, just so that you can see properly what's going on there you go now keep in mind we can change the color here there are obviously a lot of choices for color i am actually surprised a little bit that you can't do the metallic tints and glossy stuff on the tattoos but it's fine it's obviously not a big deal there's obviously still a lot of options available here regardless and for anyone wondering these are the same on all the races so there is no one tattoo that's specific to like tieflings or one that's specific to dwarves or anything like that they all have the same ones okay let's look at the colors intensity is basically just the opacity there are a decent selection of colors here they basically give you full rgb control like they give you all the colors uh in these selections that you could possibly need i I guess there might be some niche cases where you like you might want a slightly brighter yellow or slightly brighter pink or nah, the blues are actually covered 
Uh, but for the most part, everything's here. I really like the way the whites look. I said that before. I really like the way the yellows look, actually. They're quite nice. Uh, and yeah, you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. Like, some of these look pretty fantastic if you if you put uh, a brighter color on them. There you go. Right, piercings. Piercings. Fastened stars. Lapis stud muffins. Subduer loops. Midnight tears. Some of these seem to have some issues with their lighting and their colors. Uh, but you can still get an idea of what they look like at least. Like these are called red scintilla, but they're definitely not red. I imagine, knowing Larian, this will probably be fixed within a week. <laughs> they'll, they'll be very quick with this. Maybe even a day. Uh, but mm, it'll take about as long as it takes for someone to actually report it. Uh, so I will report it and tell them that these might be bugged. Uh, but yeah, for now, just I imagine that they'll be different colored. And we're back on none. All right. Eyes. So these dudes... The tieflings have the demonic eyes. You, you don't have to have demonic eyes. You can have a more natural looking tiefling, as you can see here. Uh, but they have, by default, access to the demonic ones. You'll see in just a moment when we get to them. They have cool colors. But they also have cool colors with the black background. The whites are black. And honestly, like, if I could zoom in further, I would. Because, like, it looks so nice. The detail on those eyes... Uh, and I mentioned this mon like many times already. Uh, here you've even got multicolored ones. The demonic blue, it's got like the... Look. Oh, it's really cool. Like you've got... There again, this one. The purple. You've got like the green glow in the middle. But basically, the eyes in this game are, are so impressive. Because like you can zoom all the way out. And you can still see the eyes. I don't know how they do it. But like most other games or many other games, there's nothing like that. Like, when you zoom all the way out, bleh, good luck seeing the color of those eyes. But in this game, yeah, man, yeah. Let's take this one. I really like that. All eye colors. You can take anything from any of the other races. You can see here. It's kind of boring. <laughs> so I wouldn't even bother uh, because the demonic ones are the cool looking ones. Uh, so, yeah. And look, there's actually like a little fire going inside there. It's really sick. Just know that you can you can go all of them. Then heterochromia, uh, you can sort of take the one on the one side and the one on the other side. Easy. Actually looks fantastic. Makeup. This is the makeup around the eyes. Uh, you get to set the intensity over here. And then you get to set, you'll see in just a moment when you look at it, the glossiness and the metallic factor. And I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. It's nice. Let me show you. So, metallic, glossy, both together. If you take a color, let's say, for instance, uh, this yellow, it can make it look pretty spectacular. Pretty damn cool. Uh, and it translates quite nicely onto all the other colors. And with this, once again, you can, just, you, can, you can come up with such fantastic combos with the face paint, the makeup, the eyes, the skin color, all that stuff together. You can do some super, super cool stuff. But let me show you this without the metallic because it'll give you a better look at the colors. Uh, and then you can just imagine that you add the metallic to any of them and it changes it like that. Okay? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, like, uh, in terms of choice, you are spoiled. There is basically nothing better out there right now. They give you everything. Like, <laughs> man, it's like a... A character creator's wet dream, this. It's like the the perfect character creation system. Oh, like this one's probably going to look sick if you make it. Oh, look at that. There's just so many nice options here. And like, I will, I will be able to sit here all night looking at these because it's just, it never ends, man. Like, you know, there's always something new to see when you're looking at these. There's always something exciting to create. It just keeps going, you know? It just keeps going. Once again, uh, you can sort of mix things up quite nicely by using these two, uh, or using just one of them, you know? And there you have it. That's the makeup. Now we're going to do the hair. Oh, ho, 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 the hair. So I'm going to show you what the hairstyles look like, and I'm going to leave the horns on, because we're on the tiefling customization now. Uh, deal with it, okay? Deal with it. Let's take black neutral over here for the hair color, and then let's take a nice red for the uh, highlights. Put the intensity all the way up to the top. Uh, let's take red four. 
I'm doing this so that you can see where the highlights are as I go through here. We've done the same on all the others so far. But basically, a bunch of different hairstyles here. The horns are just shoved on top there. Some of them look better with horns. Some of them look worse with horns. Uh, but these hairstyles are on every single race. So the ones that have hair, at least, they will have this hair, right? So just keep that in mind. Uh, so if you think I'm cheating you out of your hairstyles by having horns on them, I'm not. It's on all the others as well. Just go look at one of the others and you'll see them there. Uh, it's cool. It's cool. And just like that, he realizes he can use the arrow keys to turn the character. <laughs> that makes it so much easier. I don't have to keep clicking over there. That's so nice. See, see, I say that some of them look better with the horns and some look worse. I feel like some of them are just natural fits. Like oftentimes you just have it sort of stabbing through the hair like that. But other times it looks like it was sort of made for it. Like some of the hairstyles, they just suit it better. Like as an example, I feel like this one is the perfect tiefling hairstyle. Maybe this one as well. Uh, because it sort of, it goes into the hair. It, the hair goes around it and sort of fits through it naturally. Uh, it works, you know. Some of them do work. It's awesome. This one as well. I feel like this is also a pretty great tiefling one. I'm not saying all the ones with the fringes are the best ones. I'm just saying that they look kind of nice when they cover the horns a little bit. You will also notice as we go through the female options here that when we jump onto male, you will have the same options there. That's so cool, man. I love this split and this one. And this one. I love this face. I think I might make a tiefling. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to like decide preemptively because I have not decided. And I'm like sitting here, and I hope you guys are sitting here too, just like thinking about this, wondering like what the heck you're gonna make because there's so much, man. There is so, 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 so much. Uh, and and like, I'm thinking barbarian. Uh, you know, I'm seeing this axe swinging around here the whole time. I'm thinking barbarian, maybe tiefling, maybe wood elf because you get a bit of run speed there. Um, but. Man, Tiefling is just, it's so intimidating and like really cool, man. Because you're like, you're playing as something a little different. You get to experience a different sort of reality uh, in that sense. Where they do say like they sort of hated in Faerun, you know, they hellspawn. You know, why is anyone going to be friendly to them? But you might find allies in unexpected places, you know, with that being the case. Tiefling, man. Oof, what a concept. So that's awesome. That's really, really cool. Now, as we're going through here, I will just show you the way this works. Uh, you get to pick the one color, you get to pick the other color, uh, you can make the highlights more or less. Uh, that's the red on the side there. The highlight colors are far more plentiful. Okay. I'll show you the basic colors quickly. These are less extreme. Uh, there's there's good, good colors here. They look amazing. Lots of nice saturation on the color, vibrancy, everything else. Uh, these colors are awesome. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see up close and personal. The colors are great. Like, this is some of the best hair color. Like, the browns. Oh, I mean, and I barely ever say nice things about brown. But, like, these are nice browns. And when we get to the reds. Mm. And the ginger colors. Oh, it's just, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. And then you can obviously combine it with the uh, highlights to make something spectacular. Like this one here, look. Oh, it's so bright. It's so bright. The red, uh, it's sort of like a wine red. I feel like it's it sort of missed the mark a little bit. Not going to criticize it, really. The pinks are fantastic. They're awesome. Really, really nice. Pretty cool. The greens are good too. And I mean, like, the one thing I will say that Tiefling has going for it, uh, above all the others, apart from the horns, because the horns are fantastic, but they have the fact that you can do almost anything with it, and it, it can be explained, like, in some uh, obfuscated law to be natural. <laughs> so it's cool. You know, do what you want. Uh, so now, this specifically on this hairstyle gives you a nice look at what the highlights look like. I'm not going to go through every color here, uh, but you get the idea that there are some very bright colors to choose from here. Uh, they mixed up a little bit in the highlights here. You'll see that they're sort of not in lined up like the hair colors are, but there are more colors here anyway. Uh, and you can do some cool stuff, uh, you know? I really love the idea that there is a story to be told here if you want to tell a story. Uh, and that's like, it's being told 
with every little bit and piece of the character that you're creating. You know, you can make some weird half, half, hot, half cold character like uh, My Hero Academia if you want. Uh, you can uh, make someone like, for instance, the uh, origin character that they have, where the scars and stuff on the character are actually explained. And yeah, once you've looked at all the options here, you will appreciate those origin characters even more because some of them have unique options on them. I said I wasn't going to go through all of these. Here I am going through all of them. They look fantastic though, don't they? Okay, there you go. That's a good look. That's a good look. Uh, they sort of uncurated. I don't know why you have only these and then only those because there's no real rhyme or reason between the choices. Uh, Grayen, what this does is it grays your hair. Uh, you can choose the amount that it grays the hair over here and then you can choose the color that the gray is. Once again, the same as the highlight colors. Not exactly the same, but a similar selection. Lots of grays and sort of more neutral tones uh, obviously because that's what the grain would require but then you also have some colors here and you can mix and match quite nicely as an example if i take a yellow here and i take like a black over there you can make your character gray yellow if you know what i'm saying it's cool yeah it's very cool lots and lots of nice options then speaking of lots of nice options facial hair on the ladies thank you larian this is what i've always wanted it's like it's my birthday come early <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, let me just change the hair quickly to something up top so that it's not covering the beard. I love it when they give you unrestricted access to beards, okay? The elves, they don't have beards. Yeah, you know, like whatever, screw the elves, okay? We're tieflings now. We can look dapper if we want. Why not let the ladies grow a beard and a mustache? Like, come on, man. This is cool. And there are some really nice beards here. I think that, as I mentioned earlier, the hair texture and the hair work that I saw in, as an example, Hogwarts Legacy was some of the best I'd ever seen. But the beards in this are the best I've ever seen. And I, I mentioned before, like the hair in this game and a lot of the styles here, they're definitely on par with the Hogwarts Legacy stuff. But these beards, they're a level above. They are definitely a step up. Uh, and, and you know what makes it even better is when you actually do the grain. Uh, and you and you and you look at how cool it looks when you do it properly. So if I go for like the the proper gray tone, it's like oh man. You look at the look at the facial hair and you choose the amount. It's like it it blends so nicely in there. You can be like a silver fox with just a little bit of gray, a little bit peeking out here and there, or you can push it all the way up, and it just looks good any way you do it, any way you spin it. It looks great, and then the the fullness and the thickness. You know, it's it's funny. I was talking about this recently when I was streaming. It's like it's funny how much things have changed. It's like you look at this beard as an example. Let's say this one over here. You look at the movement on the beard. You look at the amount of strands. The amount of basically pixels and work that goes into this one beard. You could look at this beard right here. And this whole beard, it could have a bigger and more complex mesh. It could have more pixels, particles, texture work, whatever you want to call it, than the entire eastern kingdoms in world of warcraft that's how complex and how good this beard looks it's insane uh, they've done so well recently with with stuff like this and like Baldur's gate you're looking at the gold standard here man you're looking at like the best possible choice i have one criticism and like one criticism only about this system and i mean it's a simple fix it's something they can do quite easily it's like stubble the only thing that I think that they could have done better on is stubble. In other words, they could have given you all these cool beard options, like they could have given you this one or whatever, then they could let you add some stubble onto your character. That's the only thing I could criticize. The colors on here, this is your hair color. So don't think that uh, I'm, I'm sort of screwing you out of choices. It's the same hair color, it's the same gray color. Uh, but yeah, the only complaint that I would have, the only criticism I would have is color. Now, let's move on to the horns. This is pretty exciting. If you're looking at tieflings, you obviously want to see the horns. Uh, these each have their own name. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see them in their entirety. Hornless, Rune Curves, Baleful Spikes. Uh, let me actually go back and let me just turn the tip color onto something else, okay? Uh, just so you can see how far it is. So the horn color we'll leave on ash. The tip color is yellow. I know it looks gross. It does look gross. Okay, and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but it, it shows you at least where the tip color is. So you can sort of see where you're going to combine those colors. Once again, this is the kind of thing where you can sort of make your character look a specific way. Uh, and you can do it quite easily. Like there's just a lot going on here, you know. I think it would look cool if you could make like blue into red on the horns. That would look kind of cool. Yeah. 
You got some sort of rammy looking horns, some devil horns, uh, pointy horns, and then some blunt horns. It's cool. Lots of good options. The horn colors. Uh, there is no... Let me take the, the tip color off. Uh, looks like you actually have to have it on. Interesting. Okay. There's no, like, curation on this list. You know, if, if you're looking at the horn colors here, you've got the same ones on all of them. Uh, and that's that. There's a lot of decent options here. Same colors from the uh, hair colors. And they just sort of threw it on here. There are some darker ones, some lighter ones. I am not 100% sure if the sub races have the exact same ones, but I think they do. Uh, I do think that they have the same ones. And like the, the darker ash ones here obviously give you the look of black if you're looking for that. Uh, and then the lighter ones give you the look of white. And they do, they do have some nice colors here. Absolutely. They even have pink. You can even have pink horns because why wouldn't you want pink horns? It can be like a neon tiefling, you know? <laughs> Why not? Oh, yes, black and white. Okay, at the end. Right. Fantastic. As I mentioned, the tip color. You can make that uh, basically anything. There's a lot of different options here. And, yeah, you're going to want to mix and match. You're going to want to mix and match. <laughs> okay. I think I'm distracting you guys with a facial hair. Unspoken rule. Remove the facial hair after you put it on to show it off. That brings us to the end of the customization on the female tiefling. Keep in mind, once again, you can change the body shape to the bigger one and it will look the same. Uh, they just have different presets on them. Uh, you will see that the faces and stuff are exactly the same. Now, let's randomize and let's see what this gives us. Oh, that's so cool. That looked like a human. Man, that is super duper. There are some really cool styles here. You can see even some of them have heterochromia. Some of them have, uh, obviously, the vitiligo on them. Oh, man. How will I ever make my own character? There are just so many choices here. Some of them have beards, and others do not. I love it. The randomization system in this game is just perfect. You know, you can see they don't weight it towards the beards. They don't put the beards on every time. They don't put the vitiligo on every time. Uh, they don't do heterochromia every time. It's often, but not every time. It's fantastic. There you go. A and just like that, you've seen a, a slew of awesome looking characters, right? Now, before we jump into mail, I'm just going to go back quickly. And I'm going to show you the defaults on the uh, Mephistopheles and the Zariel ones. Uh, I had the names wrong earlier, but it's whatever. So... On these guys, your skin tones, they're a little different. you got the azure tones, and these are the sort of bluer ones. Uh, storm tones over here. Then you got some neutral tones, some brown tones, and even some red tones. But these ones up here are the unique ones. And then if you pick the all skin colors, you have access to everything. Okay? Now, if I go down to the horns, I will just make sure. Yeah, so it's exactly the same uh, on both of them. And then if we go back and we have a look at the Zariel ones, we look at their defaults quickly. And you can have a look here. They have the sulfur tones, the smoke tones. Very cool, obviously. Uh, the sulfur ones are nice. Neutral ones. And then more neutral. And then you get down to the other ones, the darker ones and stuff like that. And then there's all the skin tones. That's it. And once again, as I mentioned, the horns are the same. On, on all of them. And there we go. That's the females for tiefling done. Now, pretty exciting. We're going to jump into the males. They look pretty awesome. Fantastic. Body type. Uh, I have shown you already what it looks like, but I'll show you again. There's the normal one, and then there's the massive one. These dudes are buff. I mean, like Henry Cavill buff. They look awesome. Uh, the faces, obviously, are the same. As you get started here on the male customization, you will... And I'm going to tell you right now, this is the tiefling customization for all three of the sub races. Uh, they're all the same. They just have a few curated options, but you will notice that you can pick your identity. You can pick male, female, or non-binary, or other. That's just how people refer to you in the game world. And then there's voices. Let's listen to them. Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. 
Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. So you can pick male or female voices. It's not a thing. Faces. Pretty impactful choice. Although these guys all have pretty square jaws, uh, they have a certain look to them, right? Now again, keep in mind that if you pick uh, one of the other sub races, you will obviously have the option to start with a different skin color here. But once you get to the skin tone choice down here, uh, you will notice that even though they give you a curated list of skin tones, you can pick all of them. Uh, as with the others, I'm going to go through the curated list and I will just show you afterwards what the differences are. But once you click on all skin tones, then it just sets you free and you can do whatever you want with it. But there are decent options here. There's a lot to choose from. Uh, they translate quite nicely. They always look good. I mean, like any of these skin tones, I, I can click literally anywhere here and I can be like, yeah, man, I can make a fantastic character with that skin tone. Uh, a few different combinations, throw a few different shades of uh, tattoo on there or whatever, and boom, you got yourself a nice character. You can put all skin tones on, then you can just go mad. You can make yourself green. You can make yourself pink. You can make yourself purple. Uh, you just do you, right? You just do you. You can make your tiefling into an orkling. <laughs> it's, it's whatever. Uh, it's on you. It's up to you. Go crazy. Uh, let's take the red tone. There you go. This one for now. Scarring. Pretty cool scars. Nice options. There's these two here. Across the cheeks. Across the snoot. Big slash over there on the lip. This one, I'd, I'd love to hear the story behind this, but yeah, it's pretty cool. There you go. And you can set the maturity. You will just notice it puts some extra frown lines in, a few wrinkles here and there. It's cool. It looks better on certain faces than it does on others. It sort of modifies certain faces more than others. Uh, and then you get to do freckles, the intensity, and the quantity. It's kind of cool. And then the vitiligo. You will see this pop up when we start randomizing. You can sort of have as much or as little as you want. Uh, you can't, can't change the color on this, uh, but it, that's normal. That's how it works. Uh, you get to change your skin color, and it will just contrast with that in different ways. Right? Body art. Let's take the freckles off quickly first, though. No one should ever say that line. <laughs> That's such a sad thing to say. Oh, let's remove the freckles. No, please don't. <laughs> I love the freckles. Tattoos. I'm going to go pretty quickly through here, uh, because for the most part, this is the same on every single race. I say for the most part... It is actually exactly the same on every single race, but I say for the most part because, uh, you know, on certain races it looks different, on, with certain, like, combinations it looks different, and, yeah, you might want to do different stuff with it. Uh, you might want to know what it looks like on a tiefling instead. You might want to know which parts the horns are covering, how it looks with the horns, uh, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of things you might want to know. So here they are, being shown off. Right, colors. Let's pick this one. Some decent choices for colors here. You get to pick the intensity of it. I don't mind going through all of these because there's not that many. And they're very bright. Uh, so it's nice to look at. There we go. I did mention before, and I sort of will say again, it would be cool if they gave us the same options that they give us on the makeup with this, where they can make it glossy and tinty. Uh, tin by tinty, I mean like metallic. Uh, it's cool. It's cool when you can do that, but there's the colors. Let's take it off for now. And then let's do the piercings. Uh, I'm trying to remember quickly if the makeup... Yeah, the lips are in the makeup. Okay. Piercings, they are, I think, a little bugged right now. Uh, the colors are maybe missing, uh, but you can sort of still get the gist of what the piercings are like. You can sort of get a good look at what they are regardless. Just know that the colors might be a little different as you uh, keep playing the game and they patch it. Or maybe when you jump into the game it's actually fixed. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. But they are pretty cool. Regardless, there are some nice options here. Not sure why they're called bard rings. 
But anyway, there you are. There you are. Eyes. So the tieflings, they have as a sort of default the demonic eyes. And you can pick regular ones. They have a few suggested regular ones here. Uh, but with the curated choices, you mostly get in the demonic ones. You'll see in just a moment, they'll pop up. Here you go. The demonic ones are good choices. They actually, you can see them moving. There's like a little fire burning in the eyes. They are fantastic. They look awesome. Uh, the game just has good looking eyes. Then you can do all eye colors and you get a whole lot more choices. Uh, you can do sort of a whole lot more with it. And uh, then you can do heterochromia. So you can pick one in the one side and one in the other side. And it can just look even more spectacular. Right? Fantastic. Cool. Good. Makeup. There's a decent selection. You can change the color on these. Which is cool as well. And they have some nice uh, extras. Let me show you what I mean. You can set the metallic tint level and the glossy tint level. What this does is it transforms the colors into something else. As an example, a simple cream color ends up looking like some super cool metallic silver. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. Like the grays as an example are, are pretty great. Uh, but let me show you the colors quickly without the tint on. Basically, there's what it looks like with just glossy. Without glossy, it looks like that. Uh, on the colors, like gold, for example, that's what it would look like. You put the glossy on, you put the tint on. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but let's look at them without that on, clear. Pretty cool. Decent selection of colors, as you can see. I mean, they go really bright. Like, oftentimes you think, ah, oh, man, you know, they're going to lose some of their shine if you put it on a darker skin tone or on a lighter skin tone. They just won't have the contrast that they need. They do. They, <laughs> they really do. Uh, so you get to pick and choose here. Then you also get to do the lips. And the lips have the same situation where you can uh, put the color on and then you can make them metallic and you can also make them glossy. And they just sort of look fantastic. Uh, let me, for this one, yeah. Let's go crazy. Let's leave both of them on and I'll go through them. Give you a good look at what they could look like. Uh, just know again that they will look a little different. Like as an example, if I go through the colors here and I get to like the uh, pink, you take the metallic off, then it's just a brighter color. This sort of makes it a bit darker, but it also adds a nice like reflection to it. It's really nice. We're just mixing things up a little bit, you know? There you go. Mixing it up. Okay. I always think that, like, the one color people sometimes forget is the green. Uh, fortunately, they didn't forget it here. There are a lot of nice greens in Baldur's Gate, but still. It's like, it's one of those often forgotten colors. Here. I'm going to leave the horns on, because it's a tiefling, you know. Uh, we're going to choose black here, yeah. And then we'll take white for the highlight. Mm, gray white is fine. And then let's just turn the intensity up. Now I'm going to attempt to show you what they all look like while... Wait, what? <laughs> Why is it on yellow? Uh, gray, white. There you go. Okay. Basically, I'm going to show you the highlights. Because, you know, obviously you might want to know what the highlight zone on the hair looks like. Uh, just know that it might look a little more tacky. It's like, as an example, if you take something like uh, this hairstyle... Uh, maybe that's not the right one to look tacky, but... You know, certain hairstyles, they have sort of the, what it looks like the grays mixed in now. I'm just attempting to show you where the uh, highlight zones are. In other words, like this one, for instance, if I just take the highlights off, uh, it'll look nicer. Just black, you know? Well, I mean, nicer. It is in the eye of the beholder. It might not be nicer to you. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm just attempting to show you everything. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. I like that they went for realism here. They've got the receding hairlines, they've got the big bushy hair, uh, they've got the braids, they've got everything, man. And again, you can do all of it on male and female. All of it. Absolutely all of it. Is that not heaven? I would say it's pretty heaven- dude, that's such a cool look. It's pretty heavenly. 
they even sort of try to cover like ethnicities and stuff like that uh, you know you got everything the one thing i think that they do not have is like a big 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 afro uh, it's a bit of an oversight i guess but like uh, i guess it's not that common a hairstyle i don't know maybe not where i live but that's the one thing i guess i have not seen here and you'll notice that some of them have cool splits like half and half like this one or like this one uh, but yeah for the most part there's a lot that you can do with the highlight system uh, you can go crazy with it and you can make some pretty fantastic looking styles and if you think i missed something on one of these like the hairstyles or whatever uh, you can safely just go and check one of the other races and you will see all of them there sometimes with different color selections as well like i use different colors almost every time i like to use black as the base uh, but sometimes i use brown you know sometimes i'll even use blonde if i'm feeling crazy and then i'll use a, a darker color as the highlight Whew. yeah i've been known to do things like that <laughs> anyway uh, as you are coming through here and you pick in your hairstyle just keep in mind that your hair color here is also going to be used for your facial hair so Hair colors, let's zoom in quickly. I'm going to take the highlight off. I'll just turn the intensity down on it. And uh, yeah, you get to pick a pretty decent number of hair colors here. You, anything you like, you can do it. These are the same on all the races. Uh, I'm showing you the same stuff here. It's like these hair colors, It's it's as far as I've seen, it's the same on human. It's the same on uh, orc. It's the same on gif yankee. It's the same on these dudes. There might be some slight differences here and there. I, I, I don't want to like, I don't want to say one thing and be wrong, but like, I think it's mostly the same. Like thus far, it's been the same. So I assume for the rest of the way, it's going to be the same too. Uh, that might be a stupid assumption, but I'm going to go with that for now, right? There are cool hairstyles, though, uh, hair colors though. Like there's a lot. There's bright colors. There's darker colors. You've got everything you want here. I am skipping one or two here, uh, but you get the idea. Let's go with this for now. The highlights, the way it works is you just on different hairstyles, as I showed you, you pick from a different highlight and it will put it on there for you. And there's a lot of highlight colors. I will not go through every one of these uh, because you've seen most of them already. But the idea remains that you can do some pretty fantastic stuff with this. And I think it's an impressive system. Right. There we go. Grain. It is what it says. It gives you a choice of basically any color. Almost the same as the highlights, but with a lot more gray. And then you get to let your character gray. And I mean, like, you can have your character red as well. Your character can be redding. <laughs> your character can be greening. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it. Once again, so much more customization than I think you even need. Now, when we jump into facial hair, I just want to say, firstly, this looks amazing. Uh, and secondly, the colors here, they are taken from the hair. Okay, so like if you change the, the color here, it's going to change the hair color too. Okay, so they're linked. You can't do a different color beard. Ah, oh, the beards look really good on the men. I like it. I mean, I've seen the beards on the ladies, uh, but they look really good on the men. These chiseled jaws, these sharper features. Oof, man, oof. And the beards are big. They're big. It's nice. Cool textures. Full, fluffy. Nice looking beards, man. Nice looking beards. There you go. Now, I'll take a bigger one quickly and I'll show you. Uh, you can have it gray in. The beard grays too. And yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it grays at a slightly slower rate on, on some of the bigger ones. And on, on different ones, it, it, it grays slightly faster. It sort of depends on the beard, I suppose. Uh, but at the end, it all grays. Kind of nice. You can see the gray does come from the top down. Cool. There we go. Lots of good choices here once again. This is your hair color though. Uh, so if you pick something different here, you are picking your hair color and your beard color. Horns. Let's have a look. Decent choices here. They all have their own names. Rune Curves, Baleful Spikes, uh, Gold Grafted. This is like, it's got nice, you know. Uh, they, I should, I should probably change the hair just quickly so you can sort of see. Um, they have sort of varying uh, degrees of detail on the roots of the horns. I don't know if it's called roots, but uh, yeah. 
you can sort of see some of them look a little different down here than others when you get to like the later ones uh, they have like more splotches and stuff around they sort of connected to the head differently uh, but they are cool all the way through you get to change the color of the horns and you get to change the horn tip color as well uh, i do this differently almost every time i did it differently in the previous one but like the horn tip color there's a bunch of choices uh, and you'll see it's just the tip of the horn uh, it's pretty self-explanatory the tip of the horn changes and then the horn color itself let's pick these ones as a good example uh, these are preset the same on all the uh, tieflings so you have a bunch of different choices at the end there's a black and a white and that will be it there we go so so many different horn colors <laughs> like like for real uh, it's kind of crazy it's it's really kind of crazy honestly i man i i think that there's 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 room here for a lot of cool customization and i think that people will come up with like some seriously insanely sick looking characters uh, but like at the end of the day most people are going to pick white or black here most likely most likely you know it's just it's a simpler choice you know <laughs> i don't know uh, maybe it's just me that thinks that but uh, it's what i expect uh, so now we're going to randomize a little bit and we're going to have a look at what's available this is already just looking really good i'm going to zoom in a bit because it's much nicer looking up close dude <laughs> <laughs> There's some fantastic characters. Uh, this has got to be like the best randomization system, I think, in any game. Uh, because they really just go crazy with everything. They don't hold back with the options. Because, like, oftentimes they do hold back. You know, character creators hold back. And it's like, if you look at this, they are changing basically everything on it. Uh, you, you don't really... <laughs> <laughs> look at that you don't see them holding back you don't see like oh well you know uh, they're not really doing the beards very well or like uh you know we're not seeing heterochromia all the time or oh the vitiligo is just not showing no it's all there man it's all there every single option is being changed it's being modified it's all there i love it oh there you go uh, now what we're going to do before we continue is we are just going to uh, jump into the other two. So we're on the first one now. I'm trying to remember if it was, I think it was called Asmodeus. Uh, we're going to jump onto the other two and we're going to have a look. That's fantastic, by the way. Oh my God. See, this is what I was talking about. Like a neon tiefling. You can do stuff like this. You can do stuff. But we're going to jump onto the other ones and I'll just show you what the default choices are there. So, on the skin tones, you will notice that the first two lines are azure and storm uh, and, and basically the bluer, cooler tones until about there. And then it's all the, the normal ones. These are the suggested colors. Well, basically all of these for tieflings. Uh, these ones specifically for the, the one that we're on right now. And then you can still go for all of them if you'd like. Uh, and, and with the other stuff... It's all the same. The hair is the same. The eyes are the same. The body art's the same. The horns are the same. You can look here. The horn colors are exactly the same. They just sort of try and curate your experience a little bit. In other words, they give you sort of a... a oh my god, it looks like... Um, who does it look like? Not Mads Mikkelsen. Oh! Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Killian Murphy. Oh my god, as a tiefling. Okay, uh, maybe, no? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to look at this guy anymore. Uh, so yeah, they give you like some curation to basically help nudge you into the law correct direction. Uh, but you can do anything you want. Don't feel bad about doing what you want with these. The faces are the same on all of them, as I've mentioned. All the other options are the same. Uh, they just give you a list of skin colors here. A few skin colors that they recommend for it. They're just like, hey, these ones make sense, so consider them, okay? There you go. That's basically what you're working with. This is fantastic, by the way. <laughs> Every time I see that, I'm going to love it. Awesome. That's basically what you're working with there. Uh, and that is basically the end for Tieflings. Now we're going to move on to 
Drow. So for Drow, it's going to be a little quicker than the others because the customization part at least is the same as Elf. Obviously the defaults are different, so we're going to go through that still. But if you want to see like full and and like intense customization, go for the uh, Wood and High Elf customization. You'll see everything there. So, driven to the Underdark, most Drow have adopted a ruthless pragmatism. While the Lothsworn delight in the goddess's evil tenets, the Saldranin... I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm dyslexic. It says Saldarin reject her attempt to overthrow the leader of the elven pantheon fantastic they move nine per turn default they have weapon training so they have proficiency with rapier, rapier short sword uh, and hand crossbow superior dark vision they can see double as far in the dark double as far as i'm saying the tieflings or the other elves i think do the elves have i don't know uh, and then they have fey ancestry advantage on saving throws against being charmed magic can't put you to sleep fantastic now that's not it because there's still the sub races as you mentioned as i as i saw as they mentioned the lothsworn and the Seldarine. raised by loth's cult in the city of menzo baranzan these drow embody the virtues of their corrupt merciless goddess loth marks her followers with bright red eyes so those in the underdark will learn to fear them on sight eyes aren't all that bright <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, you know, it's the thought that counts. It's the thought that counts. Saldarin. They can be found seeking allies from all over Faerun, aiming to settle their conflict with Loth and each other by any means necessary. These are the goodies. I don't know if lore-wise, if you pick one above the other, uh, you'll have an easier time. I don't know if the people will like you more if you pick uh, Saldarin instead of Loth. I have no idea. I think they're going to dislike Drow all the same. Okay. So we're going to jump in. The customization on these two is exactly the same. There is no difference. Uh, you know, these ones, they by default put a red eye on there. And these ones, they don't. But they are exactly the same. Uh, so do not worry about that. Uh, as we jump in here, I will just tell you that the um, customization options that you have available here are the same as on the elves. The faces are even the same as on the other elves. So we're going to go pretty quickly through here. Now... I'm leaving it on Barbarian once again because it allows you to see the muscles. You get to pick three diff uh, four different body types. You get the small female, the small male, pretty muscular for small. Then you get the large one for female uh, and the large one for male. Pretty muscly as well. It's good. It's good. It's very nice. Uh, customization options and all of them are the same. Uh, you just get a bigger body on the one. So yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Now, identity. You get to pick male, female or non-binary and other. This will basically just give you a uh, different way to be addressed in the game, right? Voices, we're going to go through all of them again. I've gone through these like every time so far, but it's quick, so I don't mind doing it. Those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? Hmm, what was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. There you go. Male and female voices all sort of mashed together. I'm not going to say it's all the same. You can sort of pick what you want. It's definitely not all the same, <laughs> but you can pick what you want. And yeah, you should find uh, yourself pleased with whatever. So on the female side of things, faces, let's have a peek. There are some pretty fantastic faces here. As we have seen, by the way, on the um, wood elves and high elves, these are the same. I feel like they sort of give it away with the colors here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's like there could have been a little bit more mystery involved if they didn't have the colors. They say like you, you would have maybe mistaken them for something else. But um, yeah, we'll go with the default one for now. Uh, skin tones. These are the default drow skin tones. Very cool, by the way. All the way until about there, you'll see. And then when we get to the bottom ones, it'll be the elvish ones. 
Very cool skin tones. Now you can pick these on the other elves if you'd like to. Once you click on all skin colors, you will see. And I will show you that once I get past this point here. These are all the dry ones still. Uh, when we get here, you will notice immediately you start looking like a high elf, right? So it's the same stuff. Now when I click on all, it all gets mixed in, thrown in together. And uh, yeah, <laughs> you've, you've got choices. You can be a purple drow, you can be a pink drow, a green drow. You can do whatever the hell you want. These are just the curated choices that they think would make sense. So yeah, if you want to do that, you do that. Now, now, scars. Let me actually just change the hair quickly. Even though I love this hair, uh, it is making it a little difficult for me to see the scars. So, yeah. Now, here we go. Pretty cool. And yeah, I'm the guy that calls scars cool. I think scars are cool. Especially if they tell a story. And, you know, if you're playing a game like Baldur's Gate, it can tell a story. You can make it tell a story. Even if it doesn't by default. Maturity. Uh, this is going to be the age of your character. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's as impactful as it is on the other elf customization. Then you can do freckles. You can do the quantity. They sort of pop in dynamically. And then you can do the opacity here. It's cool. And then vitiligo. That's on all the characters. All the races, they get to use this. No worries. Then... Body art. This is tattoos. There's no tattoos for the entire body. It is basically just on the face. A lot of decent options here though, regardless. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you'll find something that works for you, I think. I still wonder, it's like, for me, it's always a tough choice. I don't know if you guys are the same, but like... Uh, it's like sometimes there's this really cool look that you can make by using tattoos. Uh, but, man, will it withstand the test of time? Are you 50 hours into your gameplay going to be sick of it? <laughs> Are you going to wish that you never picked it? Uh, that's always, like, for me, I think that, and then I think, okay, yeah, let me just go for a pure look. Let me just go for a basic look with no tattoos on the face, and then I settle with that, and I, I end up being boring, you know? Uh, colors, you can pick the opacity here, and then you can pick the color. And obviously, this combined with the skin tone... It gives you a different effect, it gives you a different feel. You sort of uh, mix and match to make the dream character for yourself. Lots of nice colors here though. That's cool. Every time I get to the white, I'm like, yeah man, that's what I want to use. <laughs> but am I going to use it? No, probably not. I'm probably going to chicken out and not go for any tattoos. So, piercings. These are a little bugged at the moment where I feel like the colors are missing on them. Uh, they're just sort of black instead of colored. Uh, there are some that are like, you know, these are called midnight tears. Yeah, they could be black. But then there are ones that are like silver gold or um, there's a red one, red scintilla. That should be red, right? <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's fine though, again, you can sort of get a good enough look at what they look like. And it's, it's alright. It's alright. Okay, Minotaur Ring. Easy Breezy. Archfey Swirls. The Commoner Ring. Bard Rings. And back at none. Eyes. So... These are the ones that they, it's, it's actually fascinating to me how few colors they suggest for the uh, for the Lothsworn Drow. But basically, they actually paid a lot of attention here. They sort of, they were strict with this. Uh, you'll you'll notice that obviously the, the pinks and the purples are here. You know, your traditional Drow colors along with the reds. And uh, then you can click on all eye colors and you can go ham. You can go crazy. I'm not going to click on every one of these, but I will show you that you can pick the demonic colors on your drow if you'd like. Uh, because you can tell a story. You can be possessed by a demon. You can be a drow that's possessed by a demon, even though you are uh, sort of, uh, you know, resistant to charm. It could be a powerful demon. You can do whatever you want with these. And then on top of that, uh, you can pick a color here and then you can do heterochromia and pick a different color there. It's cool. It's pretty cool. Makeup. 
we're going to sort of not so much rush through this, but we'll go pretty quickly through here once again, just because I've covered all of this on the other elf uh, customizations. And I'm going to be real, they do look pretty much the same on all of them. There you go. There you go. The colors, I'm going to pick one of the bigger ones for it. You get to do the intensity. Then you get to do metallic and glossy. And uh, yeah, the the metallic and glossy all together end up making these look really fantastic. They look great. And I think that for the most part, you will find something really fantastic to to create here. If you if you pick these different uh, colors here, you match them with the uh, the different hair colors, skin colors, the body art and stuff like that. Dude, you can make something really cool looking. However, I'm going to show you what it looks like with just the gloss on, because uh, when you put metallic on, it changes the color a little bit. So we'll go through these a little bit and I'll show you what they look like. Uh, and you'll just have to use your imagination for the rest. And yes, it's me repeating myself a bunch because I've done this like uh, four times already now. But it's still really nice. Uh, I don't get sick of looking at them because this face is different and it's staring right into my soul right now. That's cool. Very cool. There you go. Turn it off. Turn it off. Lips. There's the lip color. Make them glossy. I don't know what uh, drows feel about lipstick. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. It does look pretty good. It does definitely look pretty good. As with the other ones, I'm going to show you what it looks like now. Uh, is that... What color is that? Gray. I'll show you what it looks like now when you throw the uh, metallic on there. When you throw the metallic on there, it just changes everything. It's it's pretty fantastic, actually. Again, it's like a really cool effect. Uh, let's take purple. Metallic it. It's like... It's really deep, the color. It's nice. Okay. Uh, let's turn it off for now, though. There we go. And that's makeup done. Hair. So the hair, it's the same uh, on all of them, but we're still going to have a look at it. They obviously suggest you use white hair. Uh, you know, you use white on drow. Yeah, man, that makes sense. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put highlights in. I'll make them purple. And then we'll go through the hair like this, all right? So this is basically just to show you where the highlight zones are. And if you have a look at them, you can sort of plan and plot your course. You can decide what you'd like to do when you make your own character. Uh, let me just make sure it's right. Yeah. You can decide what you want to do because you can see where the highlights are. And it'll help you out any which way you want it to. This music in the background is also pretty fantastic. Wow. For real though, be being able to look at all of these, like this is the reason I do it. This is the reason I go through everything multiple times is because you get to look at it on the different faces, like on the draw face, for instance, everything just ends up looking different, you know? I do, I do see that facial hair option looming as the next one up. <laughs> I'm pretty keen. Oh, that's really cool. Wow. That's a really cool style as well. And yeah, if I, if I do miss anything, if I skip past one of the styles that you like too quickly, uh, let me just say that if it wasn't shown here in great detail, you can just look at basically any of the other races. I suggest the elves at the start of the video, uh, and you will see a full sort of more in-depth look at it. Uh, just because, again, they all share the same hair, and a lot of the other options are also shared. And you'll be able to find, like, as an example on this one, you might not have known there's a little ponytail back there. And you might find what you're looking for there. It's just that if I if I go through every option and talk about it in great detail, I'll be here for eight hours. I'm already probably going to be here for eight hours, but, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a chance that it'll be as bad as that. And I'd like to avoid that if possible. Uh, even though it is fun, even though I do enjoy looking at all of these options, uh, there there is, uh, you know, some sense in brevity. Fantastic. That long ponytail is really cool. Now, uh, as I was showing you as we were going through here, the highlights, they are... I somehow managed to end up on the one that they gave us, the default one. They are pretty cool. Uh, you can set 
the intensity of it. You can choose the color. There are a bunch of different highlight colors that you can choose. They suggest a few of them, obviously, uh, above others. But the colors are magnificent. Uh, they're great. And then as I just show you a few of these, I will jump back. You can see all the colors. There's a bunch. There's a huge selection. I'll jump back to the regular hair colors and I'll show you what they look like. Uh, as you select these, you will immediately make your drow start, it'll start looking like, you know, a regular elf. Because again, these are not regular drow hair colors. Uh, but it's still cool that you have the option to pick them. I think it's pretty nice, you know. Oh, that's a nice brown. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Lumen. Don't be... Don't be tempted. It's just brown, man. I actually think that even though you see such a nice brown, when you get to the oranges, a little lower down... Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's where you stay in, right? You'll see now, when I get to the orange here... Oof, look at that. That's where you live in. Here we go. Very cool. A lot of nice colors here. And to be honest, yeah, I mean, I feel like you'll find something that you like. There you go. I'll put it back on white for now. Actually, <laughs> it's kind of pointless. Uh, I'm not really going to bother too much with this, but like you can do gray in. It's kind of weird having a draw gray, uh, but the way gray in works is you get to select it like this and you get to drag the slider up and you get to pick any color. You can have your draw red in. Uh, and that actually makes more sense. It's like you take a, basically you do this and then you take the white here. Uh, and then you then you have the red creeping into the white uh, and then it can be like blood in your hair you know uh, that's that's the explanation right <laughs> i don't know i don't know um that's the option that you have though and it's kind of cool uh, next up is facial hair oh well there it is <laughs> i thought so because like i saw i saw on the others they didn't even have the option there uh, so it would have been weird if drow had it good good it was a little ominous sitting at the bottom there no facial hair on the ladies now we're gonna randomize Let's have a look at what's available. The randomize obviously unlocks the, the complete selection here. Um, like there's, there's a bunch here. And if I select this and then I randomize, then it picks from the entire pool. Uh, you'll see it'll go down here from time to time. It's not regular, but it will go down there from time to time. Uh, and you can sort of, sort of in that way, sort of change the way it uh, picks the randomization a little bit. Look at this. Fantastic. But as you can see here, these random characters are much the same as the ones that you would get from the normal elves. Uh, obviously, there might be some more cool colors. You know, you'd have the drow skin colors and, and stuff pop up more often because they are more prominent uh, in the selection. But for the most part, this will look much the same as the other elves. And yeah, you should notice that. If you're paying attention, you definitely... This is really cool. Wow, you definitely notice that. There we go. I'm going to go back now and just show you quickly that the Seldarine Drow are exactly the same. Uh, your skin tones might change very, very slightly. Uh, and then your eyes will probably be a little different. Uh, but for the most part, no, it seems even, this actually seems the same. For the most part, you're going to have the same stuff. Uh, it's the same on, on all the sub races. They usually have the same options as the primary race. Uh, it's just sort of split up a little bit. So to, to give you the options that are law friendly. Now. We are going to jump into mail. Let's do it. First up, I did show you the um, regular man versus the bulky man. It's all the same. We can customize the bulky one if you like. Uh, they look the same. The faces and stuff are the same if you look at them here. It's not that the one is bigger or, or broader or anything like that. It is actually just the same. So there you go. Faces. These will also look familiar if you watch the Wood Elf or High Elf customization. They will look familiar. Up here you can pick your identity. Non-binary or other, male or female. And then the voices. Let's give them a listen quickly. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. 
where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Pals. Something just woke up down here. Alright. I'm gonna just change the hair quickly uh, to one that is slightly less. <laughs> so it doesn't cover stuff. Uh, and then we're gonna jump in here quickly. Skin tones. These are the drow and the drow and then elf skin tones all together. You'll notice that the first few uh, are sort of more law friendly and then as you go down it will give you the high elf and wood elf ones as well and then when you click on all then it will give you all of them and there really are quite a lot and it works the same on the others it's like if you make a high elf or a wood elf then what will happen is you'll get to a certain point where it will flip over and then you'll be having a look at the draw ones uh, so we're not going to focus too much on these uh, because these are different but you can use all and then you can make your character any color you like and that's fantastic uh, more flexibility for the player is always cool uh, for this video however we will go with the drow ish skin tone let's go with something like that confirm scars they look pretty good on the drow i feel uh, they look nice and dark nice detail they sort of get lost on certain uh, races obviously like if the race has a busy skin uh, and there's too much going on, then they might get lost on there. Maturity. This is just the age of your character. More wrinkles, stuff like that. Freckles. There you go. You can set the quantity, which is kind of nice how it sort of splotches them on there. And then you can set the intensity, which is just the opacity. And then vitiligo. Kind of cool. It's the lack of pigmentation in the skin, right? I think that's exactly what the explanation is and then we can move on body art the tattoos we're going to go through these pretty quick because we've looked at them a bunch of times already uh, you might not have so we're going to definitely look at each of them but yeah let's do it i think it's a pretty decent tattoo system like oftentimes the the things that i would look at in these systems is how clear the tattoo is and then uh, how how relevant it feels to like certain classes and races and stuff like that and i think that they've got their they've got their bases covered with these i mean the clarity is definitely there the relevance i mean that's pretty much on you right there are a lot of different ones here that could mean different things and i do believe that you could probably find something that would suit basically any class or any race you know colors you can set the intensity colors here are decent there's a nice selection and they're very bright they show well the color that you see here is the color that you get there there you go i like the whites <laughs> <laughs> I have to say it. I have to. Every time I get here, I have to say, yeah, man, I like the whites. They did good with those. Piercings. The piercings seem to be a little bugged. Uh, you can see that we are seeing like a, a black version of them. It just means that like either the texture or the color is a little missing on them. It's probably going to be fixed soon enough. You can still get a good enough idea of what they look like. And you can probably still pick one that suits your character quite nicely. Especially if you take the name combined with the look. Uh, that will give you what you're looking for, I think. Yeah. But there's a decent selection here, for real. Uh, there's a lot of cool piercings. And uh, I'm sure you'll be cool with uh, whatever. You know? Whatever. There you go. Okay. I've been through them a few times now already. <laughs> <laughs> whoops right eyes so first up you can do heterochromia if you'd like you can do one eye one color the other eye another color these are the drow specific choices available to you these are the ones that would be law friendly uh, it makes sense yeah i've read a bunch of drow books man i read the whole drista urden series it was like 150 books <laughs> and um they've done their research the larian guys yeah they probably also read the drista urden books which is good which is to say that's good i hope drist makes a cameo in the game i mean i don't know if it's even possible but you never know anyway uh, he'll probably be mentioned in there at least you can also pick any other color uh, there are demonic eyes here 
There are regular eyes. There are all sorts of eyes. There are just pure black ones. You can do what you want. And then you can also heterochromia, whatever you want. So that's cool. Makeup. There are makeup choices. And they are good. I'm going through them very briefly here. It looks a little like, you know, the intensity up. It's, it's a bit difficult to see them on the darker skin tones. Uh, but if you put a lighter color on there, obviously, then you will have a good look at them. So as an example, if we pick something like the blue here, it shines through so nicely. You can do a tint on it. You can see here. Then you can do glossy. That's the metallic versus, uh, plus the glossy. It makes it just fantastic. Uh, it, is, it is probably... And you know, like I, I end up oftentimes picking small things in character creation systems that are my favorites. Uh, and I will say straight up that this is one of my favorite things about this character creation system. I know it sounds like really small and it's like, what the hell, man? Like you're choosing to say that a metallic and a glossy tint. Your, yeah, it's my favorite. I'm choosing to say that. It's not my like all time. I think the hair is probably my favorite. Uh, maybe it's just the, the sheer variety. But anyway, what I'm saying is that you can do some really cool stuff with it. You can modify the colors to make them look really cool. Uh, and at the end of the day, the effect that you get the impact that it has on your character's overall style is just so significant that how could it not be your favorite, you know? It's it's fantastic. There's just so much you can do with it. And it's just straight disco, so like... <laughs> why, why would you not like it, you know? Why would you not? That's just... That's just... Wow. I mean, we like approaching Ziggy Stardust levels of cool here. It's, it's awesome, okay? It's awesome. So there you go. Lots of nice options there. Then you also get to do your lips. The lips have a uh, opacity slider. Then they got the metallic and the glossy. You can make them look all shiny and stuff. I take the metallic off. I'll take the glossy off too, just so you can see the colors properly. There are lots of colors here. These are the same for every one of the races. I realize I could have consolidated them all, but I, you know, I like to be inefficient. That's what I do. And I like to be uh, very exhaustively thorough. So... We're going through it, and you can see each of these you can also combine with the metallic and the glossy to get an entirely different look and feel. The lighter colors, I feel, work better. The yellows and stuff end up turning into golds for the most part. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of cool. There's a, lot to, that's, there's a lot that's going on here, basically. It's nice. It's good. Okay, let's take the lips color off. Here, my favorite part. So, hair colors for drow, generally white is the accepted color. We're going to put a black highlight in. We'll push the intensity up. Uh, let's actually, let's do something a little different. Let's make it a ruby. There you go. The reason I'm doing this is so you can see the highlights. I'm going to go through here. I'll turn the hair a little bit. If you do feel like you're missing something and I skip one of the styles that you like, well then, do I have a deal for you. You can just go look at any of the other race customization uh, and you will find it. You will find it there uh, because all the hairstyles are shared across them uh, and I'm a madman for showing you all of them separately. And again, these long hairstyles are fantastic. I love it. I'm a masochist. What can I say? <laughs> I do enjoy going through these options multiple times. Do not doubt it. That's a really cool short style. You know, I don't think I'd, I've said that before. <laughs> it's like oftentimes and most times in these character creators, I end up cursing the devs for not adding enough short styles. There's just not enough. But in this one, yeah. You got the short straight styles. You got the short curly styles. You got the slick back styles, you got the cow licks, you got the balding styles. Yeah, even the balding styles. I gotta say, I mean, we have a very specific look going on here. Uh, we're looking like a Christmas lollipop, <laughs> a candy cane or something. It's not all that fetching or handsome, but I'm just trying to give you an example of what's available. So, chill. Okay, chill. Chill. I'm not going to start a character uh, looking like a candy cane. It's not going to be what I'm doing. Do not worry. There we go. Hair. Now with the hair, uh, we'll just leave it on this one while I show you. You can do varying different things. There are different colors. So I'm going to take the highlights off quickly. 
and I'll just show you that's the full list of hair colors right there. You can change them and then in, in, immediately your character starts looking more natural, less drow. Uh, that's obviously uh, on purpose. You are encouraged to pick the law friendly choices. Uh, the drows would have the pale colors in their hair, sometimes the darker, sometimes the lighter. But, you know, you're not going to, for the most part, see a drow walking around with orange hair. I mean, that's true until you have, like, uh, Joel Axel or something. Wait, isn't he bald? <laughs> I was going to say, with some enchanted wig or something like that. That dude's crazy. He always has something weird going on. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if he had pink hair, purple hair. <laughs> but still, but still. You know, the drows, they have a specific look to them. Uh, and you can probably make something really cool with this. There you go. But the colors are fantastic, and this is just one of the coolest hair systems I've ever seen. Uh, so let's take white again. The highlights, they work uh, as I showed you. Basically, each one of them has a different highlight zone. And then there are a bunch of different colors here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can look at them, and you'll see what I mean. And you can just use your imagination with that. Then you can also choose to have your hair gray. Uh, for white hair, it's kind of pointless, but you can choose the color on that. Uh, you can have it change to different colors as well. Uh, so if we take black, for instance, you can have it sort of blend in a little bit. It is more intense or less intense on certain styles. You will see uh, as an example on this one, the grain is much more intense. Uh, and yeah, you can make it gray if you want as well, like properly gray, gray. And generally you'd want to do that with like a darker color and then a lighter color coming in, you know, but you get the idea, right? You get the idea. Facial hair, well, there is none. Let's randomize. Fantastic. Zoom in. Immediately you see all the different styles coming together. All the different looks forming hideous amalgamations before you. <laughs> no, but sometimes you get really cool characters here. Unique characters here. Other times you get stuck in a loop of, well, despair. For real, there are some really cool characters, and then there are some that are just questionable, and you wonder how they even exist. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. I'm going to just very briefly go back here and show you the fact that these guys, they have the same options. We were just on the Lothsworn. Uh, these dudes have the same options here. Their skin tones are the same. Their eyes are the same. Uh, it's all the same. So do not worry. Don't think you got screwed out of everything. Next up, we have the humans. Hey, who'd have thought? We are making our way through all the races. Uh, here they are. They are looking very human. Now, as I mentioned on the other ones, a lot of stuff will be shared here. You'll see a lot of the same options. But uh, yeah, they will look a little different because their faces are different and so on and so forth. Uh, we're going to start with the females here. Humans, the most common face in Faerun. Humans are known for their tenacity, creativity, and endless capacity for growth. Base speed 9. Civil Militia, you have weapon proficiency with spears, pikes, halberds, and glaives, and armor proficiency with light armor and shields. Human Versatility, select an additional skill to be proficient in. Uh, your carrying capacity is increased by a quarter. You'll see when that, uh, that comes up a little bit later, when you actually pick in your class and stuff like that. Uh, it comes up a bit later, you'll see. So, there are no sub-races for human. Human is just human. Let's look at the body shapes. That's the normal female one. That's the normal male one. Here we have the larger female. And here we have the larger male. Pretty cool. These guys are big. That's nice. Uh, we're going to start with the smaller females. And we will take it from there. Dude, the faces. <laughs> the detail on the faces. Immediately you'll be greeted with a whole lot more. Uh, on humans, they did try to be more inclusive with ethnicity and stuff like that. These are serving suggestions, basically. Um, but, yeah. Let's have a look from the start here. Identity. You can be female, non-binary or other, or male. That's just how people greet you or uh, address you in the world. And then let's look at the voices quickly. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's ma Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. 
and more of those. There's where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Pals, something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. Right, faces. So, decent selection of faces here. Uh, you will see that some of them are similar to the faces on, say, the elves uh, or the drows, but they are not. Uh, they are not the same exactly. They are just similar. Uh, they have really nice faces. Uh, they have a good selection. Again, they try cover all their ethnicities, and you can sort of see what they are by looking at the skin colors that they give you here. We're going to go with the default one for now. Uh, it sort of looks like that lady from Westworld, actually. Right? Yeah. Skin tones. These are the ones that they suggest. These are just suggestions. I'm going to quickly change the hair so that we have a shorter style, so that we can see uh, maybe just more of the, um, the head, because we're going to be looking at some stuff there. Skin tones. Here we go. These are the human skin tones. It's a good, it's a good selection. Like, they have a lot of good ones here. You will see that they don't have, like, the uh, icy tones. They don't have the fiery tones. They have human-looking tones. And I, I personally think that's a really cool uh, suggestion. However, you know, <laughs> you can sort of do what you want. Uh, you can make your human look like a drow. You can pick any old color here. You can pick pink. You can pick red. You can pick green. I don't even know where this color would be used, but it's here, and it's a choice that you can make. Uh, so just know that you don't have to go with the curated colors. You can if you want to. It's whatever. Scars. I'm keeping the light one on so we can look at the scars. There we go. There they are. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. That's fantastic. And that's a burn victim. <laughs> All right. Maturity. I felt like personally the maturity made the biggest difference on the human faces. It might just be me, uh, but in my brief look at the different races when I started this video, or at least before I started, I thought that these options were the most impactful on the human faces. Uh, all of it, the freckles, the, um, the maturity and the vitiligo looked the nicest on human. I, I thought so. But hey, there you go. You can do freckles uh, opacity basically and then the amount. Uh, or you can do none. You will see that there are some beauty spots and some freckles and stuff that are tied to the different faces. Uh, so if you change the face, you will get a different look. And that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. The vitiligo, you don't get to change the color. It's the lack of pigmentation. So you change the skin tone to a darker one. Uh, and then you throw that on there. And then it looks, you know, like that. So you do what you want to do. You can find something cool. And you'll probably be able to make a nice combo with this. Body art. These are the tattoos. There are some good choices here. And there are mostly bad choices here. <laughs> this is this is the tab of regret. That's what I like to call it. It's the tab of second guesses. It's the tab of mistakes. Untold. It's the tab that you should probably left, be, uh, leave alone. You should probably just sort of look at it and be like, Oh yeah, tattoos. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I, I just say that because even though there are some really cool ones here, uh, I personally always have regrets when I pick a tattoo. That's why I generally tend to go with like a, a, a clean look. This time around, I'm trying to sort of mess around with different choices, different options, different styles. I'm trying to think, you know, let's be, let's be uh, crazy. Let's step out of the comfort zone a little bit. Uh, is it going to happen? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Tattoo colors. You get to set the opacity. And then there's a bunch of different colors here. Pretty cool. Uh, really cool, actually. They obviously look better on different skin tones. You know, the lighter ones on a darker skin tone and so on and so forth. These ones look like nice blood red colors. Very cool. Very natural looking. If that's ever natural. Uh, but yeah, these are nice colors. And that's all of them. If we jump back down here, you can do piercings. The piercings, I mentioned this like every time they seem to be bugged uh, you can see sort of a flash if you if you look there's like a flash of what they're supposed to look like and then they get covered in black uh, i don't know why i don't know why they're covered in black but you can get an idea of what they are and that's about it for now 
Uh, this is fine. These are called Crimson Hilt Daggers. So obviously they have red hilts. Uh, each of these has sort of a, a color or something attached to them that's not right there right now. I don't know if you can change this after you get into the game, but for now it's a little broken. It's whatever. Okay, let's jump on to the next one. Eyes. These are the eye suggestions for human. They basically give you ones that are more realistic. Uh, you know, and it's not completely realistic uh, in a way because like pink eyes are sort of kind of unheard of if you're thinking of realistic, but You know, it's a magical world with magical beings of all sorts all shapes and sizes uh, Seeing some pink eyes on someone. That's not the weirdest thing. Okay, then you can pick all and you can pick the demonic ones the solid black ones all sorts of different ones Let me just tell you the demonic ones are are really fantastic. Uh, they are really nice. They are uh, really cool eyes here that you can have uh, I will tell you from my quick look at like the tieflings and stuff like that There does seem to be an extra layer of detail on tiefling eyes that you don't have on uh, The other races, but like it's more like this, this little swirl of, of fire that's in their eyes uh, But for the most part you can still pick almost anything you want here, and it's yeah, it's cool It's cool. Then there's heterochromia. You can pick one color in the one and one in the other and that's cool. Yeah makeup we seem to already have makeup on. That's cool. Okay. I didn't even realize it. It was kind of subtle. All right. Here we go. Some cool styles. Some slightly more subtle ones. Some slightly heavier ones. Uh, you can do some cool stuff with these. With gloss and tint. On the metallic side of things. I mean really cool stuff. <laughs> this is like, I love it. I love it. I can't get enough of it. Every time I look at it, I think, wow. Uh, I'm going to take the metallic off for this, and then I'm just going to go through the colors quickly so you can look at them. And uh, yeah, you can make up your mind with that. Just remember that if you take any one of these colors and you add the metallic tint to it, it becomes way cooler. <laughs> I, I, it still, however, it loses the color that it actually is, so it's better to show the colors like this. Uh, just know that you can enhance the cool factor a little bit by pulling that slider up. Yeah, it's nice. There we go. Lots and lots and lots of colors. I do wish that there was a little bit more in terms of makeup, but I mean the face paint sort of makes up for it, right? I don't know. The face paint's kind of cool. R r lips. Uh, there is more than just red here. Even though the red is really cool and you can add, once again, the metallic tint and the glossy tint to it. Um, there is more. There are lots of colors. These are not so much curated. All the classes have, all the races have the same ones. Uh, you are going to see the same ones over all of them, regardless of the race that you pick. Uh, obviously, I mean the humanoid ones. It's like you're not going to put lipstick on the dragons, okay? <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that, but you're not going to put lipstick on the dragons. Uh, it's cool. Yeah. I, I really like when you throw that on there. It, it changes it up completely, uh, but obviously it gives you a different color and vibe entirely, so it might not be what you're looking for. There you go. Lips off for now. And then hair. Let's do something different with the hair this time. I've been doing black. Uh, let's try blonde with highlights. Let's do a yellow or orange or something. A red maybe. I don't know. There you go. No, I've, I've been doing red a lot. Let's do purple. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very human choice. I've seen so many old ladies. No offense. I love the old ladies that do this. They live in their best lives. Uh, but with, with like gray hair and then their cool purple highlights. I love it, dude. I think it's really, really cool. I'm going to show you the hairstyles like this. I know it looks tacky. But it gives you a good look at what you can highlight. Uh, and it's it's a good way to see it. You know? So you can basically look at these and decide which hair color is best for you. And take it from there. Some of them have way more highlight zone. Some of them have way less, uh, and that's just up to you to sort of uh, pick and choose which one you think is the bomb, and which one you think is not. Man, I've made a real specific looking look here. I don't know what this is. She reminds me of someone. And now with the one eye being a different color, it makes it even more intense. You get to choose the amount of uh, highlight, obviously. You'll see that at the end. I'll show it to you. But uh, you can make it less, you can make it more, and then you can obviously at the bottom here you can see as well, you can do some gray in. The gray in is cool. I think the gray in is really nice, especially when you add it to the facial hair as well. 
Uh, which you will be seeing on humans. They can have facial hair, of course. Because why wouldn't they? Uh, but yeah, it's nice. It's nice. That's one of my favorite styles. Actually, these two, both of them are really cool. Man, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna struggle to pick a, a character here. Like if I had to go human, for instance, there's just so many cool things that you can do with human. Like I I feel, and it's not like I'm honor bound to make a drow that looks like a drow. You know, you can do what you want, but I feel like I should. If I make a drow, I should have the darker skin. I should have the lighter hair. I should have the eyes that sort of look right. But with human, you don't have that limitation. You know, so you don't feel like you have to do anything. You can do whatever the hell you want, and it makes sense. You're a human, you're crazy, man. Everyone knows the humans are crazy. <laughs> anyway, let's look quickly. Uh, so in terms of the highlights, let's just pick this one quickly and I'll show you. Uh, you can change the intensity and then you can pick a color. But the hair colors, we'll look at those first. They are really nice. Hair colors, these are the same across all of them. Uh, they are fantastic. They are boom, 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 boom. The browns look nice, the darker colors like the blacks look nice, uh, the reds specifically are awesome, the oranges and the uh, the gingers are just like wow, it's all just really really nice, these, these colors, they are so cool. Even the grays look nice, uh, this, this game definitely has the best hair, like I, I will say that, and I mean that like in, in its entirety. Uh, it's it's right up there, and I, I like I mentioned before I like I really like Hogwarts Legacy's hair texture, the way it looks and feels, right? But this, the entire package is bigger, better. It's it's more, you know. There's just so much more going on here. So like, yeah, man. Jeez, give me this any day of the week. Like the visual fidelity is there in Hogwarts, but like everything else is here. Even though the visual plate is also here. It's just like everything else is here. There's much more variety. There's much more of everything. Uh, the highlights. There are a bunch of different highlight colors. I'm not going to go through all of them. They're basically the same. Uh, but there's way more. Uh, and they have more... Uh, let's just say... Of the primary ones. So like you, here you have just purple... Uh, a few bright purples, but if you go into the regular hair colors, you'll see a lot more shades of it. So like here you have like one really strong green, but you don't have all the previous shades that would come before it, and so on and so forth. It's also a little muddled out a little bit. You'll see that there are different colors spread out a lot, um, but yeah, same basic colors, same basic idea. Uh, you can sort of do what you want. You can make the shade uh, brighter or darker. Uh, and then you can do grain. I'll show you that on a black color quickly. The grain looks really nice, I feel. Uh, you can make it gray entirely, or you can make it gray just a little bit. And I think it shows quite nicely. You can also make it blue, you can make it pink, you can make it do whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to leave it on gray for now, though, because on the facial hair, that's a good way to show it off. Speaking of which, let's look at the facial hair. Yeah, you can put beards on the ladies, and they can gray too. The beard color is tied with the hair color. It's all together. Uh, you don't get to pick one separately from the other. I do feel like maybe in the the beta you could split them. The beta, the early access, you could split the colors. Uh, but you cannot now. Uh, and these are some pretty magnificent beards. They're great. It doesn't matter. Uh, my suggestion was that they maybe add some stubble to this. But if I pick the big one over here, or let's take this one for now, I can show you quickly. This changes everything. This changes the whole hair color. So for now, I'm going to leave it on, let's say, the orange. And then I'll show you what it looks like, the grain intensity, more or less. And there you go. That's our lady character. Now we're going to randomize here at the end. Oh, fantastic. You see, it's a different look and feel to the elves entirely. Like, you think that the characters are the same? They're not. They don't look the same. Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> Quickly, keep going. <laughs> don't let it catch us. By the way, you can go back. Uh, they, they, they save your options, so I can actually go, <laughs> I can actually go back, uh, and it, it saves it for you. I, I think it's, it's really cool, the system. This is sick. Wow. Dude, so much here. There is just so much here. I love it. Humans, man, humans. Here you are. Humans. 
Now, we're gonna go back, and we're going to have a look at the men. I didn't actually have to go back. I could have stayed in that menu. Uh, I just wanted to come here for formality's sake. Let's do it, okay? Let's jump in. Just keep in mind, once again, this whole getup that my character has here, it's on Barbarian right now. It can change. Uh, here's the normal boy. Here's the big boy. Nice hairy chest and all that. Uh, let's jump in. Let's edit the appearance. First up, identity. You can set it to whatever you like. Male, female, or non-binary or other. That's just how people address you. Let's listen to the voices quickly. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? And there we are back at the start. The faces here, my god, <laughs> they are all so perfect. These are all the most handsome gentlemen in the world in one place. Uh, it's kind of crazy to me, actually. Like, uh, man. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, I mean, shit, which one are we going to take? Let's take this one here. Skin tone. They give you the suggested human skin tones. And you can sort of mess around here, pick what you want. You can see on these that they suggest that this is a darker skin tone. They'll suggest that this is sort of in the middle. They'll suggest that that's lighter. They'll suggest that that's lighter. Uh, as an example, look, that's what they want it to look like. Obviously, the hair would change, uh, but you get the idea. Uh, and all the skin tones here, these are the humanoid ones. Not humanoid, human ones. Sorry, there's a difference. And these are the ones that they say will look good on this race. However, if you are like, nah, Larian, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Nah, then you just click on this button and, <laughs> and off you go. Into the unexplored. You pick whatever you want. You make yourself a blue man, a green man, a pink man, a purple man. You can do anything. Anything. Like, really, anything. There are way too many skin colors. Like, who even thought this was a good idea, Larian? Who even thought that? <laughs> Let's take this one for now. Faces are good, though. I like the faces. There's some good detail on them, and there's some good differences between them. Now, scars. Let's have a peek. Pretty nice. It's the same ones, obviously, on all the races. I mention this almost every time. I do think they could have had a little bit more there, but it's still fine. Maturity. Uh, I think that on the humans, it makes a big impact. On some of the other races, not so much. Like the elves, I don't know. They don't look as old when you make them old. Even though they are old, they don't look as old. Uh, freckles, the quantity, it's quite nice how it sort of dynamically adds them. And then the intensity is the opacity. You can sort of do whatever with that. Uh, and then vitiligo. Looks better with a darker skin, but it's there. And you can pick how much you want of it. Also, good implementation of that, I feel. Pretty cool. Body art. This is the tattoo section. There are some questionable decisions to be made here, so I'll leave it to you. Pick the one you like. Regret it later. This is the way. This is the way. There we go. A bunch. And I mean, like, really a bunch. You have any old choice to make here. Fantastic. You do get to change the color. We're going to look at that in just a moment. And you do most definitely get to change the opacity as well. There you go. The color choices are varied and great. I say great because they are good. They look nice on the skin tone that you pick no matter what. And they have basically the entire RGB covered. Basically. Not entirely, but like it's enough, I feel. There you go. Then there are piercings. These are a little broken. Uh, as I switch through them, you will see that they have black. Like the shading is a little bit broken on them. I'm not sure how to fix that right now. I tried before I started, but I couldn't get it fixed. 
just know that when you're in the game, they will look right. Uh, and, and yeah, there are some decent choices here for piercings. It's the same once again on all of them. Uh, but just know that some of them have color. Like these lapis ones actually have a, a little blue section in the middle there. And so on and so forth. Right. Eyes. These are the human type eye colors. And once again, I'm going to gush over how good the eye system is in this game. <laughs> the eye system. Only me. Only I could say something like that and have it sort of make sense, right? The eyes look good. You can sort of pick a color here and you can like zoom out all the way and you can see the color even when you zoomed all the way out. It's very impressive, actually. Uh, you get to do all eye colors then. So you get to pick the more demonic looking ones like these ones down here. Uh, you get to pick the all black ones. You get to pick basically any color you want from all the other races. Uh, and it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's nice. Then you get to do heterochromia with this. So if you'd like to, you can pick a blue over there and you can pick a green over there. And you can be like, yeah, that's me. It's cool. It's cool. Makeup. This is the more subtle stuff. Uh, you know, it's not the body art. This is more subtle in that you can actually make it look more natural. Uh, or you can make it look uh, gaudy and garish. That's fine too. You know, that's your right. There are different options here. You'll see the colors. I'm going to show you these quickly before I jump into the different options. Then you can set the gloss level. And you can set the metallic tint. And what that will do for you is change it almost entirely. Uh, into a different monstrosity altogether. Let's take this one and I'll show you quickly. Metallic. And then you add the gloss to it. And it's... Wow. It's it's actually fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying a monstrosity. But like... You only really make a hideous amalgamation if you choose to. Okay. You can also choose to make something beautiful. Uh, and these are the options that you'll use to make something beautiful. Trust me. Or, or you'll just ignore this menu altogether because, to be real, uh, it's probably not necessary to use this one. But, yeah, I mean, it's here. It's here. And uh, it's cool. It's okay. Why not? Here we go. Vroomps. Off. Lips. Lips. Also a uh, glossy option. Also a metallic option. And I will take the both of them off so I can show you the colors quickly. And these, you know, they sort of, they're good all around. It's like they give you enough options here. Once again, this is not like a, an, a situation where there is a show all colors. This is all the colors and they have these same ones on all the races. And that's probably good enough, you know. It's probably good enough. There it is. If you put these uh, glass and tint levels on, it looks just more wow. It's up to you, though. You can sort of decide to do it or not to do it. Right? Here. So we're on a male now. It's a little different than on the female, just because the look and feel is not the same. Uh, let's go with... Uh, for this guy. Let's go with orange. And let's go with white. And we'll pull the intensity up. Pretty cool. Okay. I did this because you can see the highlight zones now of the hair. You can see where you highlight them. Uh, so you can sort of change the colors as you see fit. I do a different color randomly on every uh, race. Just because. Why not? Some of the hairstyles suit these guys well. Uh, some do not. you got to pick and choose. I'm sure you'll find something that you like. Because there are a huge number of hairstyles. And for once, hell yes, there are a bunch of good short styles. And hell yes, the long styles look nice too. I bet that you guys are going to make some like pretty damn awesome looking characters. I bet. I bet. I mean, I'm going to make a few for my thumbnail and I'm like, I'm going to try my best to make cool looking characters and interesting looking characters, but... <sighs> That's all I have to say about it. I sigh. Because, like, damn. You know, every time I look online and I see some of the characters other people made, I'm like, wow, why didn't I think of that? Well, because you're comparing yourself to the entirety of the internet, Lumen. Of course you didn't think of that. There's so many other people out there. <laughs> it's crazy. But there are some really cool styles here, for real. Uh, I think that the model designers, uh, the people who did the character models and stuff... Uh, they deserve a raise. Multiple raises. I hope that Larian uh, realizes that. 
sooner rather than later because we want more let's pick this one for now i look like an ice cream or something you know it's cool hair colors we're gonna zoom in quickly i'll take the highlights off for now uh, and i'll just show you oh it looks so cool man i'm making cal kestis of star wars fame i bet i can actually uh, this guy just looks like a grown-up version of cal kestis the hair colors here are pretty nice there's no grounded in reality when it comes to human. Uh, humans are crazy and they are known to do crazy things like have hair colors that are just out there and radical. So you will see all the hair colors here. Uh, but it's actually the same for all of them. I, I say that as like an excuse, uh, but all of the races have all of the hair colors that you can pick between here. And they look awesome. They look great. And then when you've chosen a style, let's take the strawberry, it's rose, actually. Then you can also do a highlight. The highlights, you can choose the intensity of it here, and you can choose the color. I'm not going to go through all the highlight colors, but you get the idea. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it, I, I bet. Me, not so much. <laughs> and then you can have grain here. The grain is basically just another layer of highlight, but it acts naturally like grain would act. But the flip side or the interesting part is that you can have your hair gray in any color. Uh, so that's kind of cool as well. So I bet people are going to probably use this just to make the hair look cooler instead of make it actually look gray because there are some really nice bright colors here as well. Uh, and that's fantastic. So there you go. That's it. Now we're going to move on to facial hair. Finally, we are looking at facial hair on a decent looking male face. <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, before you even ask, the facial hair's color is tied to the hair color. Uh, so I will do something for you quickly. A solid... I will just put you on like a brown and like uh, take the intensity away and there you go suddenly you look more natural right the beards look fantastic they look really cool although it's nice throwing a bit of gray in there uh, these do look really nice the mustaches are are big juicy it's good it's good and that brings us to the end uh, so now we're gonna randomize and we're probably gonna see some uh, stuff that we wish we hadn't seen <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool it's really cool what a fantastic system just the amount of freedom the sheer amount of freedom is just it's maddening you know maddening yeah there you go if you want to quickly like cleanse yourself of what's happening here you just go back there and then you switch it to like the big body and you're like, oh, well, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, so, yeah. Next up is uh, Gith Yankee. I kind of like the Gith Yankee. I don't know. There's something about them that is pretty cool. It's like I'd never play an orc personally, but the Gith Yankee is a different story. With a ruthlessness born from the Mind Flayer enslavement, Githyanki ride the Astral Sea atop red dragons, bringing their silver swords and psionic might to bear against any trace of the Illithid menace. And it does sound like these are the ones you want to bring with you in Baldur's Gate 3, fighting against the Mind Flayers. Yeah, you want these dudes. They hate them. So, actions. Gain proficiency in all skills of a chosen ability until long rest. Hmm. So, abilities... Or as you'll see at the end here when we get there, your strength, dexterity, constitution, intellect, wisdom, charisma. So you can sort of become more proficient in the skills from one of those. It's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. It's like a an extra action that you can pop that can help you sort of pick a lock, intimidate someone, uh, cast a particularly difficult spell, and so on and so forth. As their cantrip, they have... Gith Yankee Psionics Mage Hand, Invisible Spectral Hand that can manipulate and interact with objects. And then they move at 9 meters per second. And Martial Prodigy, a lifetime of relentless training, gave you armor proficiency with light and medium armor, as well as proficiency with short sword, long sword, and great sword. I find it very interesting that they seem to be sort of casters, but then they also have this martial proficiency. Like, where are their weaknesses? <laughs> I guess it's charisma, right? The weaknesses must be charisma. Maybe no one likes these guys. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this is what the female looks like. I'll just show them off quickly at the start here. That's what the male looks like. Uh, kind of skinny, you know. <laughs> they, they're still sort of shredded, but like they, they're kind of skinny. Uh, we can obviously customize both of them. We'll jump into the female first. And have a quick peek at what's available. Now, as with the others, 
all the others. You can pick your identity over here, male, female, or non-binary and other. That's just how people react to you and uh, address you in the world. And then you get voices. Let's listen to them. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I want more of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Pals, something just woke up down here. I've heard these voices a bunch already. Still love them. They're still great. They're fantastic. The faces on Githyanki are just awesome. I I love the design. I, lo I love the, uh, the, the like ridged ears here with like the little sharp bits on them. I like the nose and the eyes. It's like, it's just so different, you know? You look at it and like your first impression is like orc, but you're like, wait, no, there's a bit of Grinch in there too. <laughs> and that's a good thing, by the way. It's a good thing. Uh, and, and like... There's a beauty to them as well, especially the females. The males, I mean, yeah, they kind of look like the Grinch, but like, for real, the, the females, they look kind of sick. Uh, and, and it does seem like they can make for a pretty interesting uh, class uh, sort of setup as well. Like, you can make a very interesting character with it because of the fact that they have these widely spread out proficiencies. All right, skin tones. These are the recommended Githyanki skin tones. You have some that look sort of humanoid, uh, and then as you get lower... You get to sort of what I, I would say is close to green. They're olive tones, they're called. Um, and sage, both kind of green. Uh, but they don't go full green like orcs do. So yeah, they give you recommendations that are sort of on the line, but they don't quite cross it, you know. But if you are feeling a little risque and you're feeling like you want to make up some of your own lore, uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe your Githyanki was dipped in a golden latte. Uh, at at a young age and they became this color <laughs> Maybe maybe they were dragged across the grass uh, in a dryads grove and then they became uh, Green I, I don't I don't know. Okay, you guys can make the lore up. I'll leave that to you <laughs> But but you can use all the skin colors if you want these are just the recommended ones These are the curated ones the picked ones that they say work best uh, But you can make yourself look like a human give Yankee if you'd like which I find kind of interesting, because maybe, like, with all the magic at their disposal, at their fingertips, maybe they cast a spell on themselves to make them fit in a little better. Uh, it's not going to work, by the way. The NPCs will still hate you if they hate you. Uh, but you can go any color you want here, so it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single color once again. I usually just go through the recommended ones, and then I leave the rest to you guys. Uh, let's just not take orcish green on it. Let's go for... I personally think that the sage tones look kind of nice. Then let's look at the scars. Scars are a little harder to see on the Githyanki because they have these built-in, uh, you know, spots. I don't know what they would be called. What, like che cheetah spots? Le uh, jaguar spots? Leopard spots? I am not so well-versed in, in feline lore that I would know which spots these would be. Uh, but they are cool. That I know. That part of it I know. Very cool. Right, maturity. You can make your character look a little older. A little younger. They actually already look kind of old. I'm not sure how old the Githyanki get, whether they live like normal lifespans or longer, like elves. But um, yeah, it's nice to be able to do that. It sort of works differently on all the faces, so keep that in mind. Freckles, I feel like they're kind of pointless. I'll, I'll be real with you. On a Githyanki, they look, they look all right, but like they are far less impactful because you already have these big spots on your face, right? And then Vitiligo. That's kind of cool. It doesn't matter which class you're on, it looks sick. Right. And, and you can sort of pick where you want it, any, any spot. Body art. One would think that this was the body art. It's not. That's just, that's their face. So you can't really see most of the tattoos very nicely. Uh, it's sort of like, it gets lost. But what you can do just to, to show it off is make it white. And you can see them as I go through here much better. I'm going to go relatively quickly through here because we've looked at these a bunch of times already. Uh, so... Yeah, you can see what they look like on the Githyanki faces quickly. And you can probably make up your mind. This like this fits quite nicely with Githyanki. There are probably a few that would look quite good. Even this as well. Like some of them sort of feel like they set up the symmetry of the face quite nicely. They sort of fit in between, you know. Like this one for instance. Kind of cool. 
Uh, then when you end up covering all of it, then it, I think it looks kind of tacky, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a choice. <laughs> Be, I hate to say it, guys, but being tacky is, in fact, a choice. Colors for the tattoos, lots of different choices here. Uh, there's also the intensity. You can set it uh, brighter or dimmer. It's basically the opacity. I'm a big fan of the Gith Yankee, yeah. I, I, funny enough, like, I, when they first showed off the Gith Yankee, and that was, like, when the early access first came out, I just wasn't really into them. Uh, but, but the more I look at them, the more I think, yeah, man, I mean, this is not too bad. Piercings, uh, they are finally working. I, I managed to fix it, and you will now be able to see the piercings correctly. Uh, it was just, uh, uh, I had to basically flush the cache. <laughs> it's it's kind of a, a weird thing, it's a little bit roundabout, but I basically had to delete the shader cache and it fixed the piercings. So I will leave a little note uh, in the comment section of the video and you will be able to see it and you will be able to just look on anything from the Githyanki further and you'll see the piercings work properly here. Because on the previous ones, for those who perhaps didn't look at them, the piercings were all like black. You, you could see the shape, but you couldn't see the colors. And, I mean, like, come on, man. You want to see the colors, right? Because that's part of it. It's like, how are you going to accessorize? Huh? How the hell are you going to accessorize if it's all black? You aren't. Eyes. Githyanki have some pretty skinny little eyes. So, <laughs> the real estate you're working with here is uh, not that great. Let's just take it to a for this. Eye colors. These are the default ones that they give you. They are not so much, like, based in reality. They're not so much trying to be... Uh, I don't know, straightforward with the with the choices. They're giving you sort of some unique ones here. And I want to I wanna point out, it's like not like the human ones, basically, where they try to give you ones that would be considered humanoid. But I want to point out that this is probably one of the more interesting options for most of the different races. And this is one of the reasons I go through all the options on all the races. It's kind of different on every single race that you look at the eyes they have extra details so you look at the colors here right and the basically the the small details and i know this is like this is asking a lot you're gonna have to like really lean in but if i go for one of the lighter ones like these the small details around the iris the small details in the in the center of the pupil there's a lot going on there that you will not see on like humans or gnomes or elves uh, you know, they have something unique going on here. And if you switch to all eye colors, it's still there. They still have basically this different style entirely. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a different type of eye, but it like reacts completely differently to everything. Uh, same thing happens with the tieflings, and it's, it's awesome. It's again a reason to look at all of these. When you go to all colors, these are the ones that they don't specifically recommend, but you can still use. Uh, it's cool. It's cool. You can sort of pick and choose what you like there. Those are the curated ones, though. Uh, these are the ones that they recommend you take. But it's nice. That's the reason I look at all of them is because every time there's like this one little option that might look entirely different on Githyanki versus on something else. Heterochromia, you know how that works. You pick one color, you pick another color, uh, you can have them both. Next up, makeup. I see we had makeup on already. This is quite subtle, uh, but it can go both ways. Uh, you can make it quite eye-catching. Ha ha ha. Shit, I shouldn't be so pleased with myself. You... Can, can set up a tint level for the metallic tint and the glossy tint, and let me just tell you, it's awesome. I, I've been gushing over this for the past four hours already. I'm sorry, I'm not going to stop. Uh, basically, every color here is like completely different when you throw the metallic tint on it. Like, there's the glossy tint, and then I'm going to go through some of the colors on glossy, and then I'll go through some of the colors on metallic, and you'll see what I mean. So if I throw it on now, it, it just it enhances it entirely. And I, I would love it if you guys could show me some of your designs of, of characters somehow. I don't know how you're going to do it. If there's like a Reddit for, for character submissions, then link me up to that or something. Uh, because there are some really cool options here. And I feel like the smart boys, who, who are really good at character creating, you'd expect me to be good at this, but I'm not. I feel like the smart boys who are really good at character creating would be able to come up with some really, really, really awesome stuff with these. So I'm just showing you without metallic once again, because it gives you a good look at the color. Because once you throw a metallic on there, it doesn't look so good anymore. I mean, it looks better. It's just it doesn't look like the same color. It sort of it gives you a completely different color. Anyway, that's the idea. Um, very cool stuff. You can do that, obviously, to any of the different designs here. And they can look cool. Lips, same uh, basic idea. 
where you can throw the glossy and metallic on them and then they end up looking pretty fab. I like it. I really like it actually. But again, for the purposes of the preview, I will just show you what it looks like if you throw the regular colors on there with glossy on them. And then you can sort of imagine what it would look like if you make it metallic because, you know, it's kind of cool. It's something you want to imagine, right? Did you guys think that the Githyanki will have facial hair? Let's do a quick uh, guess here. I have no idea. I have not looked. I do think they will have facial hair. They look like the kind of race that'll have facial hair. So let's have a peek. When we get there, we get there. We're almost there. Now, when you come to the hair on the Githyanki, you will notice that it's actually a little bit different. Uh, we have been, until this point, seen pretty much the same on every race in terms of the layout of the hair. But on Githyanki, for some reason, it looks like they've curated it a little bit. I think there might be either a few less styles or they might just have shuffled it around a bit. And I'm not sure exactly why that is. I'd love to know why it is, but I don't know. Uh, but it's different. Usually on all the others, we started with this style right here, and we went down from there. Whereas on Githyanki, we started with a different one. And it's not a bad thing. Uh, we're going to go through it quickly. I put red highlights in. Let's make it a slightly brighter red if possible. Uh, let's see. Nah, that's fine. We'll just do... Oh, let's go for white or... A lighter color. There you go. Uh, the reason I'm putting the highlights on is so that you can see where the highlight zones are and you can make up your mind about uh, whether or not you like the hairstyle. I feel like the Kith Yankees camera angle is a little lower. <laughs> it's like it's like they're looking down on me. Uh, so once again, keep in mind that I can make this look less tacky by turning the highlight color off. But in this way, I'm showing you basically where you will be able to highlight your hair. So you will see the highlight is like this at the bottom and then the top is where the base color is uh, and you know, so on and so forth. On each it looks a bit different. This is such a cool hairstyle. Oh, I can't get enough of it. Seriously, like the hair system in this game, uh, at this point, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I think it's second to none. Now, the one thing I think that could have pushed this even further into the damn stratosphere is if they had modular systems in the hair. But I really think that that's unnecessary, and I think that oftentimes that sort of compromises the vision of the artists in some ways. It works in some situations, and it, it makes sense in some situations, but when you have this amount of styles, I feel like it's unnecessary. So I wouldn't even hold that against them in the least. Not in the least. Uh, I think it is really one of the coolest systems. And for real, uh, the, the, the hair texture and the feel of the hair is just... It, it's just fantastic in this. Like, it is honestly, it, it's so good. It really is. Like, they, they've they they've nailed it. Especially when you zoom in and you look at it up close. It basically, I'm not going to say it looks real. Because that's not really always the end goal. But it looks so cool. It's like, I just want to run my hand through that hair, you know? Oof. And again, in motion, it actually looks quite nice as well. I just, ugh. Oh. You know, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to make my own character. And yeah, I'm saying this now. I've, I've been doing this for five hours or four hours or whatever. I still haven't even considered what I'm going to do yet because I haven't even gotten through everything yet. I've sort of peeked at everything, but I haven't gone through all of it yet and I haven't decided. Like, how can I decide? There's so much going on here. And you know what? I'm going to say I'm a little disappointed by some of the uh, people on my Twitter with the characters they've made. I just see such boring characters. I'm saying this now. As someone who's most likely going to pick like plain black hair, uh, a, a very normal look, uh, yeah man, okay, I get mocked constantly because I keep going for the same styles and the same look and feel for all the characters, but like still, there's so many exciting options here. Okay, we'll use this one for now. Uh, although, no, wait, let's pick one like this and then I'll show you quickly what it looks like if you do the different colors. Let's take the highlights off and then I'll show you the hair colors that they have here. Uh, with the hair in this game, they don't have a recommended section. They sort of just give you everything. Uh, you know, I, I do feel that most of the races will have a set of hair colors that would suit them. And if you're going for like a law-friendly playthrough where you're making a character that suits the law and suits uh, the, the, the race that you picked, then obviously you're going to want to try and figure out what that is. Sure, I'll leave that up to you though. Uh, I'm sure there's enough resources out there on the internet to help because we are, in fact, in the Forgotten Realms. And, well, you know, these uh, these characters, these races, these options have been around for a long time. So uh, if you want resources, you can find them, I'm sure. And, yeah, I mean, like, for real. Jeez. Some of them look fantastic. 
Uh, and some of them really do look like they fit, so I'm sure you can find something. I'm going to go with just something like the the black quickly. Again, I know I, I pick the black all the time, but it's just so I can show you what the highlights look like. The highlight colors, there's a lot of them. I'm not going to go through every one, but I will just show you how it works. Uh, when you pull the intensity up, it sort of brings the opacity up, but it brings it up from the bottom, or at least from the one point that they choose, uh, and then it fills up. And you can choose any color on that. You can choose like a darker black, which is really nice. Uh, I do wonder sometimes why they don't give you the darker black on the main hair color, but it's whatever. Uh, there are very bright colors here, like really, really, really bright. Uh, and you can do some pretty fantastic stuff. Speaking of fantastic stuff, you can also do highlights. Uh, it's grain, okay? They call it grain. And you can make your character's hair look sort of gray if you use a white tone here or gray neutral like they have there. But you can switch this to something like a purple or a pink and you can do something else with it. Once again, allows for a lot of cool customization options uh, and I'm sure people will get very creative with it. So there you go. Facial hair. This is 100% linked and there you go. Congratulations. If you picked yes for beards, you win. <laughs> this is linked to your hair color. And all these options are the same as these options here. So they are locked together. And uh, yeah, uh, facial hair on the ladies. GG. Baldur's Gate wins. When you see a, a, a lip of that size, you generally think to yourself, yeah, let's put a mustache on there. Uh, cover that lip up a little bit because uh, it's unnaturally large. Uh, but I mean, sometimes, you know, maybe it's not the best idea. <laughs> sometimes... It's it's better to not have a beard regardless and just embrace the fact that you look a little different So you can do all the facial hair on the ladies. Yes, and if you have a nice big beard like this You can also do different hair colors on it uh, And then you can do it's the same as the hair as I mentioned and then you can do the grain as well in this case It's red in I chose red as the color here uh, You can change and choose the color in the hair options And it's pretty cool. Yeah, Pretty cool. And that's it. We're done with the ladies. Now we're going to randomize. Let's see what we get. I'm pretty curious to see what the Githyankis look like. Oh man, that's very pink. What the hell? It feels like they sort of... That was a, like a properly made up character. Cute, man. Oh, dude. I don't know why, but I just do feel like the green suits them. You know, when you, when you get a green tone on them, it tends to look better. Oh, and brown. And brown. Green and brown. I feel like it tends to look better. Oh, dude, the heterochrome, uh, the uh, vitiligo looks really nice. Yeah, look at that. Sick. There's the heterochromia. Oh, that's also kind of nice. It's like the Karen <laughs> Yankee. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dude, that's, that's awesome. See, that's got like a story tied to it, right? That lady's seen some shit. There you go. Yankee ladies. I, I mean, I like it. Man, that's that's sick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we're going to switch to the men. I don't always have to go back like this, but I tend to do it anyway. Uh, they are cool. They're cool. They're cool. They have big old jug heads. Now, much like with the ladies, you can pick your identity, female, non-binary, other, or male. Uh, and then you can pick your voices. Let's give them a listen. Be wary. This it's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? Hmm. Huh. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. Pretty fantastic choices and pretty fantastic faces. Lots of faces, by the way. Some of the races have very few. These guys have a lot. And I think it's probably because there's a lot that you can do with them. You know, even though they don't give you, like, actual customization over the face, they give you enough options to be able to pick something that would work for you. And this is, like, really insane. Like, the amount that these change. Like, look at these angles, dude. Look at these damn angles. Look at the size of that top lip. Like, wow. But, like, for real, the amount that they change is just, it's amazing. It's really, really cool. We're going to go with the default one for now, once again. I know it's a little boring, but uh, let's look at the skin tones. They, once again, recommend, like, the earthy uh, browns, golds. 
I feel like they do go sort of, yeah, into the, the greens a little bit. They got Ochre here, they got uh, Olive, and then they got Sage. And then I feel after that it sort of drops off. So like when you get to about Sage here, then this is where it's human tones. So that first little chunk there, that would be the proper tones for the Githyanki. Uh, and these ones are extras, so I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, this is just sort of like a whatever situation. Yeah, you can use them. Uh, yeah, it'll look a little strange, but it'll still work. Then you can go all skin colors. You can do this on every single race, and you can pick whatever you want. You can go for a blue character, a proper green character, a red one, uh, a pink one. Yeah, man. Shit, you can make yourself look like a candy floss monster. It's all good, man. It's all good. You pick what you want, and you leave satisfied. <laughs> Let's take a green. Let's do it. Right, scar in. Again, like with the ladies... The scars, they are a little hard to see on the Githyanki because they've got a lot of business going on on the face already. I, I do think it's like, I mean, the, obviously these markings are pretty important to them, as in like they are trademark Githyanki markings. But it would be cool if the faces had like slightly different markings. I realize, again, that makes no sense because, you know, once again, it's a Githyanki marking. But like, it would be nice to customize them a little bit. You can do the freckles. The maturity is the age of your character. It gives you some more wrinkles, crow's feet, whatever. Uh, the freckles... You can set more or less. It's not so impactful on the Githyanki, but it's cool to have regardless. And then the Vitiligo. I will say the one thing with the Vitiligo overall is that it would be cool if you could choose different patterns or different looks, but I think it's, for the most part, enough. Uh, there's, no, there's no complaints from me for that. Let's move on to body art. These are the tattoos for the Githyanki. I'm going to set it on white because it's easier to see. There you go. Some cool choices here, obviously. Some that really work, and some that really don't work. <laughs> but that's, like, I'm gonna be real, that's on you, hey? That's, that's on you to make, uh, to make happen. If there's something that doesn't work, try harder. I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm still trying to look at this and think, like, hmm... If I'm making a barbarian, what kind of war paint would I have on? Most likely not going to be like a weird creepy crawly on my cheek. Most likely not going to be some like weird corruption stuff. It'll be something more primal. Uh, have not decided yet, still trying to figure it out. The colors that you can pick, there are a lot of them and they're very colorful. <laughs> they are quite bright, they are quite impactful. The color that you see here is very much the color that you get there, which is good, really good. Oftentimes, I completely disregard the body paint and tattoo section because it just looks crap. Like, it just looks crap. People have, like, blurry tattoos, and it's not like the, the quality of the game is bad. It's just that the tattoos are, like, they look terrible. <laughs> you, know, you know? They have, like, blurry tattoos, or they have, um, as an example, like, washed-out colors or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but... It happens quite often, more than you think. So I'm very happy to see that the colors in this are nice. The earrings and stuff, the piercings are very cool. Uh, I will mention this a few times as I go forward, but before in the video they were all black. It was kind of messed up. Now it's fixed. I will leave a comment down below just saying that, but uh, yeah, you can now at least see the different colors on them. And that's important because, well, you know, they're kind of cool. Anyway, moving on. Eyes. These are the colors that they recommend for the Githyanki. Uh, even though the Githyanki's eyes are pretty small, uh, you know, they, they sort of less real estate than some of the other races, you still get to actually see them quite significantly, even from a distance. I will praise this system uh, over and over again. <laughs> I, w I will keep saying good things about it because I love it so much. I don't know how they do it. And I mean, it's, it's the same for I don't know how other games mess it up. But basically, oftentimes in games, when you zoom out a little bit, you can't see the eyes at all. In this, somehow, even when you zoom all the way out, you can still see it. So the recommended ones are pretty basic, but when you click on show all, then you get a whole bunch of different colors. You get the demonic ones and all that. But you can see that the Githyanki eye type still sticks through it. And it's pretty nice. I'm not going to show you all the colors here, because these are not the recommended ones. But still, there are lots of choices. You can go for the demonic eyes, the all black ones, and so on and so forth. Pretty cool. Pretty cool makeup 
Seems like all of them start with makeup by default. I feel like the makeup actually just makes it more aesthetically pleasing overall. Let's just turn the intensity up. Like, it, it's, it's subtle, but it just makes the character look better. And this sort of blends in with the the markings, right? Like, if you, if you just put, like, these on, it just looks better. Yeah. The colors on the makeup, pretty cool. There are lots of decent colors here. They can be modified quite significantly by putting the metallic tint and the glossy tint on them. I'll show you how that works in just a moment. And you can probably come up with something pretty sick. If you combine like a nice skin color with a nice face paint or tattoo uh, and then a, a really cool makeup setup, I think you can make something just fantastic. Something really, really cool. And I'm going to show you on this, like let's take the yellows. Uh, and then if I pull the metallic on, it just makes it metallic, but it's still matted. You throw the gloss on there, and then wow. <laughs> and then wow. You're basically David Bowie. It's fantastic. I love it. I really, I really do love it. I think it's really cool. And, and yeah, it reacts differently with all the different colors. So like you can get some seriously cool looks with it. Experiment with it. Have fun with it. There's a lot of nice stuff you can do. Then there are the lips. You can make yourself look pretty snazzy. There are lots of cool options for the lip colors. And they once again have the option to go glossy and to go metallic. Which is just, that's a win. You know, that's a big thumbs up from me. If you take it on, boom and boom. And uh, yeah, looking good. As you can see, the color gets a lot darker when you do put it on. Uh, but it still looks like the color, and yeah, you can you can make it look so much better. I do recommend it thoroughly. And you can put the metallic and the gloss on without anything else. You don't need the color with it. You can just put it on regardless. There you go. Here. Let us have a look. Oh, he looks good. You're looking good, man. You don't need to have a receding hairline, you see. <laughs> uh, we're going to keep brown on. Let's go for... Uh, let's, yeah, let's stick with this brown, and then I'm going to throw highlights on that will be a, let's say, cream or yellow. Yeah, yellow is cool. And I'm just putting these on so you can see the different hair zones. So you can see how you can customize the hair. Each of the styles has its own customization zones, and there are a lot of them. There are a lot. I don't know exactly why they reorganized the hairstyles for the Gith Yankee, but they did. Uh, I don't know if these are recommended styles for Gith Yankee. I really feel like these do not suit the Gith Yankee all that well, but they changed the styles layout a little bit for Gith Yankee, and they've sort of put different ones at the top. Mm, it might just be coincidence, like uh, unintentional, I would say. But like all these different plaits and braids and stuff, uh, yeah, they're not really, not really what I'd call Gith Yankee style. I don't know. Not, not that I know Gith Yankee style, but like. I'm just getting a feeling that it might not be. Sometimes you can see the highlight sort of takes over the entire head. Uh, other times you can see that it's just a little bit here, a little bit there. And and other times still, it just it separates itself entirely. You will notice very soon we're going to get to a style where it's like one half, one half. I think it's really cool the way they do that. And personally, I think that once again, if you know what you're doing, if you have a deft touch, you could make something sick with this. Like, probably with the hair on the one side, the eye color on the other side, the hair on the other side, the eye color, and then some makeup that sort of matches it, you know? Oh, I, I, yeah. Man. I want to say, like, uh, I'm jealous of people that are spending, like, hours upon hours in character creation and making those perfect monstrosities for themselves, uh, because it's a lot of fun. But, I mean, here I am sitting here. I'm not, however, committing. It's like, if I was trying to make something for myself here, yeah, I wouldn't be jumping between the races. I'd probably nail it down, pick one, and then spend like an hour and a half just trying to make that one look nice. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, part of that is knowing exactly what's available. You know what this is? This guy looks like Jude Law. <laughs> oh my god, when I throw this hairstyle on, I'm just like, yeah, that's Jude Law. There you go. Mine got... That's it. Jerome, Jerome, the metronome. <laughs> oh my god, please. If someone understands that, please say so in the comments. I just want to know that I'm not alone. It's like one of these quotes from a movie that's just lived rent-free in my head for like, uh, how long has it been? 25 years? <laughs> Jeez. Oh no, I'm old. Okay, uh, let's go back down to, say for instance, the 
the one here. And then I can show you the different hair colors. We're going to just take the highlights off quickly. Hair colors are nice. And yeah, if I skip a few, if I accidentally like uh, miss one, uh, like if you really wanted to, if you came here to see Dusty 2 and I just skipped over it, I'm so sorry. Just go look at one of the other characters. Uh, I will probably cover it there. Uh, because like, I know there's one guy, there's this one guy who will come and comment on the video and he'll be like, uh, you know, I came here to look at this video to see uh, the, the hair colors for Gif Yankee, and I really wanted to know what Dusty 2 looked like. <laughs> And, and there's always that guy. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean to that guy. I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just saying I know you're there, guy, and I know you want to see Dusty too. So I'm like, I'm really sorry for skipping it. I didn't mean to. It was an accident. Just go look at it on one of the others, because, like, you know, it's still there. It's not going anywhere. Or no, better yet, because I didn't cover Dusty 2, I have now forced you to buy the game and support Larian. Please do it. Because those guys are fantastic and they've made a really nice game here. Let's go with green hair because we like it. Highlights. The way it works is each hair, as I mentioned, each style has its own separate like zones for highlighting. Uh, there are a bunch of colors you can pick from by default. Then you can expand that and you can have even more. Uh, you will notice that the colors are way darker on the highlights, which is really nice. They have like brighter, more impactful, uh, more boom, boom, boom colors, you know. But... Again, it's something that you're gonna have to mix and match. You'll find like you'll find something that's cool. You'll find something that's cool. All right, we're gonna take it off for now though, and then we're gonna have a look at grain. Uh, the way grain works is it is sort of a natural grain process as you slide this up, and the hair gradually gets more gray, as you can see over there, all the way gray. And you can change the color as well. You can yellow your hair, or you can uh, brown, or you can pink, or you can red. Any color you want, you can use for grain. There you go. Let us continue. Facial hair. Let's have a peek. And as you can tell, the grain carries over to the beard. And it is sort of tied in 100%. So like, your, your colors that you pick there are the same as the colors that you get here. These beards look so good, dude. These beards look so good. It's like the same beards every time, but I can't get over how good they look. I'm just saying, they are, they are nice. The, the mustache is also pretty good. I'm not even a fan of a mustache, like, you know, it's not, it's not really a big thing for me. Uh, I will mention, like, almost every time, though, that I do think the one thing they're missing with this is stubble. It's not a deal breaker, though. Let's randomize. <laughs> yes! Hell yes, dude. They do not hold back with randomization. It's funny that every now and then when you randomize, a look comes along that feels so together that you think to yourself, hey, 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 one of the game devs or artists or whatever must have made that, thrown that in there, and, and pretended that it's a random look. Every now and then that happens. I realize that's not the case. I don't, I don't think that's the case, at least. But, like, sometimes, man, sometimes I feel like these guys, they're messing with us. In the best possible way. But there you go. Get the Yankee mail. They look pretty cool. Yeah. It's like a weird uh, mix between Mads Mikkelsen and Jude Law. That's what I what I see these faces as. I don't I don't know I don't know. They are beautiful though. They're all beautiful in their own way. And the game crashed. <laughs> hold on hold on hold on hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna relaunch it. Right. So that's it for Gift Yankee. We back in. The game crashed. It's no big deal. We're gonna jump onto Dwarf now. We got to see a good bunch of different Gift Yankee options. The dwarves pretty interesting. They look pretty cool. They only have two different options. It's male and female. They don't have different body sizes as some of the other ones do. Uh, the males are pretty muscular. The females are pretty muscular. <laughs> they all look good. Stout and hardy. Uh, let's have a look quickly. Dwarves. As durable and unyielding as their homes of stone, dwarves are some of the finest warriors, miners, and smiths of Faerun. They have base speed of 7.5. That's the... Short character speed, slightly slower than the 9, that's the average on the others. Dwarven combat training, they have proficiency with battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, and war hammer. They have dark vision up to 12 meters. And Dwarven resilience, advantage against saving throws uh, with poison, and resistance to poison damage. Then, the sub races are quite interesting. This is the gold dwarf that we're looking at right here. They're known for their confidence and keen intuition. The culture of the Deep Kingdom values family, ritual, and fine craftsmanship. They have Dwarven Toughness, their health increases by one, and then every time they level, they get another one. 
So they're going to have a lot of health at the end. Probably a good tanky spec. Shield Dwarves. Great losses in the ancient wars against goblins and orcs have led these dwarves to adopt a cynical mindset, but they will endure anything to restore their ancestral homelands. They have dwarven armor training, which is uh, light and medium armor proficiency. And then we have Durgar. These dudes are sort of like the drow dwarves. Once enslaved by eldritch mind flayers, Yuga adapted to freedom with harsh practicality. Their cold demeanors and gift for stealth are well known throughout the Underdark. They have superior dark vision, that's double the dark vision, and uh, up to 24. And Yuga resilience, which is advantage against saving throws, against illusions, and being charmed or paralyzed. Now in terms of the customization, I'll first just show you that's what the male looks like. Uh, that's what the female looks like. Female over there, male over there. These are all just serving suggestions. So if I jump into Gold Dwarf and I start customizing the female, uh, you will notice that if you go to the skin tone, you click on all, you can make yourself into a Dugar here. There's nothing stopping you and the customization options are all the same. So I just want to say that straight up at the start. Don't think that one set of dwarves has anything different from the others. They're all the same. So this is just the dwarf customization. I will show you at the end what the serving suggestions are, like what colors they suggest, but that's about it. It's basically just the skin tones. Even though, again, you have all of them on all of them. So first up, identity, male, female, or non-binary and other. That's just how people refer to you in the game world. And then let's look at the voices. Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Be wary, this place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can- Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. There you go. You can pick whatever voice you like, male or female. The faces. Pretty nice. I do feel like some of them look a little samey, uh, but there are decent faces here that you can pick from. Uh, once again, you can see the recommended sort of color on them. Even though when you go on like the drow, the duogar, the drow dwarves, uh, they still show these same colors there, so it's not really valid in that way. Skin tones. These are the ones that they suggest, again, for the gold dwarves that we are on right now. It's sort of human colors, you know? It's sort of human colors. I think it's basically the same as what you get when you pick human. But you can go for all, and then you can make your character any which color you like. You can make yourself into Shrek. You can uh, make yourself into a strawberry or an apple. Uh, you can make yourself uh, anything. Anything you like. Once again, the freedom is there. But if you want to try and be law friendly, then you know what to do. Scarring. Some decent choices, as always. Mm, can't really see that one back there, but it's fine for now. There you go. And then the burn marks. Then you get to set your maturity. That's like basically the age of your character. I think it looks quite good on the dwarves. And then freckles. And that looks good on everything. Let it be known, I like freckles. You can set the quantity, and you can set the opacity. And then finally... Vitiligo. You don't get any more customization for this. You just get to slide this up or down, and that's that. Body art. We're going to go through this pretty rapidly, uh, because we've seen this a bunch of times already. But you might not have, so you can still see it here for the first time, and that's cool. It is basically just on the face. There's nothing for the rest of the body. Well, it's the face and the neck. But there's nothing for the rest of the body. And there are some good ones here. Some nice ones. I have already seen some characters that look pretty cool, and they use these... Uh, tattoos or body art uh, to great advantage and i've seen some really tacky looking ones <laughs> by by randomizing uh, it's it's kind of up in the air right now i feel like you can make some super cool stuff but it takes a little bit of effort and sometimes people don't have the patience for effort because they just want to play the game you know so good on you if you manage to make something cool colors there are some decent choices here, and I, I say this almost every time, but they shine through quite nicely. Like, they don't lose themselves in your skin tone, uh, which is cool. They look natural, but they also look nice and bright, like a freshly painted tattoo. 
They're not faded. They're not blurry. Nothing like that. The white specifically looks really cool. Yeah. It's kind of nice. I, I'm, I'm like, every time I look at this, I'm struggling more and more to decide what I want to do with my character. Piercings. Uh, I mentioned before that we fixed the piercings. It was something to do with the shaders not working properly. But, uh, yeah, they're kind of cool. They actually have color now. There you go. I was curious about those knives. Now I've seen them. There it is. The eyes, they give you some suggested eye colors here, which I have noticed now in my time in the character creation system that these are the basic ones that they give you for the humanoid races, which is literally all the races, um, but like the non-demon races and like uh, the non-drow race, I suppose. It's not humanoid. Again, that's the wrong word. Uh, the more human-like races. There are the races that are sort of human adjacent. Uh, they give you these suggestions, but you can still go for all, and then you can do whatever you want. You can go for the demonic eyes, you can go for the regular eyes. You will once again notice that each of the, the sort of races have their own design on like the pupil and like all the details inside there. And it's very cool to see. Uh, but yeah, again, these are the suggestions that they give you, and they are different for almost all of them. You can do heterochromia, uh, so you can make one one color, the other the other color, and that's cool. Makeup. Some pretty subtle stuff here, but then, uh, you know, some pretty decent options regardless. I will show you the colors in just a moment as we've gone through here. I mean, like, because this one, for instance, doesn't look like much if it's black. But if you make it this color, it's quite bright. The colors are very interesting in this. You get to actually put a metallic tint level on it and a glossy uh, tint. And that makes it sort of super duper shiny and it makes it look really cool uh, the color choices however well you know you can't really see them all that well if you have this on let me take the slightly more robust one uh, but if you take for instance the leaf one here green leaves you throw this on you throw that on it's a way darker color it obviously looks fantastic but it's a way darker color so I'm going through it like this, so you can see the different colors and how it interacts with the character. If I miss any, I apologize. Uh, it's just sort of a, a in-depth look at what's available. Uh, and yeah, just know on any of the other races, it looks almost identical to this. Not all the races have makeup, though. I don't think that the dragon folk have makeup. I don't think. I'm not 100% on that. They might have makeup, but I'm very excited to finally get to them when we do get there. But uh, yeah, again, the metallic, you can make it sort of look really cool. Uh, or not. Yeah, it's up to you. There we go. Then the lips. It's basically lipstick. And you can pick different colors, as always. And you can pick to put the metallic tint and the glossy tint on. And it looks kind of nice. These ones, I do feel like, and at this point, it's too late now. But I do feel like I should have consolidated all of this because it's all the same options. Uh, but then you don't get to see it on the specific races. It's like sometimes you come in here and you want to see full dwarven customization. So here's full dwarven female customization. This is it. It's the comprehensive guide, man. Uh, so when you put the glossy and tint levels on, yeah, it's it's quite a different experience. They look quite nice. But again, that's for you to discover and figure out. Hairstyles. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see them in their entirety. We're going to leave black on uh, and then we'll put a, let's say, a highlight of like uh, yellow. Let's go with the yellow highlight and we'll pull it up so you can see where the highlight is. Now, I'm going to go through the styles like this and I'll just spin the head a little bit as I go through. You can see where the highlight zones are, which parts are highlighted. And yeah, it's kind of cool. You can basically decide what you want to do with it. I realize that a lot of it looks very tacky when you do this. I know that. Okay. I know that. But it's still the best way to show it off. Because, like, as an example, that doesn't show you where the highlight zones are. And uh, you might not you might not know. You know, if you're looking at this and you're trying to figure out what to do, this is how you do it. So you figure it out. Some really cool styles, and I feel like most of these look really good on the Dwarven females. They have once again shuffled them a bit. I 
I say shuffled just because they're not in the same places as they were on like the elves and the humans. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> God, these styles are fantastic. There's just so much good stuff in here, man. So much good stuff. I think with the hair, and I don't know if this is the same for you guys, but for me specifically, it's probably the hardest choice. Uh, like, you know, sometimes it's obvious. Like, and I want to say this about, a good example would be Diablo. I played Diablo 4 recently, I made characters there. And I'm going to tell you straight up, I felt like it was obvious which ones I would use right from the start when I was making my character, because certain styles were just cooler than other styles. Certain styles looked better, they sort of suited classes better, and so on and so forth. But in this, there are so many styles, and they all look really, really, really good. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> it's going to make it really hard for me to pick something. And that's maybe why you are here. You could potentially be here for inspiration, and I hope you find it. Uh, now, for the purposes of this video, let's pick a style like this one. And then we're going to jump in. I'll show you the different hair colors without the highlights quickly. They got the basic colors here, the normal looking colors. And then as you go further down, uh, you start getting the more exotic ones, the slightly brighter, cooler ones. I say cooler, there's nothing uncool about blonde hair or brown hair. It's just, you know, these stand out a little bit more when you have them. Uh, it's it's good, it's good. Like the oranges specifically, like they really do it for me. The, the reds are kind of nice as well. Even though I feel like the red is a little bit too close to pink for comfort, it's still quite nice. I think that the red in the highlights is nicer. Anyway, there we go. Let's pick orange. And then I'll throw the highlights in there and show you. Highlight colors, I'm not going to go through all of them, but you get the idea with it. You can go to all highlight colors and you can get like a whole lot more here. And then you can do some pretty fantastic stuff with it. I, I believe that you guys will be able to make some nice looking characters. Yep, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Believe in yourself because I believe in you. Lots of cool colors here. Finally, graying. You pick a color, much like the highlights, uh, with a few more gray options than you can set the gray intensity. It's good. It's good, but you can use it like highlights if you'd like to as well. So you can put any color in here that you want. It looks kind of gross if you put, you know, some bad color combinations in there, but you can sort of pick and choose and find something cool, right? I'll leave it on gray for now. We'll throw some gray hairs in there just because we are about to move on to the beards. Obviously, the female dwarves can have beards, and the gray hairs do find their way into the beards, which is cool. I like it. So there you go. We can go through them all and have a quick peek. Big beards, small beards, well-groomed beards, bushy beards, all the beards are available. And on the beards, the colors are the same as the hair. So just know that your hairstyle options, your colors from there will translate into this quite nicely. Uh, you pick the color of your beard and hair together, as you can see, and you pick the grain intensity as well. There you go. Done. Let us randomize the female dwarves. I was about to say we're going to see some really cool options here. And if you pay attention, you will see that I will have to, and I think this is how it works, if I take this and I show all skin colors, then if I unlimit it like that, then I randomize, uh, it will start picking from the entire pool. As far as I understand, I think it picks them far less regularly, uh, but it does pick from the whole pool, uh, and you can sort of curate the randomization like that. I'm not sure. I said it now, and I and I believe it, but I'm not 100%. It looks like it's still picking just from the recommended colors. Either way, uh, you you do have a decent selection here, and I will show you in just a moment. Oh, that is really cool. I will show you in just a moment uh, what you get on the other ones, because we're going to go back now, and we're going to go on to mail. But before we do that, I will show you that these guys, they basically just have uh, different suggestions for the skin tones here. Ah, oh, these actually look like the same. And then they might have like a different default on the hair. Uh, and then if you go into the Durgar, these ones should definitely have different ones. Yeah, there you go. So all the ice, ash, dusk, lichen, amethyst tones over here, these are the recommended ones. So if I randomize on these, you will see that they pick from these ones. Uh, but they also have the regular dwarf tones down here. So it's sort of like a, it's a mixed bag, if you know what I'm saying. But the customization options are exactly the same. So just know that you're not missing out on anything if you pick one over the other. You've got it all. Now we're going to jump into, that's a really cool dwarf, the male customization. Let us do it. So, first up, identity, male, female, non-binary, other. 
cool. Yeah, all the choices are there. I'm going to do something that I should never actually do. I'm going to take the beard off the dwarf. <laughs> oh no. I realize it's a bad, bad, bad move. But I have to do it so I can show you the uh, skin tones and the scarring and stuff like that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to see this. Let's listen to the voices first. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I want More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Health. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. More of those wretched things. Decent choices for the voices. Heads. They have... <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have a specific look to them. They have a look and feel to them that is quite dwarfish. Uh, they have the large noses... The potato noses, as my German father would call it, the Kartoffelnase. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. I love it. I love it. Um, and they do look, yeah, distinctly dwarven. Uh, much better with a beard on. So I'm sorry. I'm showing you this preview here. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Once again, the skin tones, uh, these are the default ones for the default uh, shield and gold dwarves. When you go onto the Diogar, you will get a different set of recommended skin tones. You'll get the more drowish ones the more underdarkian ones. I know that's not a word, I just made it up on the spot. I'm comfortable with it, I'll use it again, don't worry. But these are the skin tones that they recommend. And they're okay, they're fine, they look good. I'll just take one of these sort of basic ones here and then I'll show you what the... And oh, and sorry, yeah, you can click on all skin tones and you can make yourself into a drow if you'd like. Uh, these skin tones are here. These ones are basically the drow skin tones, they will be at the top when you make the Dugar. Uh, and that's cool, but you can also go all the way down here and make yourself into whatever you like. I mentioned uh, Shrek, and I will say it again, you can find yourself a nice Shrek green, and you can sort of live like that, you know? Why not? Why the heck not? You do you. Scarring. Looks kind of good on these. Uh, I like how the maturity level also looks on the male dwarves. I feel like they already have a lot of lines on their face. Uh, so then when you throw the maturity on there, uh, when you push it up, it just looks even better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they've seen some shit, these guys. They got hard faces. Freckles. You can set the intensity and the amount. It sort of freckles them on like raindrops falling on the face. And then uh, vitiligo. There you go. And this covers the whole body, for those wondering. Yeah, I, I, I didn't make that clear earlier on, but uh, yeah. Body art. This is the tattoos on the face. It's just on the face and then sometimes on the neck as well. I'm going through here quite quickly again because we've looked at this a bunch of times already. But uh, yeah, you get a lot of options here. You get a lot of options for the colors as well. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I, will, I will skip through the color options pretty quick as well. So you can just get an idea of what you can do. But I'm sure you'll find something that tickles your uh, fancy. Maybe you want a little centipede on your face. I don't know. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. In terms of the colors, you can come over here and have a look. There's no recommended colors on these. They just give you everything. You can set the intensity of the color, which is the opacity. Uh, it translates very nicely. It looks very good. It is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, yeah, like with the variety that they have and the tattoo system, you can probably make something nice. Something nice. All right. Then piercings. Also, a pretty decent system. Lots of cool options here. Not like, not crazy stuff. And before anyone asks, there's no genital piercings. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a thing. Uh, but yeah, the eyes, uh, they give you the suggested ones over here, which is the same for most of the races. Uh, and then, uh, they look good. They look good. But then you can do heterochromia as well, and you can also say all eye colors. And when you say all, you can sort of set up a custom story for your character by giving it demonic eyes. You can say, oh, yo, 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 possessed by a demon and some such. Uh, you can choose the slightly more exotic colors. Uh, and then you can sort of mix and match if you like. You can take that one over there. You can heterochromia and you can pick that one over there. And it can look, uh, yeah. You do you. You do you. Makeup. Let's set the intensity up. It is up. Good. I think the makeup looks nice on the dwarvish males. I don't know, man. I like the makeup quite a lot. There you go. The makeup colors. 
They are nice. They are good. They are boom, 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 boom. You get to do, as you can see here, metallic tint and glossy tint, and that just makes them even more fabulous. It gives you a like glossy and, and metallic sheen on it that you can enable or disable to your heart's content. It changes the colors though, so like as you go through the colors here, you will notice that uh, some of them, as an example, this one, it gets much darker when you, when you turn it on, but it does look completely different. It's a different style. So uh, yeah, you should check them out. If you are thinking of making something really cool, uh, you can probably do it with this makeup setting. Yeah, there's a lot of nice options. And there are decent colors as well. Like, again, this combined with the body art, there's something for everyone here. Definitely. The lips, same situation here. You pick the color and then you can set... The, the dwarf males have pretty small lips, but you can set the uh, metallic tint and the glossy tint and then, you know, come up with something cool. good stuff it's good stuff i'll show you how it looks quickly it's not great on the on the male dwarves because the lips are so small but when you do put it on and you take like a nice pink color or something like that uh you you yeah you can see the difference again their lips are teeny weeny so it's like whatever but <laughs> i believe in you guys you can make it work hair male dwarves and hair yeah there should be lots of it. Pick whatever has the most. Now let's do something slightly different. We'll take uh, white hair and we'll take highlights black. Right? The highlights, uh, I'm leaving them on for this so you can see the highlight zones. Uh, you can sort of see the Cruella DeVille style highlights in there. They're different on every one of them. The highlights on that one are just at the back there. I do have them all the way up, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and you will notice, again, that you can sort of see <clears throat> where they would be. I just show you again with this like tacky looking style, the black and the white, so that you can tell exactly if you want to use a specific hairstyle, uh, where you would be able to change the colors. It's quite easy to plot and plan uh, a course for a good looking character if you know what you can do with the hair. Because the hair, in most situations, especially if you leave your helmet off, uh, is one of the most impactful options, I think. One of. I mean, in, in Baldur's Gate here specifically, you might argue that the skin color is more impactful because you can pick like literally anything as a skin color. Uh, you can make your character look like an actual clown, but the hair is still like, it's pretty big. It's pretty in your face, you know, and you can sort of see it from a, a decent distance. So picking a good hairstyle and hair color setup. Yeah, man, you're going to want to do that. It's important. And there are some nice combos. And then on top of this, we'll get to it in just a moment, but there's also gray in. So you can pick like a darker style and you can add some gray hairs to it. Make yourself a stunning looking silver fox of some sort. It's cool. It's cool. I get like wild hammer dwarf vibes from these. Some really nice hairstyles here. There you go. And I mean, it, it obviously can be repeated a billion times, but it, it's worth saying again. <laughs> because I do repeat myself a lot in these videos, uh, you do get to use all the same styles on male and on female. Uh, they all on male and female, and that's that. Like, you get to you get to pick them all. So, for the grain, let's have a look at... Let's take this one here. I'll go through the hair colors first, and then I'll show you the grain. Hair colors, it's the same on most of the races. You basically have a choice between a bunch of uh, blondes, browns, uh, blacks and then you get to like the reds and there are some pinks as well here. They translate very nicely It's a really nice color system that they have on the hair Oftentimes you see a color here in a character creator and then you click it and then it's nowhere near as bright or vibrant or uh, Impactful as saturated as you'd expect it to be but in this yeah, man They don't hold back. They let you make your character look like anything you like and I, I, I respect that I do. So if we take a color like, let's go for this one, it's a good one, then we can change the highlights on here, uh, we can throw some lighter highlights in if we like, and you can change the intensity on that. Once again, it's something you're going to have to mess around with, you can do any color highlight you like, uh, and it can have uh, varying degrees of impact. 
Then the gray in is basically like another set of highlights. It's just a, a color that you can pick. It can be gray and you can make it look like your character is actually gray in. Or you can pick red and your character can be red in. Uh, your character can be green in. Your character can be pink in. It's whatever. It's up to you. Uh, you can make it work the way you want it to work. That's it. Beards. The most important part for our dwarvish male customization. You don't want to mess around with the scrappy nonsense at the start here. Even though it's okay, uh, I would say you are looking for these ones. At the very least, you want these beards on your dwarf. Because that brings it all together and your character actually looks like a real dwarf. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't want to discriminate against the scrappy beards because I have a scrappy beard. But like, if possible, you want to take the big boys. They look better. The colors here are very much locked to your hair. So what you pick on your hair color... That's what you get here. And then you can gray from here as well. It goes in the beard too. As much as you like. And that's it. Let us randomize. Fantastic. So the randomization, it bears repeating. It is randomizing with the shield dwarf and the gold dwarf options because they are shared right now. And if you go into, and I, like, I haven't figured this out entirely, but like if you go into like here and you say all skin tones, I, I don't know if it sometimes randomizes with all of them or not, but basically you can see here that it's not picking the Drow or the Drugar skin colors. I don't know. Uh, and, and when you go, <laughs> there are some fantastic looking characters here, but when you go back and I'm going to show you what they look like now, uh, Shield Dwarf has its own set, uh, even though I think it's pretty much the same. Uh, these colors here are pretty much the same as the Gold Dwarf. Uh, but then specifically the Duga, as I mentioned, they have different colors here. So if you randomize on them, uh, you will have the regular ones, and then you'll also have the darker skin tones here. But the, the full set of customization options are the same. So do not worry. Don't think you're missing out. It's all the same. And that's it. We are done with the dwarves. Let's move on. Half-elf. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you about the half-elves. They are slightly less interesting even though i feel like the half elf is like it's a nice looking race like they are physically very attractive they might even be the most attractive because they have like a nice mix between the humanoid uh, and the elf the human and the elf customization uh, and looks they have nice delicate features uh, but they still have slightly stronger jaws slightly bigger muscles stuff like that whatever um they they sort of an, a nice mix between them uh, and i'm going to show you what they look like in a moment let's just read the uh the description. Half-elf. Curious, ambitious, and versatile. Half-elves are welcome everywhere, but struggle without a community to call their own. Nine meters per second. That's the basic. Civil militia. Proficiency with sp uh, spears, pikes, halberds, and glaives. And armor proficiency with light and shields. That's same as humans. Dark vision up to 12. And then fey ancestry. They have advantages on saving throws, on being charmed, and you can't be put to sleep. Now, there are sub-races. I will show you right now. Uh, the customization options on them are very, very similar. Very much exactly the same, actually. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I will, I will go through them in a moment. I just want to show you quickly what the males look like. And then what the bigger females look like. So you have a choice between big and small. And you have this choice on all of them. So here you have high half-elf. Touch of the Feywild remains in half-elves with this bloodline, and even those untrained in magic possess a hint of wild power. You get a cantrip. Uh, this is the same as the high elf cantrips. You can choose it, and you can select from the wizard spell list below. And then they say here it doesn't use spell slots and be cast at will. It uses your intelligence as modifier. You have, and you're going to have to look quick at this. You can just pause if you want to see it. Acid Splash, Bone Chill, Firebolt, Poison Spray, Ray of Frost, Shocking Grasp, Blade Ward, Friends, Dancing Lights, Light, Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, and True Strike. That's basically the same as what High Elves have. Uh, and if you pick Half High Elf, then you get those. But if you pick the other ones, that goes away. So if you pick Wood Half Elf, like their Wood Elf parents, these Half Elves have a quickened stride and an eye for stealth. Yet many break away from isolation in the Faerun Forest to explore the rest of the realms. They get 1.5 per meter faster move speed. Uh, they look the same as well. Like, you will look... They look the same. Then you get Drow. Half-Elf. Most Drow uh, result from liaisons... Sorry, that's most Half-Drow. Result from liaisons between the Saldarine Drow and Surfaces. While Half-Drow inherited a few magical gifts, they aren't usually raised in the Underdark. 
they get dancing lights as a cantrip. That's it. You don't get to pick like you do on High Elf. Uh, you just get that one. Right? So, these ones look a little different, as you can tell. Much like with the Drow, the customization options, they are different on Half Elf specifically, like as a whole. Uh, but when you come into specifically the Drows, they have a different set of suggested skin tones, and that's basically it. So let's get into customizing. We're going to edit the appearance on this one. Uh, we're going for female first. Your first choices, obviously the body types, as I've shown you. Uh, then identity, non-binary, other, male or female. And then the voices. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. There you go. You can pick the male or female voice of your dreams. The heads, they are some of the most beautiful faces, I feel. Like, they have really nice faces. They are basically, and, and, and I've, I've actually confirmed and looked, it's like they're combinations between the humans and the elves. It's kind of weird how they've mashed them up. It's cool. It's really cool. Uh, they have really, really nice faces. Like, if you're looking for a beautiful character, you come here. Uh, really, really, really nice. They're so pretty. Too pretty, probably. Skin tones. Uh, you will notice here, this is the uh, set of options for the half drows. And then all of these below are for the wood elves and the high elves. You can sort of pick any of these if you want to stay true to the law. Uh, obviously, based on which of the half elf sub races you pick. But then, when you get to all skin colors, you can also just go ham. You can pick whatever you want. There are lots of different types here. Greens, pinks, uh, reds, blues. It's up to you. You really, you can do whatever. You can do whatever. That's for you to explore, though. Uh, for this, let's just go for the pale color, because why not? And then we can see the scars. They look really cool. Dude, these faces are actually just so picturesque. They're so perfect. It's like a work of damn art. I'm just going to say it over and over again. They are too good looking. There you go, man. If you're looking for the best looking race, you go for these guys. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's again, it's in the eye of the beholder. Maybe it's just me that thinks they're the, the prettiest, but um, it just feels like they are like symmetrically perfect and they have all these like perfect features and whatever. You get to set the maturity, make them look a little older if you like. Uh, freckles, mandatory, I feel. Uh, they're on the face and on the neck. You can set the quantity and you can set the uh, opacity. And then uh, vitiligo. I'm probably still saying that incorrectly, but it's whatever. There you go. Body art. These are the tattoos. I'm just going to change the hair quickly so we can see them nicely. Let's just take something like this. Go through these pretty quick. Uh, because we've seen these tons of times. Very cool options. Lots of fun stuff to do here. Uh, go crazy, guys. Make something cool. Link it on the Baldur's Gate Reddit. And uh, yeah, wow people with your creativity. Do it. I'm actually starting to get vibes of the kind of character I want to make here. I like this hairstyle and I like these tattoos. Man, oh man, oh man. Please. This is too much. <laughs> okay, the colors. Lots of different colors for the tattoos here. Can jump in and sort of customize to your heart's content. I... Part of me wishes you could do the glossy and metallic tints on these like you can on the uh, lipstick and the makeup, uh, but it's fine. Then you can set the opacity. Then you can do piercings. Yeah, dude, this, this face is just so neat and tidy. Something about it is too perfect. Eh, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Lots of cool piercings, though. Good choices. Then we're moving on to eyes. So, the elves, they have their own unique eye colors. You'll see they have, like, elf colors down here. These are the basic ones, the human ones, basically. You'll see it's just the regular colors. Uh, this black there, which is not really a human color, but it's one of the choices. And then when you get down to the bottom, you've got elf gold, and then it keeps going. They obviously have their own unique look to their uh, pupils and, and, the, and the colors in there and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's all good. They look nice. 
and then you can also go to all and you can do the demonic eyes you can do the black eyes you can do whatever else you want uh, all the unique colors if your desire takes you there then you can do heterochromia this explains itself you can just have one eye one color one the other color it's pretty cool makeup let's have a peek let's make sure the intensity is full makeup looks really good on the uh Half, half elves once again <laughs> I, I i say that almost every time i feel like the makeup just looks good it just looks good uh, and i've been showing it off with these because it's the it's the biggest one you can set a metallic tint and a glossy tint that makes it sort of uh, you know a, a lot more fabulous a, a lot more bright and and colorful and you know shiny uh, but then you can look at the colors without it as well it gives you sort of a more straightforward look at what the color is just imagine though each of them can be changed each of them can be modified each of them can be set up in any which way you take this one for example boom boom it looks different it's kind of cool but this is really something you're going to want to mess around with for yourself uh, because like come on <laughs> there's so much fantastic stuff you can do with this so go for it go for it cool there you go uh, and even like the most basic ones can look awesome like really awesome you know then lips just basic lip colors uh, they are pretty set there's not a massive list here uh, and i think that they can have a pretty big impact especially if you use the more exotic and bright colors and then you throw the metallic and glossy tints on them uh, you can you can make it look kind of cool so if we take this one for example throw that on there yeah man sick there you go turn it off and you can do the, the metallic and glossy tints without a color on as well if you'd like hair mm, we're back on the default hairstyles it's it's reshuffled itself so i'm gonna leave blonde on here and then i'm gonna throw some highlights on that are black so you can see what they look like i know it looks tacky i'm sorry i apologize it just gives you a good look at where the highlights are if there are any on the specific styles and it allows you to see where, you know, you can throw those highlights on uh, to have them look good. Or look bad, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> you can, it's up to you. There are some really cool styles. And I think that I will continue to praise the designers. If one of you ends up watching this and you watch like the whole thing and you just want input. I'm giving you a thumbs up right now with my third thumb. Okay. <laughs> you did great. You did great. These characters are too pretty. They are too pretty. I wonder if this looks like... This is one thing I've not tested. Uh, and I, I'd love it if one of you guys... If, you, if you're listening to this right now... If one of you could tell me... Does this translate well into the game? Because like... You know, oftentimes... And I think, I think it does. But oftentimes, character creators... They give you a layer of extra detail in the character creation system. And that layer disappears when you enter the game. Because, like, the game can't keep up that kind of... It's just insane. It's like a breakneck pace of, of insane uh, visual style. Uh, visual fidelity, actually. Uh, it's like, if you, if you jump in, they make your character look a little scuffed. <laughs> the shading is not quite as much. Uh, it's not as, you know... Uh, visually pleasing anymore and it looks like a completely different character i'm wondering if this game is like that because again i've not actually made a character for myself yet uh, i'm still busy going through the styles here still trying to figure out what i like or what i don't like uh, yeah it's still up in the air for me uh, so i'd love to hear from you guys if if this is one of those games or if this actually has a decent conversion so we'll take this one for now i'm going to show you the hair colors i'll take the highlights off there you go Super cool hair colors. Uh, I, I, I gush over this continuously. I have been doing it for four hours now already. And, or longer. I don't even know how long this is, dude. I've lost track of time. But the idea of these hair colors is just that they, they don't hold back. Uh, they give you really bright colors. They give you really nice looks. And they, they, they just say, hey, go. Go. Do, do the thing. Make the character. Make it look good. Uh, because we believe in you. <laughs> Thanks, Larian. You guys are so kind. Me putting words in your mouth? No, never. Lots of nice hair colors here. Uh, you will notice that some look better on, on certain races. Some are more natural. They fit better on like, you know, whatever you may. You just fiddle around a little bit, guys. Fiddle around. The highlight colors, there are so many more of them. Uh, you can sort of go for brighter colors, darker colors. You can do anything you like with this. It's really cool. Not going to go through all the colors here specifically, but there are lots. And you can see them here. And they translate like one to one. You see that color there? It goes onto your hair. It does. So take the highlights off. And then you can gray. 
You can gray your hair as well. I like the graying system quite a lot. I think it looks quite natural. Oftentimes they don't do natural looking grain. This I feel is good. And each hairstyle grays differently as well. So you want to go through them and sort of pick and choose the one you like the most. You can be completely gray or just a little bit gray. It's up to you. Uh, let's put a few gray hairs in there. Facial hair. Unlike the other elves, the half elves can actually have facial hair. We're going to go through this quite quickly and I'll show you how it looks. The facial hair color is directly tied to your hair. You can't have a different color beard. Um, but yeah, uh, as I just said, the regular elves, the high elves basically and the drow, they can't have facial hair. Uh, but these guys can because they have that human blood, you know. It's kind of cool. Uh, the hair color, as I mentioned, changes this. So you, you pick what you want here and then the grain also affects it quite nicely. There you go. Right, let's randomize. That's female done. There's probably going to be some really cool looks here. Dude. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's so cool. Uh, you will notice that they are picking the drow skin types here as well. So with half-elf specifically, there's no difference between the races. So I will show you, because, you know, I like to do that. I like to be thorough. But the idea is, look at the size of that forehead. Wow, 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 wow. The idea is, that's such a cool character. I'm sorry, that's not the idea. I'm getting... <laughs> getting sidetracked uh, the idea is that if you go into drow as an example then a uh, half drow then if you come here it lists the ash lichen dusk wisteria ice tones first as your suggested colors then it puts the elf tones after you can use whatever you want or you can just go for all it's just the serving suggestion that's it okay that's it what a cool character we've made there now let's go for the male ones uh, again, the customization options and the visual style on the small bodies and the big bodies are the same. Uh, there's nothing really different there. Let us customize them. You can pick identity, female, non-binary or other, and male. And then you can do voices. Let's listen. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Alright. Faces. <laughs> God. Why are they so good looking? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> you can see the skin tones that they give you on the pictures here. Again, serving suggestion. It's just what they say, like, you know, I guess makes sense. The skin colors here are for the half elves in general. They have the drow tones here. When you do pick drow or half drow, then you get like a few extra. It will be these ones over here. These are the half drow ones, but these are the ones that they suggest you use uh, on basically the half high elves or the half wood elves. And you can just sort of you know, go crazy. You can pick sort of a more human looking one or you can do anything you like because once you get to the end here you think to yourself wait is that all the colors nope you can just click on all and then you've got access to everything and there's just an insane amount here you can do whatever you know go for it be free customize to your heart's content right let's pick this scarring you ask yourself why would you want to scar such a pretty face well you add in stories. Extra tales to your character's life. Yeah, each of these scars could be a story. An extra page in your uh, life's journey. You can make your character look a little older. That actually looks quite nice. He ages gracefully. Freckles. You can set the, quali uh, the quantity and then the intensity. You can see that they're on the neck and on the uh, lower... Uh, what's that? Like on the collarbones, on the shoulders a little bit there. And then uh, Vitiligo. Any amount you want. Moving on to the body art. These are the tattoos that are available. Nothing full body, just the face. But good choices nonetheless. Very good choices nonetheless. Pretty cool. Pretty gnarly, some of them. But uh, still pretty cool. When it comes to the colors, I'll just pick one of these and I'll show you. You have a lot of decent choices and you can set the intensity, which is the opacity. And the colors, they translate. They translate. Okay. 
they translate. <laughs> it's like, you know, no, they don't translate text for you, okay? It's just not Google Translate. I mean, they look like they look here on the skin. That's what I mean. <laughs> That's what I mean to say. Uh, the white is, is particularly impressive, I think. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And then you can, as I said, set the intensity of the tattoo as well. Piercings. Pretty nice, good selection. And you do get to see your character up close and personal enough. I know this from the early access bit that I played. Uh, it's like, it's an important choice. It's an important choice. Eyes, uh, you get to do heterochromia. You can have one color in the one, one color in the other. Uh, different, obviously. Uh, then you can go through the default ones here that they give you. It's like all the human choices, all these ones. And then when you get down to the bottom, it usually gives you the elf ones. Yeah, here you go. Elf gold, elf green, blue, whatever. Uh, and then you can go for all eye colors. And it's a big list of demonic eyes that you can throw in there. Along with all sorts of others. Very cool. Very cool. Lots of nice colors. Lots of nice choices. Uh, go. Pick the one you like the most. Make up. Here we are. Good makeup. I feel like they made decent enough makeup for both males and females. It looks quite nice. The colors are super duper. They look great as you throw them on there. And then you can also add a metallic and a glossy tint to each of them. Which is, uh, yeah. Fantastic as well. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'll show you how it looks in just a moment. I'm just showing you the colors quickly. Uh, as an example, if you take like the gray, let's take like a lighter gray, you throw a metallic on there, it makes it look slightly more metallic, you gloss it up, and then it looks shiny. It's awesome. Uh, and each of these colors looks different when you do that. Let's take a green quickly and I'll show you. There you go. Super cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. You can let your creativity run free with this and you can make some really cool stuff. I hope to see more characters with makeup. I mean, me, personally, I tend to stay away from makeup and body paint and stuff like that when I make characters, because I always feel like it might not age so well, you know? <laughs> you know, it's like in real life. Uh, you, you you think to yourself, hmm, uh, if I pick that now, I might be screwing myself later, because I might get sick of that, you know? Uh, and I'm not sure if the game allows you to customize your character visually later, uh, but, you know, it's just still, it's a, it's a very big choice. And it's a commitment, you know? It's a commitment going for like a full face tattoo or like a big makeup or something. <sighs> I don't know if I'm brave enough for it. And one, much like uh, with the other makeup, you can also do metallic here and glossy here. And it looks perfect. There you go. The color disappears a little bit when you do that, but it still looks really nice. There you go. That's it. Here. Let us make the highlights red. So, I made this gaudy looking hair so that you can see the highlight sections, the highlight zones on the character's head. And then you can decide. You can make an informed decision. You can choose which of these is best for you. If you think I'm going too fast through the hair, just have a look at one of the others. Maybe the very first elf customization I do. Uh, all the hairstyles and colors are the same across all the characters. Uh, I mean, I obviously have yet to do the dragons at the end. But for the most part, they have the same hairstyles. So if you go to any of the others, you might see me going a little slower, stopping on some of them, uh, turning them around a little bit more. I'm basically covering them as quick as I can, but also as thoroughly as I can. Uh, because there is not so much a time constraint. It's just like, you know, if I get to 12 hours, then I can't upload this video on YouTube because it'll be too long. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's a there's a genuine fear of maybe at, uh, getting close to that. I like this one a lot. The, the split and this one where it's split between the two. It's really cool. So, yeah, I mean, like, just keep in mind, I'm making it look kind of crappier, but it's on purpose, right? It's on purpose. These guys are just, like, devilishly handsome, you know? They're really nice. There you go. I'll leave this one on for now. 
hair colors. I'm going to just take the highlight off so I can show you. Really nice hair colors. I'll zoom in to show you how they look. Uh, they are plentiful and plenty bright and shiny. The colors look really cool. Uh, my favorites are the reds and the oranges, obviously. Uh, but I think some of the blues look kind of nice too. Kind of nice. The orange is like, wow. Uh, I'm probably going to go for the orange. I don't know. Or maybe the red. I don't know. I don't know. The pinks and blues and like uh, all these others. They might just be a little too bright. Same for the greens and the cyans here. I don't know. It's like, it's a tough choice, you know? It's a really tough choice. As for the highlights, uh, you see now how they look. Uh, but then you can choose from a massive selection of, of really nice colors. There are some combinations you can pull off that will probably look really good. There are some combinations you can pull off that will probably look really bad. I'm going to leave that to you guys. <laughs> I'm going to leave that to you to mess up. Uh, I'll take black hair here quickly and then show you what the grain looks like. Different from the highlighting because the gray starts at the roots and it makes its way out for the most part. Uh, and then you can also choose a different color for the grain. So you can make it sort of gray into a different color if you like. Because you never know, man. You could be magically enhanced with a special hair color. Next up. Facial hair. Here we go. The half elves do get beards. And they look pretty cool. Uh, let me just take a different hairstyle that's not so... Uh, that one. Not covering the, the hair. The facial hair. All the male characters and the female characters that can have beards have the same selection of beards. I don't think there are any unique ones to any specific race. Uh, but, I mean, these are good. These are really nice. You yeah. know? Funny, I'm just trying to think about it. Do any of the pre-made characters have beards? I don't think they do. Do they? It's funny that there's no, like, dwarvish pre-made character. The hair colors are locked, uh, so the beard and the hair is together. So if you go, like, orange or whatever, you know, there it is. Uh, and then the grain is also shared between them. You can make yourself look like a nice ice cream or something by doing that. There you go. We're done. Let's randomize. Now, as I mentioned on pretty much all the other randomizers, what's happening here is it's picking from uh, the entire pool that's suggested to you. So if you go over here and you look at the skin tones, it's picking from these. Uh, if you want the other skin tones, the more exotic ones, you're going to want to uh, do it yourself. Or, un uh, well, it's not unlimited really, but like, because if you do this, it's actually still picking from the suggested ones. It's just the suggested ones are down at the bottom here. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can figure it out. There's lots of cool styles here and some of these characters look uh, pretty fabulous and there you go now as i show at the end of each of these when you go on to like draw or whatever the only thing that's different on it is that the suggested tones for the for the defaults are different so if you randomize on here then you'll get more of the draw tones uh, and colors versus the more human ones and that's it that's it we're done let's go back to the races we're doing halfling now <laughs> Shame, look at these guys. <laughs> Looking thoroughly bewildered and flustered. Small yet capable, halflings prefer the comforts of home and hearth, but their natural luck and dexterity make them fine adventurers. They move slower because they are shorter. 7.5 per turn. They're lucky. When you roll a 1 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the dice. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, you must use a new roll. So you can't, like, you can't set, use the one again, which, I mean, it, it makes sense. You must use the new roll, yes. Brave. You have an advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Huh, that's cool. And then they do have sub-races. So we have the Lightfoot Halfling uh, and the Strongheart Halfling. They look uh, sort of much the same. You can see these guys are a little more tanned. These guys are a little less tanned. Yeah, uh, there you go. There you go. Lightfoot Stealthy but social, these halflings travel all over Faerun to make names for themselves. Naturally stealthy, you have advantage on stealth checks. And the Strongheart ones, legend has it that Dwarven blood gave Stronghearts their hardiness, resistant to poison and wellsprings of endurance, these halflings easily hold their own. Their Strongheart resilience gives them advantages on poison saving throws and resistance to poison damage. Customization on both of these is the same. They might give you slightly, and I really just mean slightly different skin tones as choices here. But for the most part, it will be exactly the same. So just know that. We customize in halflings now. That's it. Right. First choice is your identity. Female, male, or non-binary and other. That's how people refer to you. And then let's look at the voices. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. 
Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. There you go. Decent voices. Faces. I kind of like what they've got going here. I see they've got some makeup on by default, which is interesting. I'm just going to take that off quickly. There you go. Nice faces. I like the head shape. Uh, it does look, yeah, very halfling. It's cool. It's cool. Very nice. Then skin tones. As I mentioned, the one thing that might change between the two different types of, of halflings is the skin tones, but I do not even think it's different. So you've got the basic humanoid skin... Human? I keep saying humanoid, but I mean human skin tones, uh, where it gives you sort of nice darker skins, nice tanned skins, nice pale skins, and so on and so forth. Uh, but you can obviously uncheck the restrictions and you can go crazy you can make yourself a drowling if you want <laughs> if you want you can make yourself a drowling you can make yourself a greenling you can make yourself a pinkling you can do whatever the heck you want uh, so there you go all the different colors are available uh, we will for this not go for the face skin tone we'll just go for like a regular one over here and then we'll continue faces are nice once again they give you a serving suggestion with the color over here let's look at the scars these guys look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I kind of like it. They look ready for adventure. They do look brave, don't they? Maturity. can make them look a little older if you like. Freckles. You can set the intensity, which is the opacity, and then the quantity. Let's leave the freckles on, because they look nice. And then uh, the vitiligo. There you go. Body art. This is the tattoos. We're going to go through these pretty quickly. You get the, the basic idea, and you will get the basic idea of the colors as well when I go through them. The colors work incredibly nicely. They are bright, they are vibrant, they are there when you select them. They're not washed out in any way. Uh, I'm thoroughly impressed by it. I'm, I'm, I mean, jeez, dude. Like, I'm thoroughly impressed by every step of the way here. Everything I see when I'm ca customizing the characters here, I am impressed by. It all looks fantastic. This is like... Unfortunately, it's going to be like my magnum opus. This is the masterpiece. This is what I will basically compare all other character creators to in the future. <sighs> it's sad because we are reaching peak here. And what ends up happening is uh, everything from here on is downhill. <laughs> you know, everything that's not from Larry and Baldur's Gate is downhill. So, yeah, lots of nice colors here. You can set the intensity as well, which is just the brightness. It's cool. Then piercings. Because why not? Easy breezy. There we go. Eyes. The suggested eye colors. Not a huge selection, but some decent choices. And then you will see in just a moment... It's nice going through all of them. I just want to put that out there quickly before I show you all of the, the colors you can choose. Because, again, uh, they have different types of eyes. Each race has their own, like, design on the pupil. And it's fantastic. But when you do, obviously, stray outside the norm and you pick one of these other ones, then it changes it quite drastically. It looks either better or worse. You can pick these demonic ones. You can pick some of the other colors that wouldn't usually be standard choices. Uh, you can do you. And then heterochromia, that explains itself. You can pick one color one side, one color the other side. It's cool. It's nice. Makeup. The makeup is always nice to look at. Always exciting because of how fabulous it is. Quite cool. It can be sort of natural. It can be sort of, you know, just a nice little accent or extra. Or you can go, you know, overboard with it and you can make something really cool. Uh, I'm going to go through these very quickly because I feel like I'm spending too much time on the makeup. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Uh, what you can do is you can put the metallic tint on and the glossy tint and then it looks like this. And then just know that on every one of these colors it looks different, you know. But I'm going to show it to you like this because I feel like the colors here are slightly better. Uh, they sort of show them nicely. Even though I feel like if you do that, it looks way nicer. But it's a different style entirely. So, yeah, lots of different colors here. These are the same on every single race. Uh, it's basically a, a standard across all of them. There you go. Lips. Same situation, where you have a bunch of colors here to choose from. And there are more natural looking ones, then there are more like radical ones, where they basically give you uh, something that's far out uh, and colorful. And then you get to select the metallic and the glossy tint as well. 
which just spices it up drastically. It's very nice. You can make some killer looks from this. You can also put the gloss and the metallic on without that. It's like sometimes you just want to put lip gloss on, you know, not a color. Hair. These guys need good hair. <laughs> I'm just putting that. All of them need good hair. You always need good hair. Let's do... I, I like ice cream. <laughs> I don't know why, but this reminds me of like those orange ice creams with the vanilla flavor thrown in. What I'm doing basically is I'm giving you a gray white highlight with the orange base. And I'm going to go through the hairstyles like this because it gives you a look at the highlight zones. You can see where you can highlight. As an example, this one's like all the way around the front and everything. Uh, this one is just on the front and not on the top. Each of them has their own different zone for highlights. Uh, a lot of them are very different. And it's worth knowing what's what. Like this, for instance, is just at the bottom, but not on the roots. And if you want to get color on the roots, you can use the grain. Uh, because that comes from the roots instead of from uh, the bottom or elsewhere. You can set the highlight opacity. Uh, so that's a choice that you can make. You can make like very dim highlights, which I feel is actually really nice because oftentimes you have a hair color that's not quite just one color, you know? My hair is not just straight brown. It's not just a brown. I have like darker colors in my hair. I have lighter colors in my hair. You know, if you spend a lot of time in the sun, you might have more blonde in your hair. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of interesting thing to look at. And it's kind of cool how you can make these subtle changes to the hairstyles and, and have it look natural, you know? But you can also have it look unnatural, like this case in point right here, you know? Which is fantastic. Uh, more options, better. Boom, boom. Thank you, Larian. Thank you, Larian. <laughs> Thank you for this style specifically. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. It's rude of me to keep thinking of Jude Law when I see that, but like, what can you say, man? I hope Jude Law doesn't watch this video. I love you, man. I love you. What a fantastic actor. Okay, there we go. Once again, uh, you get to choose sort of the intensity of this, uh, the colors that you get to choose from here, uh, as I have uh, sort of shown off briefly, uh, are varied, plentiful. Uh, and I, I get the feeling we might have some gray in there right now. No, we don't. Okay. They just have, like, some of the styles have a little bit of white there. It's just reflections, I think. But lots of nice colors here. Uh, like, you know, there are cool tones. There are warm tones. The oranges specifically I really like, and I like the reds a lot too. But, yeah, you can make some, like, really cool neon futuristic looks in this game. Uh, or you can go for more natural looks, you know. Uh, but then, as I mentioned, you can also add the gray in. The grain is, is, again, really well done. I like it. When you just slide it a little bit up, then it gives you a little bit of gray. You can go all the way and be completely gray with just, like, hints of your former color. And then you can change this to any color you like. So you can have uh, different accents in the hair uh, of varying degrees. It's cool. Lots of colors here, by the way. Lots of colors. Right. Facial hair. Because who doesn't want facial hair on their halfling? Good beards, good beards. Have to always zoom out when we get to this one because it's so big. The beard color, the beard grain and all that stuff is tied between uh, the hair and the beard. It's all together. So the color you pick here is the color you get. Uh, and then the grain is the grain you get. Same thing, same thing. There you go. Let us randomize. Oh, dude. Actually kind of nice, right? I think the halflings look kind of cool. I, I'm, I'm curious about the gnomes now. I'm really curious about the gnomes. We're going to do male first, then we'll jump onto gnomes, but I am curious. I, I can't help but be curious. Like, you can have ones that look more like humans, and then you can have ones that do straight just look like halflings. You know, they look smaller, they look different with bigger eyes, stuff like that. Uh, it is nice how the eye proportion changed. Like, the, the humans and, like, some of the other races have way smaller eyes. Here, you have much more real estate with the eyes. Perfect, perfect. We'll leave that one there. Now... We're going to jump on to the mail. I will just mention one more time that the customization options on uh, both the sub races are the same. Mail. <laughs> Look at these guys. They're slightly less ripped than the other characters. Like, most of the characters so far have been, like, really muscular. These are slightly less so. Let's get started. So, uh, your identity is how people refer to you in the game. Male, female, or uh, other. That'll be they, them. And then the voices. Let's go. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. 
There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. There you go. Yes, you can have female voices on your male character. So these ones, interestingly enough, I, I, I get the feeling and like I, I look at them and I think to myself, yeah, uh, this is actually quite unique because they have stubble built in. And this is one of my only complaints is that there's no stubble for the beards. Uh, and you will see that some of them have scars and stuff built in. And I feel like whoever made the gnome faces, they, they, they went a step further. It's like they made them slightly more unique looking. Uh, like none of the humans, none of the elves and whatever, they don't really have proper stubble scars and stuff built in. They, 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 they're more plain compared. Uh, so I was, I was very impressed by these when I first saw them. Now the skin tones, these are the suggested ones that they give you, uh, but you can go crazy with it and you can sort of do whatever. Like these are human skin tones, uh, much like you would expect on this. Uh, you got the warmer ones, the cooler ones, the lighter ones, the darker ones, but then you can go anywhere. You can make a, uh, you know, you can make a little Shrek-like monster, you can make a little goblin, a little uh, pink thing, a little smurf if you'd like. Uh, you can do whatever you like. You can do whatever. And actually, you can really make a smurf. Okay, you can go for blue and then white hair and then boom. <laughs> you, you got it, right? Uh, but yeah, so for the faces and the skin colors, you do you, man. There's a lot to do. I like, I like this. And I, I want to look what this looks like quickly. If I take this guy and I put extra... Oh my god, so many scars. Who would have thought that the halflings would be the most scarred characters in this character creator? I didn't think so. There you go. Very cool. Alright. Uh, maturity. You can make them look slightly older if you'd like. Freckles. Let's throw that in there. There you are. Not too intense on these guys. You can set the quantity and then the... Uh, Brightness and then Vitiligo, as always, looks kind of nice. Body art. We're going to go through this pretty quickly. It's also funny that these guys, they, they do look fine without the beard, right? Like, I think they look okay. Again, I think it's because of the extra detail that they have on the faces. That's probably what it ends up being, right? Because, like, with, with the others, it feels like there's something missing when they don't have the beard on. It just feels like there's something missing. But with these guys, it's not that. It's not the same. It's like the beard is adding to it, but it's not necessary to be there. Here we go. So the colors on here, lots of nice colors you can pick. And then uh, the intensity is just the opacity of the color. Uh, it's nice. It's good. It's good. The whites are nice and bright. There you go. And then as I mentioned, the opacity. Then piercings. Sorry, I am skipping through them quite quickly, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's like this video is, it's going to be long. It's going to be long, and I'd like to minimize the amount that I spend in here, at least a little bit. Decent selections for the piercings. Eyes, you can do heterochromia, you know, one color in the one, one color in the other. Uh, but if you'd like to keep it all the same, you can, and there are some decent looks here. I mentioned this on the female side, I'll mention it again. I like the real estate on the eyes. There's a lot of eye to look at here, and when you zoom out, their eyes are pretty big in their heads, you know? They look nice. They look really cool. You can see the color even when you zoom all the way out. You can pick from all the eye colors in the game, which will give you access to, like, the demonic ones and the black eyes and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, if you want to tell a story, then this will help you tell a story. Uh, an exciting one at that. Makeup. Let's pick some makeup quickly and make sure the intensity is maxed. Yes. There we go. Decent selection, decent choices. With the makeup, you can set the color, the metallic tint, and the glossy tint. Very cool, very impactful. Uh, it can make some really cool effects on your character's face. So if I take this color, for instance, I add metallic and glossy to it. Yeah, it's really nice. Really nice. But it obviously does distort the color a little bit. At least it makes it look a little different. So you don't always know what to expect with it, see? But yeah, look at these colors and imagine there's a lot of cool things you can do with them. And I really mean a lot of cool things. I think combinations of nice skin colors, hair colors, uh, face paints and uh, makeup will sort of give you like a lot of pleasure. You know, there's cool stuff you can do. There you are. Then the lips. 
They have some decent sized lips, these guys. You can once again set the metallic tint and the glossy tint. Uh, you can also set the the tints without the colors, which is kind of cool. So you can just have the, the glossy lips, so like, like you put lip gloss on, you know? And I'm sorry if I skip one or two colors here. It's just that uh, I've looked at these like uh, 30 times already. And I'm trying to minimize the time that I spend on them. While still giving you a fair look at everything that's available. So, hair. Uh, for this guy's hair, let's take a nice brown. Mm, brown 5. I'm thinking brown 5. Then for the highlights, we'll go for a gray. And I will show you the difference between highlights and grain in a moment. But for now, we're going to show this. You can see where the highlight zones are now. Uh, the white is the highlight. Just know you can change that color to anything under the sun. Well, maybe not under the sun. Uh, most colors are there. They have a decent selection. And uh, it looks kind of cool. The grain works differently. The grain comes from the roots up. I'll show you how that looks on a, uh, well at the end on a different style. I'll pick one. And it can be combined with the highlights. You can do like a really cool combination and most likely make something pretty fantastic. For those wondering, the hairstyles are shared between male and female. And uh, it's nice. It's cool having them shared. I think it's nice because there are uh, styles here that honestly could work quite easily on both. There you go. And if you want a more like substantial look at all of these, if you want to see these hairstyles again and again and again, I do look at them on every single race. So just know that if you'd like, you can just jump onto, as an example, the very first customization that I do, which I generally spend more time on. When I do this, the first time I customize a character, so in this case it would have been like the Wood Elves and the High Elves, uh, I, I sort of go hard on it, <laughs> and I look at everything in great detail, and then as I go through, I go a bit faster. So, that's about it. For the hair colors, we'll zoom in quickly and I'll show you what it looks like. There are some decent choices here. I like them. Lots and lots and lots. Some, like, grounded in reality, normal, you were born with this hair color colors, and then some brighter ones. You got, like, the fifth element orange here. I like it a lot. The reds are nice, too. The pinks are beautiful. These greens, the cyans, the aquamarines. It's wow. Yeah, it's wow. It's cool. It's cool. Let's go for the brown again. And then the highlights... As I mentioned, there's a bunch. <laughs> they have recommended ones. Uh, you can set the intensity. It just sets the opacity. Uh, it doesn't grow from one side to the other. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, you know, the highlights are different on every hairstyle, but they are just there. And then you can set how bright or how dark they are. But when you go for gray in, then it grows from the roots out and your character it sort of grays naturally. For the gray in, you can pick any color you like. Uh, there's a bunch. You can make your character gray orange which is not gray in, in, instead it's orange in, or yellow, or green, or any other color. And it looks kind of bad sometimes, but it can also look kind of good. You can make something cool there. Beards, they share colors with the hair. So if you change the beard color here, it will change your hair color as well. You can't keep them separate. Uh, they're cool. They look good. These guys look good with beards. It makes them look more dwarvish, which is not a bad thing. It's always good to look dwarvish. I'll tell you that straight up. There we go. Beards colors, as I mentioned, same as the hair colors. You can choose anything over there. And then the grain is the same as well. You have to set your grain up in the hair colors for that to work. Here we go. Let us have a look at the randomize. Oh, God. <laughs> Dude, the faces are a mess. In a good way. In a good way. There's just so much going on. They have the busiest faces by far. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. That's it. That's what we're looking for. Rainbow hair, dude. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Let's go back. We are moving on to Gnome. Oh, and then comes Dragonborn. Dude, I'm so excited. So the Gnomes, I, I really like the idea of them. 
they have sub races. I'll show you what they look like right now. But I like the idea of the bigger head and the smaller body versus the halfling, which is sort of, uh, it's sort of uniform all the way through. I like it a lot. So the body types, there's female. They look really cool. Uh, and then the male. Gnomes, known to have uh, brighter hair, I think. Small, clever, and energetic gnomes use their long lives to explore Faerun's brighter corners and darkest depths. They have slower movement speed, 7.5, uh, down from the 9. And then Gnome Cunning, you have an advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Then your sub-races, Rock Gnome. Most commonly seen gnomes on Faerun's surface, Rock Gnomes are named as such for their hardiness and affinity for metal. They can see in the dark, with dark vision. And then Artifice's Law. Add twice your proficiency bonus to history checks. Forest Gnome, that's a cool little beetle picture. These guys, even smaller than their cousins and twice as reclusive. Forest Gnomes are a rare sight in Faerun. They master magic and craftsmanship in their distant idyllic groves. They are not actually physically smaller, you will notice. They're just lore-wise smaller. They start with a spell, which is speak with animals. It's, uh, I don't know if it's a cantrip or a spell, but I think you can only use it once. It says there until a long rest. Uh, gain the ability to comprehend and communicate with beasts. It's it's awesome. That's like it's a really it's a good spell to have in Baldur's Gate. I remember that from Divinity Original Sin. And then they have dark vision as well, uh, twelve meters. Then deep gnomes. You can see what that is. More guarded than their surface cousins, deep gnomes survive in the underdark with dark vision and skillful stealth. They have superior dark vision. That's double. And they have stone camouflage, advantage on stealth checks. And they look like drow. Yeah, it's like gnomish drow. Now, before we jump into the customization, I'm just going to tell you that they are the same. So you will notice the faces are the same. All three of these have the same customization options. The only thing is that when you jump in on deep gnome, you will notice that you have different recommended skin tones. That's it. That's the difference. So let's customize the females. Let's look what we have here. Identity, male, female, non-binary, and other. You can select that. I look a bit like Nicole Kidman, don't I? <laughs> that's cool. Uh, that's just how people refer to you in the world. Let's listen to the voices. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. It really does look like Nicole Kidman. So those are the voices. Uh, you can use male and female as you wish. Let's look at the faces. Oh, they have unique styles, don't they? Pretty unique styles. I dig it. I, I think that gnomes are... They're, they're attractive. In their own gnomish way. Very cool. Big noses. Big lips. Holy crap, those are really big lips. Wow. Okay. Uh, skin tones, as I mentioned, the drow gnomes. <laughs> I'm going to call them the drow gnomes. Have drow skin tones to pick from on their suggested skin tones here. And if you do randomize, then it will randomize with those as well. Whereas on these guys... If you randomize, then it picks from the skin tones that are here. Uh, it doesn't pick from the drowish ones that would be these extras here. So you can select all the skin tones in the whole game if you'd like. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones here. But the recommended ones are these. And these are the ones that will pop up when you click on randomize appearance. There you go. Scarring. Let's have a look. Ugh, don't want to scar this pretty face, do we? Yes, we do. Yes, we always do. Scars tell a story, man. I'll take scars any day of the week. Maturity. Make Nicole Kidman look a little older. Freckles. You can set the quantity and then you can set the intensity, which is the opacity on them. And then uh, vitiligo. Yeah, that looks better or worse if you change your skin tone. You can be a, you know, a, a, a drow style color and then you can have the vitiligo on there. It remains the same color. It's more impactful that way. Body art. Let's go through the tattoos quickly. I'm going through them very fast. I mention this every time I come through here because we do it every time. <laughs> I, I go through them on every single race. Uh, I try to give you a fair look at them, a good look at them, but I do go through them on every race, so it takes a, a bit of time. So if you want to look at it, slow the video down, uh, or I want to say maybe just pause on the one that you want to see. But yeah, I make this with the idea that you guys are going to use the timestamps. Uh, instead of watch the whole thing because if you do watch the whole thing good lord uh, well done well done 
I have been told a lot of people like to watch my character creation videos like at work or whatever in the background uh, because they say it's like nice background noise and then they also say sometimes they watch it when they're going to bed. <laughs> so they put it on their TV and then they just listen to me yak yak about characters. Uh, it's cool. I thank you guys for that. Then you can set the intensity of the tattoo as well. Piercings. Uh, let me change the hair just to something that's out of the way. Jeez, it looks really nice. Like the detail on these faces is kind of insane. Kind of insane. There you go. And then eyes. You can do the basic colors. Or you can do heterochromia. Let me just untick this. There you go. Once again, like the halflings, I feel like the gnomes have nice eye real estate. Pretty big, you know. Very cool. You can see them from really far away. <laughs> they got that deer in the headlights look sometimes. Uh, and then heterochromia, as I mentioned, you can do one one color, one the other color. Uh, but just keep in mind, you can click on all eye colors. Then it gives you everything Along with the suggested ones, you can do the demonic eyes, as you can see over there, the black eyes. You can do anything you want. Uh, it is, I guess it's a little bit of a pity that you can't do, uh, let's say, like, custom irises and custom styles in there. But I think it makes more sense this way. You know, that, that, would, that would honestly complicate things a little more than I think most people would want. Too much. It's too much. There is such a thing as too much. Yes, there is such a thing as too much. Uh, when you needlessly add options to a character creation system, then uh, it ends up making things less fun instead of more. So I'll just take this one and I'll show you quickly what the colors look like. You can set the color here, then you can set the color to be metallic tinted and glossy tinted, and you can do both at the same time, and that basically just makes it look awesome. Straight up sick. Uh, it changes the color obviously so like keep in mind if I'm going through these colors here uh, I'm just going very briefly through them But if I'm going through these colors, they will look different as an example If we go for like the hot pink and we make it metallic and glossy it ends up looking a little darker But also a little cooler, you know, I mean cooler to me. It might not be cooler to you These are some of the colors you can choose you can make nice golds with this uh, you can make nice silvers with the grays It's it's really fantastic. I love the system same thing for the lips. Exact same thing for the lips. So you get to pick a really nice bright color here. It's impactful. It's vibrant. It's it's full of life. Uh, and then you get to make it metallic and glossy. And that just takes it uh, a step above. Plus ultra. You know? There's a lot of cool colors here. And all of them will look different when you throw that on and that on. There you go. That's it. I know, I'm a bit of a coward taking this off every time, but it distracts from the hair, you know? <laughs> We're moving on to the hair, and it's distracting. Let's keep Ginger on, and then let's go for a highlight of black. All right, highlight intensity is maxed. We're going to go through the hairstyles quickly. You can see the black uh, shades. Those are the highlight zones that you're going to be able to work with. Some hair has very little in terms of highlights. Some has a lot, like this one. And, yeah, you, you can change those colors to your heart's content. You can do whatever you want. These styles look very no missioned and half y to me. I like it a lot. There's just so many cool... Oh, man. You know, again, the hair. Uh, it's like I cannot get enough of it. The hair in this game is so nice. And, you know, from like this view, uh, it, it looks slightly less impressive. But when you like zoom in and you look at the details up close and personal, you just... You get in... Oh, man. You get in so much. It's so good. So, again... Oh, this... What the heck? Why does this look like it's a unique style? Is that a unique style? I feel like... The, I feel like I've not seen this. Or at least this comes in much tighter around the, the face than on the other races. Dude, if there's a unique style, then hey, wow. Vindicated. There's a reason for me to do this. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's unique style. Okay, I'll look at it now. We're gonna go into the orcs. Maybe the orcs have that style as well. I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make like a point of looking at it. It just it caught me off guard. I don't feel like I've seen it before. It's weird. Oh, I love these ones. Very cool. The braids are always nice. The balding styles are always necessary. Yeah, this Nicole Kidman face, man. I really like it. They've even got the cornrows. 
Everything's here. The big frizzy styles. Good luck brushing that here. Okay, so let's take one of these, just because, for fun. The hair colors, I will show you what they look like without the highlights on quickly. There are a lot of really nice colors to choose from here. I don't know if it's just me that thinks so, but I do feel like the gnomes and the halflings and stuff like that, they are... I think it's probably because of World of Warcraft. I blame World of Warcraft for this, but they are the ones that will use these bright hair colors uh, more often. Uh, and they are the ones that look more natural with these bright hair colors, you know? With the hot pinks uh, and the crazy purples and stuff like that. Again, it might just be a me thing. But yeah, then you get to put the highlights on. As I mentioned, each of them has their own highlight zone. There are lots of colors here. I won't go through each and every single one of them. Uh, the highlights, they have specific zones that they're in, right? So you can see the highlights at the top there. So if I turn this off, I'll show you how the gray in works. The gray in is from the roots. It comes out. You can see it sort of spreads out from the roots. And you can change the gray color to anything you like. You can make it gray in a darker color, a lighter color, a red uh, you do what you want, and it's a nice way to just accentuate a little bit, or to actually just gray a little bit, you know? Uh, so there you go. That's how it works. I'm showing you some, like, you know, proper gnomish gray in here. <laughs> there you go. There you are. Uh, I like it. I like the hairstyles. Beards. They are the same color as your hair. They follow the same rules. And yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see that the gnomes can have beards. That's cool. I like it. I like it. And, I mean, the beards are great. They are fantastic. The way the beards work is, once again, they share hair colors. So you pick the hair color here, then you get the same. Uh, same as the hair colors that we looked at already. And then the gray in is also much the same. And it's, it's a good effect. It's really nice. Right? Really nice. And that's the end of it. Let's randomize. Now, keep in mind, once again, the randomization... <laughs> oh, my God. The randomization is... Uh, it's going to be using the defaults that they give you. So like the serving suggestions. So if you randomize on these guys, you might not get too many of the draw colors. But if you randomize on the draw, dude, some of these lips are so massive. I really like it. The nose and the lips, there's so much detail on it as well. But yeah, so if you, if you randomize here, you won't be getting the draw skin tones. And I'll show you what I mean quickly as I go out. Uh, so if you pick the deep gnomes and you edit the appearance here, then you have these tones over here that will also be in the randomized pool. So keep that in mind. That's the only difference. All the other stuff's the same. That's the only difference right there. Now, let's move on to the males. We'll start with Rock Gnome again. It's all the same, really. Uh, it's interesting that they start with a beard. Huh. Again, not often that they do. So your first choices here are the identity and the voice. The identity is just how people refer to you in the game. You can be male, female, or non-binary and other. And then the voices. Health. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. There you go bunch of really cool voices i want to see so am i getting like edward norton vibes from this guy <laughs> i always feel like every one of these faces is sort of modeled after someone famous it's not the case it's not but it, it sort of feels like it to me i don't know no it's not edward norton that's someone else entirely uh i, I can't say you guys might be able to help me out on this okay so faces they look good yeah uh, not as detailed or as busy as the uh, halfling ones, but they're cool. Skin tones, these are the suggested ones for specifically these guys. If you take the deep gnomes, then you will get the extra skin tones on there, and I'll show you what those look like in just a moment. Uh, basically, that's the only difference between them in terms of customization. I'll show you now. So if we go to all skin colors, they get these ones extra, which make you basically look like a little drow. Okay, so that's how it works. But you can pick anything you like. Uh, you can go crazy with it. So, just know, the world is your oyster. Scarring. 
For whatever reason, these faces all look like Bruce Willis down here. <laughs> I don't know why. I love Bruce Willis, man. Okay. Uh, maturity. Not so impactful on these guys. Freckles, let's see. Ah, that's quite nice. Okay, so that's the that's the opacity and that's the amount. You can have like a few freckles or just like uh, all of them. And then vitiligo. There you go. Body art. These are the tattoos. We're going to go through these pretty quick. I'm just going to take the facial hair off for this. Uh, because it's easier to see. This guy's got quite a chin. It's impressive. Pretty cool styles here. I mean, like, I've, I've, I've gone over these, like, 20 times already now. And I still think that... Uh, I sit here, I still think that there's, there's like potential for almost all of them. I sit here thinking about like what I could do, how I can make it work, uh, what can look good, what's going to look bad, like what, what you know, it, it, it's, it's an endless thing. And I have, honestly, after even going through every single one of these races so far, I still have like really got no clue as to what I'm going to do for my own character. Because no, I've still not made my own character. <laughs> I, I still do not have a character made. Lots of nice colors here. I like how bright they are. It's it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. There you go. Piercings. I wanted to say the piercings might be a little bigger on these guys because their faces are so much bigger. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They might be. Yeah. I mean, maybe they are. Maybe they are. But there are some nice piercings. Uh, you can just slow the video down if you want to look at them uh, in great detail. Uh, then we're going to move on to the eyes. Eye colors. Uh, there's just the standard selection and then you can click on all eye colors and you can get sort of a better look at them uh, I mentioned this often but the Like the pupil and the and the style of of like the uh, interior of the eye is Quite different for each race uh, and and some of them have more unique and interesting ones like the tieflings uh, And I'm, I'm assuming the dragons will also have interesting ones, uh, but you can pick some of those here like the demonic ones uh, and you can sort of mix around whatever you like. You can go for heterochromia with like a blue eye in the one and like a, a red demonic eye in the other one, you know, uh, like this. You can do anything. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Makeup. Let's have a look. Let's just make sure the intensity is maxed. Some nice makeup here. It would be kind of cool if you could like sit down at a at a mirror in the game and just change some of these things up. Uh, it would be fun, I think, if you if you could change your makeup regularly or your face paint or stuff like that, uh, or your hair color and all that stuff. It it would be nice. I do not know. Like I'd love to hear if any of you guys know, uh, but that would be cool. Now, as I mentioned, uh, there's a lot of different choices here for colors. I've mentioned this on every single one that I've gone through, but you can also metallic tint and glossy tint it, which makes it look awesome fantastic uh it's it's really cool because you get like really nice sort of shiny looks you can make like nice silvers and golds with this uh, obviously it changes the color a little bit so you must just keep in mind that the color will look different uh, and yeah use your imagination you can probably come up with some really cool things where this is concerned again i i believe that this is the key to making like a really outstanding looking character one that looks just so much better than all the others but it's probably going to be the hardest thing to use so good luck to you guys I hope you figure it out <laughs> because I probably won't. Uh, here we go. Lips. They have nice big lips. Uh, as we've seen, big lips, big mouth, uh, big nose. It's nice. There are decent colors here. Uh, some good stuff to choose from. I like it. As with the others, you can put the metallic tint on and the glossy tint on and then it looks completely different. It's nice. Very nice. Next up. Hair. Zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go for a... Let's go for like a green. Okay? I just, I'm just trying to mix things up. Try being different. And then I'll go for like a grey-white on the highlight. And I'll turn the highlight up so you can see. The way I do this is I just show you where the highlight zones are. And I skip through the hairstyles quite quickly so you can see what's what. It's kind of cool.
yeah i mean like every now and then you miss like maybe a ponytail going down the back or something but i think if you've watched or looked at a couple of the customizations you'll probably get a feel for like uh you know enough of it to know which styles you like and which ones you don't i also feel like the face shape and the head shape and stuff like that plays and leans quite heavily into like what works and what doesn't like obviously on the gnomes you've got a bigger head you've got more real estate to work with here certain styles end up looking better certain styles end up looking worse uh, you know if you have something that covers the forehead a little bit i think it looks it ends up looking quite nice if you have something that shows the forehead more uh, and has less hair there then uh, it ends up looking a little extreme you know I don't know. It might just be me that thinks that way, but it, it is cool, basically having all these different options. They have some like they have like a slightly flatter area on top of their head as well. Like the top of their head is sort of bulbous in a way. It's their big brains, you know. Now, as we get to the end of the hairstyles here, I'm going to say to you that you must just keep in mind you can change the highlight color, you can change the highlight amount. That's the opacity of the highlight. Uh, and you can also obviously change the gray in, which we'll get to in just a moment. So if I pick, uh, let's say, this style. If I take the highlight away, you can see you can change the opacity of it. And then you can pick any color you like here. Lots of different colors here. Uh, but first, let me show you the hair colors. I just picked a green so that you could sort of see, you know. Starting to look a little bit like uh, Elrond or Legolas here. <laughs> Funny how they can actually end up looking quite elvish, right? This with the big ears and, and the nose and stuff like that. But yeah, lots of nice colors, as always. A fantastic selection. I love the oranges and the pinks and the greens and the black. I love all the colors, man. It's really nice. Lots of nice colors, yeah. And then you can also mix them up by throwing in the different highlights and the different grain. So if I take, like, as an example, one of the yellows here, and then I take a highlight that's sort of black, you can throw it in and you can have those highlights in there. But you can also do grain. Uh, and you can do grain of any color. The grain starts at the roots and it goes out. You can gray in red. You can gray in like a black color. You can gray in whatever you like. Uh, but you can also gray in gray, which is sort of nice. There you go. Facial hair. Uh, not a huge amount of like, beards here, but they are very, very nice. So prob probably the best beards I've seen in a game. And they are locked into your hair color choices entirely. Uh, so all the same. Basically what you choose here is what what shows so your grain your hair color everything it's all locked together there you go that's it you can sort of do what works for you and make it look the way you want it to look again a little disappointed that there's no stubble but it's fine it's randomized now i mentioned that when you randomize in on these guys instead of on the deep gnomes you do not get the drow skin tones uh, but that's again something that you can easily just rectify yourself. You can go and randomize on them uh, if you want those draw skin tones in the pool of randomization options. But that's the only difference in customization. That is literally the only difference. Eh. These, I was going to say it's less exciting, but then it, it throws something like that at me. It's not super exciting, like some of the other randomizers felt better. Uh, but let me show you what I meant. So if I go into Deep Gnome and I go to Edit, then your voice options, here, uh, your skin color options here will be slightly more varied. And if I randomize here, I will have the option of getting these ones in the randomization pool, like this. But that's it. We are done with the gnomes. Ooh, now we're moving on to Dragonborn. Here we go. Dragonborn, a proud race that values clan and skills above all else. Once enslaved by dragons, they strive to be self-sufficient, not wanting to be beholden to anyone, not even the gods. Oh, this is sick. This looks fantastic. So, they have a lot of sub-races. Race features that can move nine per turn. The sub-races, my god. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Uh, the body types, that's the female right there. They, they, they look pretty cool. They look pretty cool. And then the males are a little bit bigger more burly looking uh let's have a peek so black despite no ancestral links to the mighty creatures these dragonborn share the charcoal coloration and a fizzling acrid breath of black dragons the black ones get acid breath and their sub race feature is uh the blood of ancient dragons flows through your veins you're resistant to acid damage and you're going to see a theme as we go through here not just in how they look uh, but 
in what they get as abilities. And I'm going to mention this as I go through here as well. When it comes to the customization, they all have everything. There's nothing unique to one of these. They all just have serving suggestions, as I keep mentioning. They have curated choices that make sense for them. So the black ones are black. The blue ones, yeah, you guessed it. They're blue. <laughs> uh, so despite no ancestral links to the mighty creatures, these guys share deep sapphire scales and charged crackling breath of blue dragons. They have lightning breath and uh, they are resistant to lightning damage. I'm not going to read this every time. It's the same for each of them. Uh, basically, these guys have the uh, fire breath, the brass ones, along with fire resistance. The bronze ones have lightning breath, along with lightning resistance, which is the same as these. So that's actually kind of interesting to me. Hmm. But it's again for lore reasons. They have them all here. The copper ones are acid breath once again, same as these guys. Gold ones, fire breath, fire resistance. Green is uh, poison breath and poison resistance. Red, fire, once again, fire resistance. The silver dragons have frost breath and frost resistance. And the white ones also frost and frost. And as you've seen, uh, they all look different. You've now seen them on female. Let's go through them on male quickly. I want to mention this again. I'm going to mention this a lot, okay? They have the same options. So as I jump into the customization here now, which I'm going to be doing in a brief moment, you will notice that when we go in, they give you a list of skin colors, okay? And these are the ones that they recommend for the black dragons, right? But you don't need to use these ones. You can do anything you like, okay? So... Uh, if you come in here, I think you can do anything you like. Let's just have a look quickly. Where is the color? Yeah, there you go. So you can pick any of them, and it's all the ones that's on all the other sub races. So you can pick the sub race you want for the breath you want, but then you can change your color to anything you like. So let's get started. You can choose your identity, male or female, or non binary and other. That's just how people refer to you, and then you can do the voices. Let's do the voices together. It's opened. I wonder what's back there more of those wretched things there's magic keeping this chest sealed i can feel its aura where to next hmm. what was that let's hope the locals are friendly hells something just woke up down here be wary this place is trapped there you go male and female voices on your female character you can pick what you want faces this is something completely different. <laughs> I'm so excited for this because uh, we just went through a bunch of humanoid style races. Uh, we have one more coming up in the Orcs, uh, but this is something completely different. Look at the detail on these, by the way. The scales, stuff like that, it is, it is beyond anything I've ever seen in the character creation uh, system. Look at the eyes, they're burning around the edges. It looks so sick. So the faces, a pretty impactful choice. Like this is probably the most impactful choice that you can make, uh, apart from the horns maybe. But it's, it's like a completely different look and feel. I will mention that the style that you see here, uh, it changes a little bit, but you do have all the same choices. As you can see, when I switch through them, you have the same choices. It just defaults to certain ones above others uh, on the crest. So we're going to pick the, the standard face over here, uh, and then I will show you what I mean. As you go through the crests here, you will find the crests that are on the other ones as well. Dude, there's so much detail here. It is kind of insane. This is sick. Wow. So the crest is basically your hair. Uh, it's your hair and your horns combined. Oh my god, you can be a, like a slick head. <laughs> you can have the slightly more um, swamp dragon type look going. Uh, and that's amazing. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's it. Let's go for the first one. And then we'll look at the chins. Chin is down here at the bottom. I, I, I'm sure you guys know where the chin is. I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see. A little fluff on the chin. Very cool. It's just the extra, basically, on the chin. Just keep that in mind. It's like, you know, parts of the chin uh, will be decided by, by each different thing that you pick here. Uh, I think those two seem to be locked in place. It's like you don't seem to get a different one there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, the faces. Okay. So the chin is basically decided by your face and your chin choice. Okay, uh, jaws. Let's zoom in for this. That's that's the decoration around the jaw. 
Oh, that's those as well. Okay, there you go. It's the jaw set in. Right. Oof, that's really cool. Those spikes are so sick. Wow. Oh, look at this. Oh, dude. This is so nice. They've done such cool stuff with this. You know, it kind of puts to shame the uh, dragon customization in World of Warcraft. <laughs> I mean, I like that race. Don't get me wrong. I like the race that they have in World of Warcraft. But, like, it's just this puts it to shame with the amount of spikes and stuff you can have on here. Uh, let's pick a bunch of spikes everywhere. Let's pick the spikiest boy we can make. Uh, this one. There you go. Spikes and horns. Horns and spikes, dude. There you go. Now let's look at the colors quickly. So I mentioned this, but I'll mention it again. These are the recommended colors for the black dragons. But you can look at all of them in one customization. In other words, here's the, uh, the blue ones for... Yeah, you guessed it. Oh, that is so cool. Dude, definitely worth going through all the colors. You guessed it, for the blue dragons. Uh, you can see the scales change as well as you go through the different colors here. The the way they look changes quite drastically. That's really cool. Wow. Oh, look at that. Really nice. Some of them are more shiny than others. Definitely have to go through all these options, dude. This is really cool. Wow, look at that. Huh. I wonder if that's to do with the makeup. We'll, we'll see when we get there. We'll see when we get there. I'm just looking at the skin colors for now. Very cool. Some of these are just fantastic. And again, you can see sort of we're going through the copper. Now we're going through the gold, which is like, wow. <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, and then there was silver, which is also amazing. It's got this really cool metallic look. The scales are so well done. Then you can be a pink dragon, because why the heck not? You can make your own dragon flight up. Yeah. It's, I love how the colors are changing. It's got like a chromatic appearance, you know? Oh, the white is so cool. Wow. Like proper ivory. Whoa, look at the red there. That's nice. Oh, that's really nice too. Dude, I'm going to struggle. I'm going to struggle not playing these dragons. If I don't... Dude, wow. Oh, look at that. Make a banana dragon. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go for the black quickly. Just... Or, or the white. It's like... Or the silver or something. I don't know. Let's go for black. It's fine. Uh, then we'll... Then we'll carry on. And we'll move on to body art. Just looks like you have piercings. Okay, it's on the eyes there. Uh, it's a little difficult to see on this skin color. So I'll just go for the white one, and you can see them better. It looks like it's the human piercings that they just... Those on you. These on you, yeah. That they just sort of moved in here and, and sort of attached randomly to the dragon's face. <laughs> uh, well, more spikes. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. No one's going to complain about that. Yeah, it, it is all the same ones. Okay. Eyes. Dude. Wow. They look so nice. I wish I could zoom in even further. Eh? Yeah, I wish I could. They look so good. Wow. Yeah, with the like little the little flames inside there. It's the same as the tiefling ones, by the way. It's not the same. This is like a dragon eyeball. Uh, the tiefling one isn't. It's more of a demon one. But they got the same style of effect. And they seem to have pretty much everything here. Then you can do all the eye colors if you want. I, I don't recommend it. It's like you can do these, but they're definitely not made for the dragons. So the ones that I looked at first, those are the ones you should probably go for. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take the red ones because it looks really, like, intimidating. Uh, makeup. Oh, okay. I did not expect that. And it looks like we're going to be able to set the tint up and everything. Let's just make it more intense. Oh, it's the most intense it can be. Okay. So it's, it's pretty subtle. Uh, and it does seem to be somewhat the same as the uh, humanoid races ones. Like, it's somewhat the same as the other ones that we've seen. But let's, let's just check anyway. Opacity. And the colors. They don't translate so well. Uh, I'm going to, like, come out and say that. It's like you can jump through these here and you can see they... The, you know, the brighter colors do seem to do quite well. But, like, the the... The darker ones, they all look the same. They sort of smudge together a little bit. However, obviously, if you take, like, a black dragon... And when we randomize, you'll see it. If you take, like, a black dragon and you throw some lighter makeup on, uh, that might look nice. And apparently, you can change the lips. Let's have a look. 
<laughs> yeah, because why wouldn't the dragon put lipstick on, right? Okay, 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 okay. Cool, 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 cool. There it is. Right on, okay. You don't get to do the, the tints like you do on the other classes. Then our final option is the tail. Only four choices. You get to take the tail off completely. You get to have this one. More spiky one. And an even fatter, spikier one. Very cool. Very, very cool. Now we're going to randomize. Uh, because, yes. <laughs> so, we are randomizing on Black Dragon right now. And I wanted to mention this quickly, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to show you. This is basically just giving you a look at the different styles you can get on this, all right, on the dragon type. But, like, if I jump into a different one now, and I'm going to do it because that's part of the customization. If I drop, jump onto the white one, and then we randomize, then you will notice it's using the white tones. And the white ones are really cool, by the way. There's a lot of, like, cool extras and accents and stuff that you can see. Uh, and, and the same is for all of them. So if I go into these guys and I randomize on them, same thing there, same for red. All the same options on all the dragons. You just, when you randomize, only have that set in the pool. You can also see that uh, there are there are different, like, amounts of, of color on the body here as we randomize. Look at this. The scales have, like, these different highlights on them. So, like, instead of having hair highlights, the dragons seem to have scale highlights. Which is really cool. You don't get to pick that directly. You obviously get to pick the color, but you don't get to pick that directly. It's really nice. Like these are these are these are cool looking. They did a really good job with these. Now, we're gonna jump over to the male customization. Let's go for yeah. I mean, let's go for silver. It's fine. It doesn't really matter which one we go for. Uh, as I keep mentioning to you guys, the customization options are the same on both. Uh, you get to basically choose any skin color you like if you just basically select the all skin colors option the curated list is always just selected based on the color of dragon you pick so first up identity male female non-binary or other that's how people refer to you then you have the voice options let's listen to them it's opened i wonder what's back there more of those wretched things there's magic keeping this chest sealed i can feel its aura where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Health. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. A More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. There you go. Faces. They are slightly different than the female ones. Uh, I feel like the male faces, they saw, it's like maybe a little bit more brutish. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to really describe it. Uh, now, keep in mind, we're on the silver one, but we can change the, the color to anything if we like. Let's look at the different crests here. Uh, the faces all have the same crest choices, so don't worry. You're not like missing out by taking a certain face. This is sick. I actually kind of like the idea of the smooth head, but the smooth head looks way smoother and slight. I'm not going to say better, but like somewhat different when you choose a, a lighter color. Okay, let's take this for now. And then let's look at the chin. Uh, just keep in mind that the chin, we're choosing that the jaws. These, these horns here are from the jaws. We'll get to that afterwards. This is just the straight bit at the front here. Okay, jaws. Let's take the chin off so we can see exactly what the jaws are doing. This is all the way around here. You'll see all the different like plates and, and horns and stuff are changing. Sharper ones. It's nice how they have like this this combo of like spikes and horns and like chitin that looks sort of like rock. You have like an interesting combo where that's concerned, where they have a bit of everything. So let's take yeah, this one is fine. Let's just put one of those on. Uh, and then let's check the colors out so as i mentioned these are the silver colors 
but you are not limited in any way shape or form you can click on all skin colors then you can go through the black ones the blue ones and i will go through all of them for you guys quickly just because i feel like it's worth it on the dragons and because there are lots of different combos it's like you can see there's these like blue and pink combos here i know there's like red and white ones that look really cool uh, there's there's yellow and blue ones that look really nice they have combos and it's like you picking your your hair and your highlights on the other races it's the same situation you can do some really cool stuff with this although you have less direct control over it you can still sort of pick something that's quite impactful uh, i should probably zoom out though and show you just had it changes the, the the entire body as i go through it you can you can't see it that's actually why i've been doing all the customization on barbarian because they have this outfit on that shows you a little bit of the skin again if you guys want to see like all the skin and you want to see the dragon genitalia then you're going to want to Click on the uh, link in the description that takes you to the not safe for work video. Nice colors. Lots of colors. And you can see that these aren't just like after thoughts. These aren't just like tossed in here to have more. They customized each of these quite significantly. Like you can, you can tell that each of these was done painstakingly. <clears throat> they spent a lot of effort on this race. That's for sure. I like these these yellowy, goldy, bronzy, ready. They look really nice. Okay. Uh, we'll just go with one of the default ones again. And we'll continue from there. Body art. It's basically just your piercings. We, oh God. It's a really bad choice to look at piercings. I, I realize that now. Uh, let's go with the, the white one again. So you can see the piercings. Then I'll switch back afterwards. There you go. It is all the same piercings that we had uh, on the other races, but they put them in different spots. It's good use of the assets, you know. I find it must be really difficult to pierce the skin of a dragon, right? Yeah, 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 it's not a dragon dragon, but like it must still be quite difficult. Okay, let's switch back the skin color quickly. Eyes. You can do heterochromia, one in the one, one in the other, uh, or you can just go for the same. The default choices that they have here by far look the best on the dragons. I've now seen that from the female side of the customization. Uh, but, you know, you can choose any color still. Once I tick that, you'll see. And, man, the detail in the eyes is awesome. I, I like, kind of wish that the eyes were a little bit bigger or that I could zoom in further just to have a look at how that flame is burning in there. But you have a lot of cool choices here. And you can pick the non-default, non-standard ones as well. Uh, they just end up looking, in my opinion, a little less uh, satisfying. Like some of them, look, you can see it's sort of the, the, the flames are gone and it just looks like a regular old eye. Uh, I would say pick the dragon ones. They look better. Right. And then again, heterochromia, you can do sort of one, 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 the other. Right. Makeup. It is not super... Uh, boom 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 you know there's like a little bit of makeup you can see it uh, but it's not the most impactful thing uh, you can see some stuff's changing over here which i'm not sure about honestly uh, but i i feel like you can probably just accentuate a little bit with this and it'll it'll be fine you know it'll be fine you get to choose the colors and the intensity here uh, i i do feel like this however like apart from like the skin color this is a bit of an afterthought like it's it's nice and I do believe that when we randomize and we look at like the darker skin tones, uh, you will probably see some nice contrasty makeup. But for the most part, the makeup here, it's sort of, it's just a little extra, you know. And you can make it work, I'm sure. But yeah. Then the lips. <laughs> I feel like the lips, it's some clown nonsense. Okay, I don't know why there's lipstick on the dra dragons. It's like, you know, <laughs> it looks a little weird. That's just my opinion. Maybe you like it. Maybe you can make something work with it. Uh, you probably can. I, I, I bet that there are people out there who can make some really cool looks with, with this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I don't think I'll make this work. Okay. Finally, we have the tail. We zoom out for that. You can have no tail. Uh, skinny, sharp tail. Spiky tail. Uh, fatter tail. It's cool. It's cool. Now for randomize. We are randomizing the silver dragon right now. Right? So as I randomize here, just keep in mind, that's what we're looking at. Uh, you see in different styles on the face. Very cool. Very cool styles. But we are just looking at the silver option. So if we go back and we click on, as an example, the blue ones, 
and then we randomize there. Then we're looking at the blue randomize. All the options are available on all of them. Everything's there. However, however, you're going to want to like, you know, if you want to add here, if you want to be a green dragon, it might make sense to pick the green skin tones or whatever. And when you customize, you have to click that untick all or whatever. And like, you have to show all the colors and you can pick what you want there. It's cool. It's fine. Uh, again, you want to do it yourself. Jump in, have a look, pick what you like. Hopefully, be satisfied with your character. There you go. Dude. Damn Dragonborn, huh? Really, really cool. Really cool. Finally, we have the half orcs. We don't actually have full orcs here. They look quite cool. They look quite different. We're going to start with the uh, female customization, but I'll first just read you the description here. Creatures of intense emotion, half orcs are more inclined to act than contemplate, whether the rage burning in their bodies compels them to fight, or the love filling their hearts inspires acts of incredible kindness. Hmm, that's a good description. Nine meters per turn, that's standard base movement speed. They have dark vision up to 12 meters, also standard. Relentless endurance, if you reach zero hit points, you regain one hit point instead of becoming downed. Savage attacks. When you land a critical hit with a melee weapon, your damage dice are tripled instead of doubled. That's <laughs> that's insane. That's really, really good. Uh, cool. Okay, so that's half orc. We're going to jump into the female customization now, and then we'll do the male after that. I've actually never looked at these. Identity. You can pick to be male, female, or other. That's just how people refer to you, and let's listen to the voices. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can there you feel go. Its aura. Those are the voices. The heads. The females are quite square jawed <laughs> it's like they they do have sort of you know it's cool it's cool uh you are picking your fangs uh, your tusks i guess they're called with your face basically you'll see that some of them are uh, larger some are smaller it's cool they look fantastic i'll take this one because i really like the the fang sticking out there the skin tones that you get to select between uh, they are orcish suggestions that's these ones that we have right here and then you can also select all skin tones and you can sort of go for anything you like. I, I feel like these first few rows, those are the orcish suggestions. And when you get down here, this is sort of something else. Um, I mean, I realize it says here orcish gray. Uh, but like when you get further down, yeah, here we go. This is the neutral ones. So like you now, when you get down here, you're moving on to like the human tones. And, and I'll be honest with you, they're half orcs, so they could have these skin tones. But it does look a little weird. Like when you have this, it looks a little weird. Uh, but again, you can do anything. And I do think that there are actually greener greens. So if you want to go for like a more World of Warcraft orc green, then you can jump into all skin colors and you can like sort of find it down here. You know, you can do whatever. Yeah. Lots of choices here. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. For this, let's go with like uh, that one. Perfect. Scarring. Let's just take the hair... Like that, it's fine. Scars. I just want the hair out of the face. They have like the half Gith Yankee nose. You can see that. They have the protruding bottom jaw. It is very orcish. Uh, here you can set the maturity. Let's just take the scar off. The maturity doesn't seem to affect them quite as much, but it does do a little bit. You can see around the neck and around the top here. Freckles. Yeah, there's freckles. Uh, again, more impactful when you have the freckles on a lighter skin tone, but you can set the intensity and the quantity, and then vitiligo, uh, always good, always nice. Body art, these options are going to be basically the same as on all the others. We knew that coming into it. So I will go through it pretty quickly, and then I'll just show you how the colors work on them as well, pretty quickly once again. I'm not sure if any of these are specifically orcish style paints, but I'm sure some of them would work quite nicely, right? Some of them. There you go. If we take this one, we can look at the colors quickly. 
I like the colors. They're kind of, kind of bright, kind of vibrant. Very contrasty with the skin, which is nice. The whites are fantastic. I, I don't know why the whites and the yellows just, they make sense to me. They look really cool. Uh, and then piercings. Let's have a look. Here they are. Same on all the races. The eyes. These are basically the exact same choices as you would have on human or elf or anything else. But you can obviously get creative. You can make your character possessed by a demon if you'd like. Uh, I, I do think looking at these eyes right now, even though they are still bright and they look nice, they are less bright and, and smaller than some of the other races' eyes. Uh, you can activate all eye colors, then you can go for the demonic ones if you'd like. There's no reason not to, you know? If you think they look really cool and you like the, the style, then you can go for that. Uh, and then some of the other styles have like some slightly brighter colors or different colors in there. It's cool. Mess around, find something you like. Heterochromia, you can have one on the one, one on the other. Different colors. It looks kind of cool. You can be subtle with it or you can be like in your face with it. Makeup. Same as all the other races. Uh, decent styles, except obviously the dragons. We've now seen that they have different ones. Uh, but decent styles here. And on a skin tone like the orcish one that we're looking at here, obviously you'd want a brighter color. With these, you can select a color, decent colors, lots of choices. And then you can also add a metallic tint or a glossy tint to it. And I think it's kind of nice. Uh, the metallic and glossy tints, they obviously add a whole different thing to your character's style uh, and they are well worth having a peek at i'm showing you how it looks like this because when you throw the metallic tint on and the glossy tint on then it changes the color entirely so you you obviously don't want to look at them like that because it gives you a bad representation of what the color is actually like but yeah i mean like i think with the orc skin tones the default ones that they give you you could probably make something really nice Especially with that. There you go. Then we move on to the lips. Lip tint. They have nice big lips. Yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of real estate here. So this is definitely something you want to look at. I do wish we had customization over the tusks. Uh, but that's obviously not a thing that we get here. You get to pick different faces and they have different tusks. And that's already like quite nice. Uh, but that's like it's a, it's a very minor wish list thing. Now, much like with the uh, makeup, you can select the option over here to make it metallic and make it glossy. It's very exciting, you know. You can do that. The color is obviously a lot darker when you do that, though. All right. Moving on to the hair. So, I'll leave this on black red. That's fine. And then I will make the highlight something like red red and we'll push the intensity up and then you can see the different highlight zones i actually kind of like this i mean the orcs you can see they sort of lean forward but they have like massive muscles and stuff which is just really cool uh, they've they've organized the hair a little differently here i don't know if it's like if it's organized differently because they suggest these styles uh, but I, I guess it comes down to something like that Anyway, I'm just going through them pretty quickly. Here's that style that I thought was unique to gnomes. It's not unique to gnomes. It just looks different on gnomes. But basically, yeah, on, on orcs, <laughs> much like in all the other races, every one of these styles can work. It just comes down to you and how creative you can be uh, with the character setup. And the highlight zones, I mean, they make it really easy to do some pretty spectacular stuff. However, spectacular doesn't always mean it works, you know? And if you're going for like a law friendly look, that makes it even harder. <laughs> that makes it even harder. I don't know. Uh, because these guys don't have sub races. Uh, you know, you like you and they half orcs. They're not full orcs. Uh, you sort of you, you sort of have a bit more freedom, I suppose. Uh, when it's half anything, you seem to have a bit more freedom. But yeah, it's still going to be up to you to make something really, really look uh, good. I, I, I do wonder, I wonder if Larian will release ever a, like, infographic of, of like, what characters, uh, what races, what classes are the most popular. I'd love to see. 
So let's pick uh, this one and then I'll show you quickly how this works. First things first, I'll just take the highlight off and then I will show you the different colors of hair. These are the same hair colors as on every other race that has hair and it's no different in any way. These are the same. It looks the same. It's like they just put the hair on the character. That's that. It doesn't look any different on the orc. But obviously we are looking at all the customization options here and I'm showing them to you. Obviously with the combination of the different skin colors, you can make different visual styles that can be aesthetically pleasing. I do feel like the orcs look nice on the brighter colors as well. I mean, I said before I really like gnomes, but like, yeah, orcs look good with bright colors too. You pick a color here, then you can throw the highlight on of your choice. Let's take green for now. Highlight can be anything you want. Red and green, it's like a big red flag for me being colorblind. I can't even see the red in the hair here, but like, <laughs> whatever. Uh, you can do any color highlight. There's a lot of different choices for the highlights. You can sort of pick and choose what you want to see. And then if the highlight's not what you want, you can also do gray in. The gray in is a more natural style where it comes from the roots out. It's kind of cool, kind of nice. And you can gray in any color, any old color you want. You can throw it on there and it looks kind of cool. There you go. I'll put some, some gray in there and we can use that for the facial hair. Would have been cool if like, I mean, I know, I know it wouldn't have been cool. I mustn't say it would be cool if any specific race had uh, options unique to them. But like, I feel like the orcs could have had some unique beards, you know? Uh, looking at this, I actually think that orcs might have less beards. Yeah, unless they just shuffled them around a bit. I think the orcs might have less beards. That's very weird. Maybe there are certain ones that they cannot use. Yeah, the handlebar mustache is gone. Uh, you know, there's a mustache like this, but just the mustache, it's gone. It's not here. That's very weird. What kind of choice is that to make? Huh. Yeah, dude, I've been looking at this for a long time. I know what's not there. <laughs> you can gray yourself a little bit if you'd like. Uh, it's all tied to the hair color. So if you pick the one or the other, it changes that. Now, let's randomize. F oh, man, what the heck? Funny that the handlebar mustache is gone. That's really weird. Huh. I will say this again about the randomization system. I really love that they don't throw a beard on every character that's female. Like that they, they are a little sort of, you know, they, they're apprehensive to throw beards in on every character. Even though if you truly randomize it, then it would be putting basically beards on 80% of the roles. But because it's female, they don't do that. They just put it on some. So there you go. Half orc female customization. We're going to jump back now and do the males. That'll be our final customization. The males have, wow, dude, like proper jug heads, like really big ass heads. I like it. Your first choice here is your identity. You can do male, you can do female, you can be other. That's just how people refer to you. Uh, the standard he, she, or they. And then let's look at the voices. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can... Where to next? Hmm. What was that? So, I realized that these voices are like curated choices. They have the same voices for all of them. But I'm gonna say it, these aren't really orcish voices. <laughs> it's like, it's like they're definitely not all that orcish. Wow, this is a really cool orcish face. Huh. I bet one of these looks like Shrek. Dude, some of them have bigger jaws, like more chiseled. You're looking like a David Coulthard orc here. Uh, these are like a Lord of the Rings orc, basically. This guy's got some nice stubble. Uh, again, it's it's very rare that you see stubble on here. Uh, let's take let's take this one. Yeah, let's take this one. Skin tones uh, they give you a very big selection on orcs. Again, uh, I I mentioned this on the female side, but like these are the the choices that they want you to pick. These are like proper orcish tones, okay? But when you get lower down, it sort of starts getting a little muddy. You know, you can make gray orcs. Yes, you can make like the 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 darker grays and stuff like that, the greens, yes, orcish green is a thing. Um, but when you get to the neutral tones, it sort of starts looking to me like these are just sort of the human tones that they threw in here for completion's sake. And this is just because, again, you're playing a half orc. Anyway, you can unlimit this. You can make yourself a drow orc. You can be half drow, half orc. You can make yourself half marshmallow, half orc, if you'd like. <laughs> you can do anything you like. Uh, the game gives you all the freedom in the world. You can make a fell fiery orc if you want to. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, they got the greens and the reds there. Everything's there. Let's take the orcish green, uh, but a lighter one. There we go. Scars. 
Gonna be hard to see the scars on this face, but you know, that's part of the point, right? Uh, this is what you get when you play Orc, male. Again, I believe that the, or the voices really aren't that orcish. I, b I think they should have had a more like hardcore voice in there. Maturity, yeah, I don't see this doing much. It doesn't. It really doesn't. Too many wrinkles already. Freckles. Also, once again, not really doing all that much. The Vitiligo is going to look nice. Yeah, it's very cool. Okay. Body art. We're going to make this white. So that you can see it nicely. Just mixing things up a little bit. And we'll go through here pretty quickly. Honestly, fantastic tattoos. This is the last time I'm going to be looking at them. I'm on the last customization section of my video. And, and, and for real, looking at them right here, I like it. I think that they give you so much to make uh, awesome characters. Really awesome characters. You just got to be creative, you know? Just got to be creative. Now, the colors... <laughs> God, please don't be creative with this, though. Uh, the colors... When you have a darker skin tone, obviously the darker colors sort of mix in, like this one, for instance. Uh, you could do some cool stuff with this. You could make, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger from uh, Predator uh, or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do some cool stuff with this. But, I mean, the more impactful looks will probably be the brighter ones. You can set the intensity, which is the opacity, up and down. And it's cool. There you go. Turn it off. Piercings. All the same ones as the other races. Uh, they obviously look different on the orcs. Some of them are positioned slightly differently. Uh, because obviously the ones that go in the lips and uh, in the ears and stuff will be in different places. There you go. Eyes. Very small eyes. <laughs> Piggish little eyes. Uh, you can't really see them all that well. Probably of all the races, they have the least impactful gaze. Uh, even though they look kind of scary and hardcore and whatever, you, you can't really see the eyes when you zoom out a little bit. You can do demonic eyes and any other eyes you want, uh, but again, their brows sort of overshadow everything, so no matter what you pick here, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, heterochromia, you can do one in the one, one in the other if you'd like. Uh, yeah, it's up to you, I suppose. Makeup. Let's just make sure the intensity is up and let's choose a white or a gray here quickly. Let's have a peek. Mm, it actually feels kind of smaller on the orcs because their eyes are so small. So like you get less surface area to work with. <laughs> I feel like I need to zoom in even further. So with the colors for the makeup, you can pick through a bunch of different cool options and then you can also make them metallic and glossy uh, it's sort of hard to see when you have on 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 the darker tones but it is a very nice effect especially if you take the brighter colors it's very cool very very cool how it looks there you go i think you could do some pretty unique stuff with orc I'm going to say that multiple times as I go through here. And probably when we randomize, we're going to see some of the unique stuff that you can do. Uh, but like, really, the faces and stuff. I, I hope Orc sees some gameplay. That's all I'm saying. It's like, it's really cool. There's a lot going on here. And and if you really spend some time, I bet you can uh, make the Orc lovers out there proud. Here. So. We're going to have a quick peek. I will put the hair color on, let's say, a white color, and then I'll put the highlights on black, and we'll push the intensity up so you can see where the highlight zones are. I do wonder if we are limited on the orc. Oh yeah, of course. So maybe they don't have the handlebar mustache mustache because uh, the tusks might get in the way. Yeah, it's possible, right? It's quite possible. <laughs> Some of these actually make this guy look like an actual granny. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I think it's kind of hard to pick a good hairstyle on Orc. 
Maybe you guys can find a good one. But I feel like the shorter styles make the orc look a little bit weird. It's like that orc that you had as a uh, advisor in Pathfinder Kingmaker. He had like regular hair. He was a half orc as well. But he had like regular hair, human hair on an orc. And it looked mm, out of place. You know, so it ends up looking there. These these ones, like these these mohawky uh, quiff type things are, are kind of nice. Uh, they, they look good. Uh, they make sense. And I feel like the... the cornrows and stuff like these ones they also make sense uh, but but it's going to be kind of hard you don't want to pick a regular one because it looks a little out of place like i said it's like when your orc looks like he's going to court it's it's kind of weird you know but maybe i think most of what's looking weird here is actually the color right the color that i've got here is mega tacky on orc with the green uh, so the combination is just kind of weird so if i'm going to pick one i'm going to i'm going to pick this one i think it looks nice then when you go through the colors i'm going to take the highlight off quickly and show you what it looks like but when you go through the colors here, uh, you have all the colors at your disposal. Uh, every color available for hair. And then in highlights, you have even more on top of that. And the highlights, they give you the more intense colors. So they'll give you here, as an example, you get a, uh, a black neutral, which is this, which is a fantastic color. It's a good black. And then you get the white neutral here as well. Um, but, you know, when you go to the highlights, you get a much darker black. And that darker black will obviously give you more control over making your character's hair look like a deeper shade of, of, of black. And it's the same for all the others. It's like in the highlights, there'll be a darker red, there'll be a darker or more vibrant green uh, or orange or yellow or whatever. And that's cool. Uh, you know, it's it's part of the cool design that you can make. Uh, and it's, it's, some, it's a reason for you to try and think outside the box a little bit. As an example, here's the black on black. It can make it look cool. Yeah. For the highlight colors, there's like a whole lot. You can do anything here. And then you can also set the intensity of it, how much of it gets covered. Uh, so I'll leave it to you guys to go crazy there. Then you can gray. You can gray your hair. It comes from the roots up. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. It's good. It's good grain. You can change the gray color to red, uh, to green, to blue, to purple, to whatever you like. And you can make some creative stuff happen. I'll put some gray in there just for the beards that we're going to look at now. And I'll leave it at that beards well it seems like we do have a couple of options less it might just be one option less to be honest i'm not entirely sure uh, but you can see here that the handlebar mustache is not here on orc uh, but the other beards and there's maybe one big beard that's also not here i'm not sure uh, but the other beards they do look fantastic like it looks good on orc and there you go you can set the grain intensity here uh, and the the hair color is locked as i've mentioned let's randomize <laughs> fantastic very nice very nice good randomization the faces are are varied and different uh it's yeah this is this is what i'm talking about man Baldur's gate 3 character creation <laughs> very cool that's it uh we are actually somehow finished with our customization that's it i i cannot believe we've come to the end of it We've only been here for like, uh, what, 100 hours? <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, and what a trip it was. Dude, there's so much cool stuff. So much. Now, as I jump onto the classes, right, I need to mention a few things before I get started. So, important stuff. Really important stuff. When you jump in, with the help of an NPC, you can actually reset a bunch of your class stuff. They said they don't want to lock you into your class choices. If you regret it, you can actually change afterwards. There's also multi-classing. Once again, that's as you jump in uh, a little bit later. There's even an achievement, I think, for multi-classing every single class in one playthrough, <laughs> which is just insane. Then there are subclasses for every one of these classes. A lot of subclasses. They are not all available here. This is important stuff to know. So know all of that when you jump in. The subclasses, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to give you a quick just preview of what there is. I realize it's sort of like it's spoiling things, but it's good to know as you jump in here. So as we go through it, just know that each of these has a subclass or two or three or five. The subclasses that you have to choose from are for Barbarian, you have Berserker, Wild Heart, and Wild Magic. For Druid... You have, and yes, I'm not going through the correct order here. Land, Moon, and Spore Druid. For Fighter, you have Battlemaster, Eldritch Knight, and Champion. For Ranger, you have Hunter, Beastmaster, and Gloomstalker. For Rogue, you have Arcane Trickster, Assassin, and Thief. 
for sorcerer it is wild magic which is the same name as uh, the barbarian one draconic bloodline and storm sorcery for bard there's law valor and sword for monk you have open hand shadow and four elements for warlock you have archfey fiend and great old one Paladins have Ancients, Devotion, Vengeance, and Oathbreaker. Clerics have Knowledge, Life, Light, Nature, Tempest, Trickery, and War. And then finally, Wizards have Abjuration, Conjuration, Divination, Enchantment, Evocation, Necromancy, Illusion, and Transmutation. So, let it be known <laughs> that it's a pretty intense class customization and selection system. On top of all of that, there's multi-classing. So, keep all of that in mind. That's the class introduction out of the way keep all of that in mind as we go through here all right now let's have a quick look let me just have a peek at the classes okay let's have a look first up barbarian this is the one we've been looking at all video long uh, you can click over here for details and then it tells you the weapon proficiencies and i will once again bring your attention to the right hand side over here it's quite important and I will bring this up every time I open a class but it's quite important because you can see basically what your totals are here what your proficiencies are what your skills are and so on and so forth which again can be customized by the way so as we jump in here barbarian strong embrace the wild that hides inside keen instincts primal physicality and most of all an unbridled unquenchable rage you can see the proficiencies, simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, shields. Uh, this gets modified by your race selection, obviously, because that comes into play. Actions, they get rage. Yeah, I mean, that explains itself. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the description for each of these actions. You get it. You get it, right? Class features, unarmored defense. So this is an important one I will read to you. While not wearing armor, you add your constitution modifier to your armor class. Wearing heavy armor impedes your rage. So, uh, this is like more for a light armor kind of thing. Uh, they actually say it here. So, when you when you go to... Uh, I think, where, where is it? Is it on Rage? I'm not I'm not entirely sure. But I think they allow light armor on, on Barbarian. And that's pretty cool. Uh, it, it's, it's fantastic. I think Barbarian's probably my top choice right now for class. I, I just... I don't know. I feel like... I feel like smashing things. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, keep in mind the Barbarian subclasses, as I mentioned, are the Berserker, the Wild Heart, and Wild Magic. Right? Keep that in mind. Bard. And yeah, when you switch to them, it has this cool little animation. You know music is more than a fancy. It's power. Through study and adventure... You've mastered song, speech, and the magic within. The details here. Simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, short swords, and then light armor. The bard subclasses are law, valor, and swords. You pick those later, as I said. And then with bard, you will notice that you have some choices here that you can make. Not all the classes have choices. Uh, you'll see there's cantrips, spells, and starting instrument. The cantrips that you get are vicious mockery and Blade Ward. The spells you start with, Healing Word, Dissonant Whispers, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and Heroism, and you can choose those over here. These are the default ones. And then your action is Bardic Inspiration. That inspires an ally to do uh, bonus damage on the next attacks, or ability checks, or saving throws. Well, bonus damage, bonus dice, bonus rolls. For Bard, again, it goes deeper. You can jump into Cantrips here, and you can pick what you want. You get to pick two. So if you take those away, you can pick two different ones. The choices are Vicious Mockery, Blade Ward, Mage Hand, True Strike, Friends, Dancing Lights, Light, and Minor Illusion. Then your spells. This is obviously something that, that you can see here. Uh, you can change your counter selection by choosing a spell from the list below. They don't use spell slots and be cast at will. But the spells, you choose your spells here from the list below. They require spell slots to cast unless a feature states otherwise so your spell choices are animal friendship which is obviously like that's you have to take that one bane charm person cure wounds i love that bards can heal disguise self dissonant whispers fairy fire featherfall healing word heroism long strider sleep speak with animals tasha's hideous laughter and thunder wave again if you want to go through those yourself just slow it down, pause it, uh, you know, look at, at basically what there is, uh, and and take it from there. You can also see when you go onto the spell section, the cantrip section here, it tells you what you use 
for your spells, which is Charisma, your spell save, DC, and your spell attack. That's just the base as you're starting out. Then on Bard, you get to pick your starting instrument. Fantastic choice to make here. Uh, you pick the instrument you'd like to use. It'll influence the soundscape when you cast spells. It can be changed later by equipping a different instrument. It's the drums. Flute. The lute. The lyre. And then the best choice, the violin. Perfect. And that's it for Bard. Next up's Cleric. These guys have a lot of choices and customization to make. Uh, their details, as you can see over here, simple weapons, morning stars, uh, light armor, medium armor, and shields. Clerics are representatives of the gods they worship, wielding potent divine magic for good or ill. And yes, yeah, <laughs> you can you can do it for good or ill. Uh, cantrips, I'm going to show you the cantrips when we get there. And spells, I will... I'm not sure you can choose the spells. Uh, I'm not sure, but here's resistance, guidance, and sacred flame. And then for spells, there's guiding bolt, healing word, inflict wounds, shield of faith, and bane. I do think that the spells are probably chosen by your subclass. We'll have a look right now. Class features... Level 1 spell slots unlocked. You gain two level 1 spell slots, which are restored on long rest. And then domain spells. That's the domain that you choose, which we will have a look at in just a brief moment. The cantrips. Your choices here, once again, they're influenced by wisdom. Uh, and the ones you have to choose are Thaumaturgy, Sacred Flame, Guidance, Resistance, Light, Blade Ward, and Produce Flame. Cool. You get to pick three of them, which is good. Subclasses, as I mentioned, they actually get to pick their subclasses right here in character creation, which is awesome. Uh, you have life domain. That's the domain of life. It's an aspect of many good deities offering spells that protect and restore the mind, body, and soul. Uh, this gives you extra proficiencies when you click on it. So life domain gives you heavy armor proficiency. And then the feature is your devotion empowers your healing spells. When casting a healing spell, the target regains additional hit points equal to 2 plus the spell's level. There you go. Light's Domain. It's offered by deities of justice, majesty, and primordial flame, providing spells that dispel darkness and harm the undead. You get an extra cantrip here, which is light. And then your Light Domain spells, Burning Hands and Fairy Fire. And then the subclass feature is... Warden Flare. Shield yourself with Divine Light. Use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attacker. That's pretty cool. Trickery Domain. A domain shared by the wicked, chaotic, and mischievous alike. Those who channel trickery specialize in deception and illusion magic. Their action is Blessing of the Trickster. Grant another creature advantage on stealth checks. That's pretty cool. Trickery uh, Domain spells is Charm Person and Disguise Self. You will see that these don't have any extra proficiencies that you get on them. Uh, knowledge, adaptable and uh, adroit, uh, adroit in all manner of languages and skills. Your mind is an intellectual cup brimming with exquisite knowing. The spells are command and sleep. Pretty nice. Nature domain, uh, and you will see when you when you switch through these, extra things pop up. <laughs> It's kind of crazy that you get an extra cantrip choice over here. Uh, you embody... This character creator is just huge. You embody the vast viridian power of the natural world. An avatar of the subtle divinity of fruitfall, avian migration, woodland silence, and the landslides roaring fury. You get shillag... <laughs> okay, okay. Shillalag. Shillalag? Shilla I, I hate that word so much right now. <laughs> I can't say that. I'm sorry. I apologize. You get heavy armor on this one as well as a proficiency. Uh, and you get this spell right here, which makes your staff or club magical. Cool, man. Uh, speak with animals comes by default, and animal friendship also comes. You can convince them not to attack you. Then your feature is you learn a druid cantrip and become proficient in animal handling, nature, or survival. That's these ones over here. That's the, the one that I couldn't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> poison spray, produce flame, this one, and thorn whip. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, very nice. 
You you may have realized I'm skipping the deities right now. I'm going to go there after. Tempest. Your faith has made you the very thunder that quakes the black firmament. The lightning coursing through the veins of a terrible storm. Martial weapons and heavy armor on this one, which is cool. Thunder wave is your one spell and your other one is fog cloud. And then your subclass features strike back at an attacking creature. Potentially dealing 2 to 16 lightning damage. On a failed saving throw, you deal half of a 2 to 16 damage roll. That's kind of cool. Alright. War Domain. Uh, fortified by Holy Zeal, you brandish an arsenal of sacramental savagery to use against those you deem unrighteous. Martial weapons, heavy armor once again. Divine Favor as a spell and shield of faith. This is sort of more of like a fighter cleric. And then War Priest. When you make an unarmed or weapon attack, you can spend a War Priest charge to make an additional attack as a bonus action. That's really cool. Okay. Then the final choice on clerics is your deity. This is flavor. It's flavor. It's all flavor. And I'm going to leave this to you guys to discover. But I will tell you what they are. You've got Saloon, Bahamut, Tempest. And there's a little description down here. Tyr, Helm, Ilmata, Mistra, Ogma. Kelimvor, Moradin, that's uh, Corallon, Larethian, Gal Glitter Gold, uh, Yondala, Loth, fantastic, <laughs> Grumsh, Tiamat, Elastre, Lathander, Talos, Timora, and uh, Maliki. Cool. Uh, this is flavor. Uh, I'm sure it'll come up in conversation, and maybe it'll give you some extras every year, uh, like here and there, that you could use, but it is flavor. So do not worry too much about that choice. Maybe try pick something that lines up with the subclass that you pick, I suppose. Druid. Druid is next up. The Druid subclasses, you don't get to pick here. They are Land, Moon, and Spores. Druids channel the elemental forces of nature and share deep kinship with animals. Mastery of wild shape allows them to transform into beasts from all over the realms. And apparently it also allows them to do questionable things while they are beasts. <laughs> so uh, you don't get to pick your spells at the start here, but you do get to pick your cantrips. So let's look at the spells first. Ice Knife, Thunder Wave, Cure Wounds, Healing Word, Enhanced Leap. And then your feature, you gain two level one spell slots, which are restored after a long rest. Cantrips, Guidance, Poison Spray, Produce Flame, Resistance, this one again, Shillelag, and Thorn Whip. Wisdom is your spell casting choice, uh, spell save on DC, yes, and spell attack. Uh, I didn't show you guys this. They use clubs, daggers, javelins, maces, quarterstaffs, scimitars, sickles, and spears. Light armor, medium armor, and shields can be used. Pretty cool. Yeah. Druids, man. Druids. What a concept. Uh, I like the idea. Fighters. On fighter, your subclasses are Battlemaster, Eldritch Knight, and Champion. Fighters have mastered the art of combat, wielding weapons with unmatched skill and wearing armor like a second skin. They have a big selection here. Simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, and shields. Then their action is Second Wind. It's a healing spell. Then you get to pick your fighting style. This is just an extra, basically. I want to say it, it, it should actually add like the weapon that you get to start with, but it looks like it doesn't do that. Uh, what it does is you gain uh, plus two to the one that you select. So to range weapon attacks, you gain plus one to armor class while wearing armor. When you are wielding a melee weapon that's not two-handed or versatile in one hand and no weapon in the other, you deal additional damage. That's dueling. Great weapon fighting is, well, great weapons. When you roll a one or two damage die uh, for an attack with a two-handed melee weapon, that die is re-rolled once. Protection. When you have a shield, impose disadvantage on the attacker against your abilities when you are within 1.5 meters. You must be able to see them. And then finally, two weapon fighting. That's uh, Dristo Erden. <laughs> when you make an attack with your offhand weapon, uh, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the attack. There you go. Cool. Fighter is obviously always a fantastic choice. Monk, this is the newest addition to the game. Channel your cosmic enlightenment uh, by deftly dodging and efficiently dis 
Em disassembling? Disassembling your foes through stunning strikes and a whirlwind of martial attacks. Simple weapons and short swords, but I think that for the most part you actually use your fists. I'm not sure. Or maybe staves. It depends on the subclass that you pick. The subclasses are open hand, shadow, and four elements. Your actions, flurry of blows, punch twice in quick succession. And then your class features, key. Uh, key is the magic that flows through all living beings. You can use it to exceed your body's physical capabilities. Unarmored defense, uh, martial arts dexterous attacks, martial arts dex uh, deft strikes, and martial arts bonus unarmed strike. Very cool. Lots and lots of different stuff. Once again, changes based on the subclass that you pick. Paladin. Fueled by the oath you swore to uphold, justice and righteousness, you are a beacon of hope in dark times. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. You actually get to pick your subclass here as well. Fantastic. I thought it was just the cleric and the, and the warlock. Details. Simple weapons, martial weapons, light, medium, and heavy armor, and shields. Lay on hands. Always a nice ability. That's the healing ability. Divine sense. There you go. You gain advantage on attack rolls against celestials, fiends, or undead. And then finally, your class feature, Channel Oath, charges one. You gain the ability to channel the power contained in your Paladin Oath, which you can use to fuel certain actions. So that will come into play with the subclasses, right? Oath of the Ancients. You fight on the side of light in the cosmic struggle against darkness to preserve the sanctity of life and the beauty of nature. Cool. You get Healing Radiance. That's a healing ability for you and all allies. And then you get the Oath of the Ancient Tenets. I'm not going to read all of this for you, uh, but each class gets a different one. And they each give you something special. So you can check it out right there. And then we'll move on. Oath of Devotion. Following the ideal of the knight in shining armor, you act with honor and virtue to protect the weak and pursue the greater good. Holy Rebuke. That grants an ally a vengeful aura that deals 1 to 4 radiant damage. That's pretty cool. And then you have the Oath of Devotion tenets. These are obviously important. Uh, you should pay attention to them. I actually thought you picked your deity on Paladin as well, but apparently you don't. It's just the oaths that you swear. And then Oath of Vengeance. You've set aside even your own purity to right wrongs and deliver justice to those who have committed the most grievous sins. Inquisitor's Might. That's your ability here. You and allies weapon attack deals an additional two radiant damage and you can daze enemies for one turn. And then there's your Oath of Vengeance tenets. Pretty cool. Next up, Ranger. Rangers are unrivaled scouts and trackers honing a deep connection with nature in order to hunt their favored prey. The cantrips, you don't get to pick here, uh, but you do get to pick your favored enemy and natural explorer. Uh, you get True Strike and your Beast Tamer ability is Find Familiar, which is kind of cool. Uh, simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields. Favored enemy, uh, I'll tell you that the subclasses on Ranger are Hunter, Beastmaster, and Gloomstalker, which sound really cool. Favorite enemy, uh, this is studying the tactics of uh, a certain creature has granted you a set of abilities that's useful in a variety of situations. So basically, these choices, they change what you get, what you start with. There's Bounty Hunter, uh, proficiency in investigation. Creatures you hit with ensnaring strike, either ranged or melee, have a disadvantage in their saving throws. Uh, Keeper of the Veil, you specialize in hunting creatures from other planes of existence. Proficiency in Arcana and can cast protection from evil and good. Uh, and then you get this, as you see, and you get the uh, Find Familiar ability. Mage Breaker, that one explains itself. History of battling spellcasters, proficiency in Arcana and cast True Strike. There you go. Uh, Ranger Knight, which is to say probably heavier armor or what? You've sworn to serve crown or nation and seek to bring its foes to ruin, gain proficiency in history and armor with heavy armor. Ooh, that's kind of cool. And then Sanctified Stalker, Sacred Flame, and again, find familiar. These guys swore to hunt the enemies of a holy or druidic order. You gain proficiency in religion and can cast Sacred Flame. Then your natural explorer, years of traveling in the wild have made you particularly attuned to beasts or adept at surviving in certain environments. Beast Tamer, you've cultivated a strong bond with animals. You can cast Find Familiar without expending a spell slot. Okay, there's your Sacred Flame cantrip. Urban Tracker, expert at navigating wild within the city. Proficiency at sleight of hand. These are just uh, more extras, basically. Wasteland Wanderer Cold, 
Endless Days Survive in Desolate Tundras, Resistance to Cold Damage. Endless Days in Forbidden Deserts, Resistance to Fire. And then finally, Resistance to Poison. That's you in the swamps. Okay. Next up, Rogue. The subclasses on Rogue are Arcane Trickster, Assassin, and Thief. With stealth, skill, and uncanny reflexes, Rogue's versatility let them get the upper hand in almost any situation. They have Sneak Attack and Sneak Attack, that's melee and ranged. They can use simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, short swords, and light armor. As I mentioned, the subclasses, Arcane Trickster, Assassin, and Thief. Pretty cool, no other choices here. Sorcerer, this one's going to have a lot of stuff that you can look at here. Uh, pretty cool. I see they can also pick their subclass. Okay, okay. Uh, so I was a little wrong with my with my earlier predictions, uh, but that's kind of cool. They are natural spellcasters drawing on inherent magic from a gift or a bloodline. Weapons are daggers, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows, and that's basically it. Then, your cantrips. We're not going to go through them here. We'll go through them there. Uh, the spells, once again, also same thing. Class feature, you gain... Two level 1 spell slots, which are restored after long rest. And you will see the subclasses down there. Cantrips that we have to select from. Blade Ward, Acid Splash, Mage Hand, Poison Spray, True Strike, Friends, Dancing Light, Firebolt, Light, Ray of Frost, Shocking Grasp, Minor Illusion, and Bone Chill. You can select four of them. Charisma to cast. Uh, spell saves. There's your spell attack. Pretty cool. The spells that you get to pick, this is just your starter spells, once again. These are the ones that you'll recognize from proper spell casting. Burning Hands, Charm Person, Chromatic Orb, Color Spray, Disguise Self, Expeditious Retreat, False Life, Feather Fall, Fog Cloud, Ice Knife, Enhanced Leap, Mage Armor, Magic Missile, oof. Ray of Sickness, Shield, Sleep, Thunder Wave, and Witch Bolt. Cool, you can select two of those. Subclasses, here we go. Wild Magic, Draconic Bloodline, and Storm Sorcery. Wild magic, your powers come from ancient forces of chaos that churn within you, waiting to burst free at any time. You get Tides of Chaos here, uh, which gives you an activate to gain advantage on your next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Increased chance of wild magic surge afterwards. And then wild magic stems from the forces of chaos. It churns within the sorcerer, waiting to burst free. That's the surge, I take it. Draconic Bloodline, uh, you will see here that another pop-up comes down. We can pick up an ancestor over there. You can only pick one. Your veins carry Draconic Blood, the result of a powerful dragon ancestor. That's resilience, so you get extra hit points. One for each sorcerer level. That's actually kind of fantastic. Wow. The resilience, the dragon-like scales cover parts of your skin. That's actually an interesting, unique uh, customization option that I didn't see before. Very cool. Uh, and... Yeah, they, they, when you aren't wearing armor, your base armor class is 13. They give you extra armor. Uh, I do wonder if the customization on this is locked. Oh, it's just an option. Okay. I'm not sure where the option is, but it looks like you can actually take it off. Which is very interesting to me. Oh, here it is. Draconic Bloodline. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, let's randomize one more time so we can see the scales. So that's a nice option. I didn't even know this was here. And you get to pick a lot of different colors. Yeah. Fantastic. That's really cool. It sort of reminds me once again of the dragon characters in World of Warcraft, the Drakthir. It's nice. It's a nice customization. It's a nice little extra, uh, basically. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and then you pick your dragon ancestor. And this will obviously give you the scales that are locked to it. So you choose your ancestor, damage type associated, that will influence later features. Right, so fire, acid, that gives you grease, lightning, gives you witch bolt, cold, gives you armor of agathus, poison, gives you ray of sickness, fire, that's the gold dragon, gives you disguise self, silver gives you, uh, it's cold, gives you featherfall, bronze and lightning give you uh, fog cloud, Copper, Acid, give you Tasha, Sidious, Laughter, and Brass, Fire, give you Sleep. Very cool, and each of them changes your, your scales, obviously. Very, very sick. Storm Sorcery. Whether crackling with the energy of ancient deluges or pierced by gales and hurricanes, your lineage is a strange tapestry scrawled by a tempest. Tempestuous magic, after you cast a level 1 spell, or higher, you can fly as a bonus action until the end of your turn without receiving opportunity attacks. 
Hmm. Very cool. Nice. Okay. Uh, Warlock. Warlock has a lot of stuff that you can pick here. Subclasses are involved as well. Uh, the details, simple weapons, light armor. Bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron, Warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic. Their cantrips, Eldritch Blast and Blade Ward. You can change those over here. And you gain Warlock spell slots. Here we go. Cantrips. Blade Ward, Bone Chill, Eldritch Blast, Fiend Friends. <laughs> I thought it was Fiends. Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, Poison Spray, and True Strike. Cool. Subclass, you get the Fiend. Warlocks, in service to Fiends, work towards corrupting destructive ends, intentionally or otherwise, and receive hellish blessings in turn. They get Armor of Agathus and Arms of Hadar. Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, this gift from your patron grants you four temporary hit points, so you steal health from them. Cool. The Great Old One, Warlocks bound to Eldritch Beings in the Far Realm, work towards uh, inscrutable goals, gaining strange powers over entropy in the mi and the mind. Dissonant Whispers and Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and their subclass feature is Mortal Reminder. When you land a critical hit against a creature, that creature and any nearby enemies must succeed in a wisdom saving throw or become frightened. That's cool. The Archfey. Granted by a lady or lord of the Fey, you are imbued with all the sumptuous and scary qualities of your patron's extraordinary realm. Uh, fairy fire and sleep. Interesting for a warlock. And then Fey presence. Charm or frighten nearby foes with the Fey Wild's beguiling, disturbing magics. Then for all of these, you can go down to spells, and you can pick these as your starting spells. Armor of Agathus, Arms of Hadar, Burning Hands, Charm Person, Command, Expeditious Retreat, Hellish Rebuke, Hex, uh, Prediction from Evil and Good, and then Witch Bolt. Finally, we have Wizard. Details. They have daggers, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows. You don't get to pick your subclass here. Your subclasses are basically all the schools of magic. It's abjuration, conjuration, divination, enchantment. Uh, I think it's enhancement. Is it enchantment? Or, yeah, it's enchantment. Evocation, necromancy, illusion, and transmutation. Wizards master arcane by specializing in individual schools of magic, combining ancient spells with modern research. Cantrips we'll look at now. Spells we'll look at after that. Actions is Arcane Recovery. Replenish spell slots while out of combat. You cannot restore spells over 5th level. And then finally, you get 2 level 1 spell slots. The Cantrips, much the same as the other ones we've seen, but a bit different. Uh, you get to choose 3. Acid Splash, Bone Chill, Poison Spray, Ray of Frost, Shocking Grasp, Blade Ward, Friends, Dancing Lights, Light, Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, and True Strike. You'll see that this uses Intellect for your spellcasting ability. And then the spells, lots of spells, Burning Hands, Charm Person, Chromatic Orb, Color Spray, Disguise Self, Expeditious Retreat, False Life, Featherfall, Find Familiar, Fog Cloud, Grease, Ice Knife, Enhanced Leap, Long Strider, Mage Armor, Magic Missile, Protection from Evil and Good, Ray of Sickness, Shield, Sleep, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, Thunder Wave, and Witch Bolt. And that brings us to the end. That's actually the final class. Fantastic. Really, really, really cool. Right, so the backgrounds. Here we are. These are important. These actually give you skills. Uh, they are not only for RP purposes, they are not only to set up the backstory for your character, but they give you different skills. Each of them gives you a little bonus, gives you sort of a head start in certain skills, and I'm pretty certain there will be one of these for each and every class that you pick or character that you make that will sort of fit. I do find it a little weird sometimes that you can pick them all on all the different races. It's like kind of weird to pick a, let's say, dragonborn urchin. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. It just, it feels strange. Yeah, it can still happen, obviously. It makes sense that any of it can happen, uh, but it still feels kind of strange. Regardless, let's jump in and let's have a look, starting with the Acolyte. You spent your life in service to a temple, learning sacred rites, and providing sacrifices to the gods or god you worship. Serving the gods and discovering their sacred works will guide you to greatness. This gives you insight, plus three, and religion, plus one. You can see what these abilities do. This is read people and situations, detect lies. That's a pretty important one, by the way. Uh, and this one is recognize deities, understand holy rites. I don't know if that's as important. You only get one there and you get three on this one. But still, uh, bonuses are bonuses. Charlatan. 
You're an expert in manipulation, prone to exaggeration, and more than happy to profit from it. Bending the truth and turning allies against each other will lead to greater success down the road. This gives you deception plus two, lie and cheat, manipulate the truth. Sleight of hand plus three, wield nimble fingers, steal stuff. <laughs> that's fantastic. Like, I mean, that's it right there, huh? That's what this game is about. Looting as much as you possibly can. That helps you pick locks and pockets and disarm traps. Sounds like a useful one. I mean, deception is... Yeah, that's cool. Criminal, you have a history of breaking the law and survive by leveraging less than legal connections. Profiting from criminal enterprises will lead to greater opportunities in the future. This gives you deception once again. That gives you plus two. Uh, and this gives you stealth. Stay out of sight, melt into the shadows, helps you with hiding. I love the way this works, right? I love the way that they give you stealth. They tell you it's a dexterity ability, uh, skill, and then they give you the description, quick and simple, easy peasy. Same with this, deception, charisma. You can sort of easily just see what exactly works with the class or the character that you build in. Entertainer, you live to sway and subvert your audience. Engage in common crowds and high society alike. Preserving art and bringing joy to the hapless and downtrodden heightens your charismatic aura. This gives you acrobatics, keeps your balance, land on your feet, help you resist being shoved. Plus three on that. And performance. That's a charisma one. Entertain your audiences, command the stage. Pretty cool. Next up, Folk Hero. You're a champion of the common people, challenging tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless. Saving innocents in imminent danger will make you and your legend grow. This gives you animal hand in plus three. Influence animals. Pet all of the dogs. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Survival. Stay alive in the wilds. Track prey. That's wisdom and that's uh, wisdom. So these are both wisdom. This is probably the choice that you will make for a ranger or something like that. It just makes sense, right? Guild artisan. Your skill in a particular craft has earned you membership in the mercantile guild, offering privileges and protection while engaging in your art. Repairing and discovering rare artifacts uh, and crafts will bring new inspiration. Insight, plus three, we've seen that already. And persuasion. Turn on the charm, coax and cajole. These are wisdom and charisma, respectively. And we have noble. You are raised in a family among the social elite, accustomed to power and privilege. Accumulating renown, power, and loyalty will raise your status. This gives you history. And that's plus one. Remember the past of the world and its people. And persuasion, plus two. Cool. All right. Outlander. You grew up in the wilds, learning to survive far from the comforts of civilization. Surviving unusual hazards of the wild will enhance your prowess and understanding. This gives you athletics, plus five. Wow. Wow. Uh, stay fit, perform physical stunts, helps you shove and resist being shoved. Survival plus three, that's wisdom. And this one was strength. Stay alive in the wilds, track prey. Sage. You are curious and well-read, with an unending thirst for knowledge. Learning about rare lore of the world will inspire you to put this knowledge to greater purpose. This gives you arcana. Recognize magic, interact with enchanted items. That's intelligence and it's plus one. And then history. Plus one. Soldier. You are trained in battlefield tactics and combat, having served in a militia, mercenary company, or officer corps. Show smart tactics and bravery on the battlefield to enhance your prowess. This gives you athletics plus five. Uh, we've seen that already. And intimidation plus two. Be a bully. Threaten and induce fear. Perfect. Perfect. That's charisma and that's strength. Urchin. After surviving a poor and bleak childhood, you know how to make the most out of very little. Using your street smarts bolsters your spirit for the journey ahead. That gives you sleight of hand, plus three, and stealth, plus three. Fantastic. These are all amazing. Uh, and uh, again, I do feel like if you go in through this whole creation and this whole character customization system here, you'll find one of these that works for you. So we're now in the second to last part of this part of the character creation system. There's one more part after this, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Uh, we're going to move on to the abilities and skill proficiencies. There's a lot in here. I've been here for how many hours now already, and it just keeps going, and I love it. All right? So these are your skill points, basically, your stats, uh, your ability points, as they call it in Baldur's Gate. 
uh, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. We're going to go over them now. There's a star on your primary ability. It's the most important one for your class. They put it there automatically so you know which is best. You can use recommended. That'll just spend them for you. That'll put all the points where they should probably be. Uh, or you can min-max a little bit by putting your own points in. Yeah. Then you get to assign bonuses. These two bonuses, you get a plus two bonus on one. So you can put a plus two bonus over there. Uh, you get a plus one bonus. You can put that on maybe constitution. Yeah, whatever. Depends on what you want, what you build in, and so on and so forth. Strength. Muscle and physical power. It affects your effectiveness with melee weapons and also determines how far you can jump and how much you can carry. Then you can see the saving throws at the bottom there. How much come from the proficiency, how much come from the strength. Dexterity. That's agility, reflexes, and balance. It affects your effectiveness with ranged and finesse weapons. Also affects your initiative and armor class. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Constitution, that's stamina and physical endurance, affects your maximum hit points. You can actually see them going up and down on the right-hand side over here. Intelligence, memory and mental power improve spellcasting for wizards. If you were a wizard, the star would be over here instead of up there. Wisdom, senses and intuition improve spellcasting for clerics, druids, and rangers. Uh, I personally wouldn't put 12 here if I was playing a barbarian. Uh, I'd put these somewhere else. Like, I'd put the strength in, I'd put the constitution in, and I'd most likely put a bit in dexterity because that's also kind of important. Uh, and then finally, charisma. Force of personality. Improves spellcasting for bards, paladins, sorcerers, and warlocks. Influences traders' prices. That's it. So you sign your bonuses over here, you spend your stat points, and you're good to go. The skill proficiencies. There's a whole lot of them here. These are also important choices. You can see you can pick two of them. Again, when you use recommended, they spend them for you and they put them in places where they think they should be. But these basically, they add a bonus to skill checks, to these skill checks, making you more likely to succeed. We've seen most of them, but we'll go over them again quickly for completion's sake. Athletics, this is a strength stat or skill. Stay fit, perform physical stunts, helps you shove and resist being shoved. Acrobatics, that's dexterity. Keep your balance, land on your feet, help resist being shoved. Sleight of hand, you can see this icon says it's from the background. We can, obviously this is not the right background for a barbarian, but it's whatever. Uh, wield, nimble fingers, steal stuff. That's sleight of hand, also dexterity. Stealth, once again dexterity. Stay out of sight, melt into the shadows, helps you with hiding. This one helps you pick locks and pockets and disarm traps. Arcana, uh, that's intelligence and it recognizes magic and interact with enchanted items. History, once again, intelligence, remember the past of the world and its people. Investigation, this is one we hadn't seen yet. Also intelligence, it allows you to analyze clues and solve mysteries. And in case you were wondering, if you spend more points in something like intelligence, then your investigation and your history and your arcana will go up. That's why the athletics is as high as it is right now, uh, because I have high strength. Nature, that's intelligence. Recognize plants and animals, hug trees. Interesting that that's intelligence and not uh, wisdom but eh. religion intelligence recognize deities understand holy rites animal handling that's wisdom influence animals pet all the dogs <laughs> fantastic i'll put a point in there just because uh, insight once again wisdom read people in situations detect lies medicine recognize symptoms diagnose disease that's wisdom as well uh, perception is also wisdom observe your environment spot hidden details that's pretty important uh, survival, also wisdom, stay alive in the wilds, track prey. Deception, that's charisma, you get to lie and cheat and manipulate the truth. Intimidation, that's also charisma. Be a bully, threaten and induce fear. Performance, once again charisma, entertain audiences, command the stage. And finally, persuasion, turn on the charm, coax and cajole. And yes, that's charisma. Alright, that's it for the abilities. And that's it for the uh, final part of this part of the character creation. <laughs> There's more. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the origin again. And I want to show you something really cool. You can actually randomize the entire thing. So with the click of a button, you can generate a character with a random race, class, background, and appearance. And then all the other stuff gets filled in for you. Watch this. There it is. We're a drow half-elf level one ranger. That just happens to look a little bit like Trista Erden. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> interesting coincidence it's a fantastic tool you could do a one-click challenge where you click once you randomize and you play with the one that they give you imagine that if you play a lot of Baldur's gate and you want to go out of your way to do something slightly less easy then you can just let them build your character for you 
I mean, they're still going to build it reasonably well. They'll probably still put the stats where they belong, uh, but they do randomize the way your character looks. They randomize your uh, race, sub-race, your class, and all the rest. It's pretty awesome. And it's a great way to once again just see all the different options that are available in this system. Fantastic addition. I really like it. You know, we randomized a bunch, right? We randomized so much in the customization system. But when it comes to this stuff, we didn't really. Like, we didn't really... There's, there's no random with your class selection or anything like that. Uh, so, with the click of a button here, you just get it all done. I think it's awesome. Really fun. It's a cool thing to add. And again, this could help you with inspiration. You know, if you don't know what to do, you come over here, you click, click, click. You find something, you're happy. Or not, I mean. <laughs> or not. Alright, so when you're done here and you've picked the character of your dreams, uh, whether it be a big red lizard or a um, handsome green-haired lass, then you can proceed and you can name your character, whatever you like. Once you've done that... You need a guardian. Choose one. Well, once you've done that, you need a guardian. So this is something I'm not 100% clear on yet. I, I don't know because I've not played the game, but the way this was, or at least the way I think it was, uh, was that this was a character that you make, and from what I get is you meet it after you first use your Illithid powers, and it's basically the embodiment and representation of the Mind Flayer's tadpole that's in your character's brain. It'll try to tempt you into using your powers more often. It'll tell you it's a good idea. It's safe. It'll tell you that, you know, it's there for you. It'll protect you and so on and so forth. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's trying to trick you. You don't know if it's trying to trick you. I don't want anyone to spoil this. Okay. This is supposed to be a mystery. But you are creating a character that is going to be there for your character. So it's kind of important. Right. I'm not saying you're creating the love of your life or something here. It could be anything. You know. It could be anything, uh, but they do give you some snazzy looking armor here on all of these combinations and they give you all the races except the Dragonborn, which is very interesting to me. Uh, and you can see that they actually give you different default options, which I find quite uh, interesting as well. I don't know if it's random here, but like the men, uh, they're all a little older, like the humans, for instance, gray haired, stuff like that. Uh, they all look a little different than the defaults that they give you in the previous section. But, yeah, you get to basically pick your customization options. You don't get to pick stats or name or, or anything else like that. Uh, you just get to pick the way this character looks. Again, I, I, I don't know all about it. If anyone wants to leave a comment that can possibly explain the Guardian and its role in the game without spoiling stuff, please do. Otherwise... Man, let's just jump in and enjoy it. It's cool not knowing what's going on. <laughs> okay, I mean, this background is rather ominous, isn't it? Yeah. So, there you are. That's the final step, and then you can venture forth and start the game. Once you've made this guy or girl, you will encounter them in the game world and take it from there. Uh, if they're going to be your friends, then they're going to be your friends. If they're going to be your foe, well, you're probably in for a rough ride. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the Baldur's Gate 3 character creation video who'd have thought we'd actually make it to the outro <laughs> dudes it's good dudes this is a really good character creation system it's basically the new gold standard the fact that they give you so many options is just insane you know i fear that we are going to look back in despair from the future because Nothing will be able to beat this. We're going to be comparing everything to this. And it's all going to fall short. I hope, I hope upon hope that the other game devs out there, that everyone out there takes heed. That they see this. And that they react accordingly. It's awesome. This is the best character creation system that I've ever recorded a video of. I've recorded hundreds of videos at this point. I've done it all. I talk about sometimes, you know, small bits and pieces here and there that are fantastic in certain games creation systems, but this is the whole package. I mean, I have gushed on and on about the detail level on the models available. I've gone on and on about the fact that there are so many races to pick from, sub races, classes, abilities, all the extras. There is just so much. And I mean, there's not really 
anything else I can say. It's just good. It's just everything that I wanted from a Forgotten Realms character creation system. Yeah. Yeah, this is it, guys. This is it. And I hope that you guys and your experiences with it have been as positive as mine. Because, like, geez, I sat here for so many hours now, and I was not bored for a single second of it. There's so much to see. There's so much to do. There's so much to explore. And let me tell you, we will not know the full extent of what's possible with the cool customization options for some time to come. Because there's a lot that you can mess around with. There's a lot that you can fiddle with. There's a lot that you can do to make those perfect characters. And yeah, I mean, I'm talking about the cosmetic appearance of your character right now, the physical uh, beauty that you can create. Uh, but that's a big part of it, right? You play in a character. You are creating a persona that you jump in into this magnificent world with. And yeah, the magnificent world. I'm not even going to talk about the game itself. I haven't even started the game. I've spent something ridiculous like 12 to 15 hours working on this video and I've not yet played the game. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, I heartily recommend character creation in Baldur's Gate 3. I, I can say it without a doubt. I love it. It's awesome. It's something else. It really is. Uh, and I mean, I mentioned as I was going through it, the specifics. There were small things that I noted that could have been maybe implemented, improved. As an example, I said, oh yeah, it would be cool if they gave us stubble. Uh, some of the faces had built-in stubble, uh, but oftentimes there wasn't. Yeah, that's like literally the smallest thing. And that's the only thing I could have found as a fault. Like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the only problem I had. Uh, and, and, and then on the side of the positives, it just, it's overflowing. The hair. Oh my god, the hair. There are so many hairstyles. Show me the person that made all those hairstyles. I will fly to whichever country they live in. I will go to the office. I'll give them a hug and say, hey man, wow, that was awesome. You did such a good job with this. Well done. The colors, the vibrance, just the look and feel overall of all the races. They nailed it. So yeah, I mean, okay, I'm, I, can, I can sit here for an hour and talk about how good it is, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to let myself and all of you get out there and play the game. So go play the game. Enjoy it. If you haven't already, give this video a like, share it, and do all that other good stuff. Please. It means the world to me. Subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, spread the word. Baldur's Gate's out. Do it, do it, do it. We've been waiting a long time for this. Go! <laughs> Enjoy, dudes. Enjoy. Happy that.